mankind has speculated about the afterlife since the dawn of civilization. In Duart, the Egyptian underworld, the hearts of the dead were weighed against a feather. The heart was considered as the most important of the internal organs, and the source of human wisdom, which could reveal the person's true character. If the heart weighed more than the feather, it was immediately consumed, and one would remain restless forever in the underworld. If the heart was found lighter or equal in weight, it symbolized that the deceased led a life of virtue and would go on to the field of reeds, the Egyptian paradise. Thus, aligning one's actions to one's heart was considered as the key to paradise. For the ancient Greeks, the land of the dead was known as Hades, who was also the Greek god of the underworld. While there was a belief of the existence of the soul after death, it was seen as meaningless. The inhabitants of the underworld have no sense of purpose. Similarly, in the Old Testament, there's no mention of hell nor heaven. The dead, whether good or bad, went to the realm of the shades, known as Sheol, a place of darkness and eternal sleep. Thus, they lacked a developed conception of the afterlife. It was only later in the New Testament that hell was thought of as a place of punishment. Today, most of us think of hell as a fiery place containing the souls of the damned who have committed heinous acts in life and must endure eternal punishment and torture by demons. The devil reigns over hell as the incarnation of the platonic idea of evil, the perfect form of evil. Hell is understood as the archetype of ultimate suffering. We often say, I've been to hell and back, when we experience extreme suffering, whether physical or psychological. Thus, hell is no imaginary place, but rather a state of consciousness that we all experience at some point in our lives in different intensities. Hell, however, is also an unavoidable journey in life. In ancient mysteries or rituals of passages, the hero must descend into a dark place in order to give birth to a new consciousness and gain access to a new stage of life. It is the most profound psychological death and rebirth of the self. We will be exploring the journey into hell as the path to self-knowledge. No tree, it is said, can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. In his play, No Exit, French existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre depicts a psychological hell, leading to his famous declaration, hell is other people. Rather than being misanthropic, it is a psychological exploration of his idea of the look. Sartre depicts two women and a man locked in a mysterious room. They are unable to escape the devouring gaze of one another. One of the women accuses the man of stealing her face because she feels automatically judged by his stare. The look deprives the characters of their individuality, freedom and responsibility, and locks them into a particular kind of being as an object in other people's views. The experience of always being under the eyes of others causes them to lose themselves and become a collection of mirrors, reflecting what everyone else expects of them. At the end, the man finally realizes what hell is. All those eyes intent on me, devouring me. What? Only two of you? I thought there were more, many more. So, this is hell. I would never have believed it. You remember all we were told about the torture chambers, the fire and the brimstone, the burning mall, old wives' tales. There's no need for red hot pokers. Hell is other people. In his book, The Cry for Myth, American existential psychologist Rollo May writes a short chapter on the therapist and the journey into hell. Therapy is the prologue to life, rather than life itself. The therapist seeks to help the other person to the point of where he can move forward in life, solve his problems, and overcome the obstacles independently. The task of the therapist is not to cure, but to be a guide, friend, and interpreter to people on their journey through their private hell. Each one of us has or will have private hells crying to be confronted, and we often find ourselves powerless to make progress unaided against these obstacles, which is why the presence of a guide is central and has a powerful effect upon the patient. We are all in limbo. We're all struggling alone in the human condition. The issue is not to have problems, but to fail to be aware of them and fail to confront them. Human beings can reach heaven only through hell. 
the journey through hell cannot be omitted. Hell provides a vital wisdom. Without suffering, one cannot get to heaven. The agony, the horror, the sadness are a necessary prelude to self-realization and a purity of heart. No light, but rather darkness visible, served only to discover sights of woe, regions of sorrow, doleful shades, where peace and rest can never dwell, hope never comes that comes to all, but torture without end still urges, and a fiery deluge, fed with ever-burning sulfur, unconsumed. This is how hell is portrayed by the English poet John Milton, who wrote Paradise Lost entirely through dictation after having gone blind. It is hopelessness even more than pain that crushes the soul. He describes a rebellion in heaven prior to the creation of Adam and Eve and the expulsion of Lucifer and the fallen angels to hell. Milton paints Lucifer as an ambivalent character who declares, the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven. Dante's epic poem, The Divine Comedy, was completed in 1320, a year before his death. The main character is Dante himself, who travels through hell, purgatory, and heaven. These three stages are simultaneous and coexisting aspects of all human experience. The work is described as a comedy because it starts up bad and ends up good, as opposed to a tragedy. The book opens with one of the most iconic lines in literature. Midway in the journey of our life, I awoke to find myself alone and lost in a dark wood, having wandered from the straight path. Dante the poet says that it is the journey of our life, that is to say, it is not just about his journey, but rather about everyone's story on the path to self-knowledge and spiritual awakening, which begins by descending into hell. Dante wrote this when he was 35, which was considered as midlife. This book is the ultimate expression of a midlife crisis, a critical phase of existential transformation which the ancient Greeks called metanoia, mental transformation. Dante makes you think seriously about your own life and to make the best of it when your life is dramatically thrown off course. This is what Dante faced when he was accused of corruption and to be burned alive at the stake. He remained in perpetual exile from his home in Florence the remaining 20 years of his life. He dropped into the depths of his inner world. From this time comes the Divine Comedy, an example of the interplay between the human and the divine. This is what the Christian existentialist philosopher Paul Tillich calls the method of correlation. The human questions of anxiety, meaninglessness, estrangement, etc. are correlated with religious answers. There is a mutual dependence between theology and existentialism, philosophy, and psychology, which is what allows us to get to the depths of reality. Dante the Pilgrim finds himself within a horrible dark forest, for the straightforward path in life had been lost. He says, I don't know how I got here. Very often, we find ourselves in this situation. There are times when we don't recognize how we got where we are. We start out with certain goals we want to achieve, but as time passes, we make small choices and, without realizing it, end up somewhere completely different. As the Danish philosopher and theologian Søren Kierkegaard would say, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. This is what Dante experienced. He's not who he set out to be, and he does not know why that is. Since he does not understand himself nor the purpose of his life, he requires some high ground, some way to orient himself. He sees high above him the sun shining over a hill, but his way is blocked by three beasts, and he's unable to pass through. There's no shortcut to self-realization. In his despair, a figure appears before Dante the Pilgrim. It is the ancient Roman poet Virgil. He is a spiritual guide who will be Dante's companion through the various circles of hell that are divided according to the nature of the sins committed by those condemned there. Dante is led to the gate of hell. Above it reads, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. He is terrified and is not so sure he wants to enter. He also sees himself unworthy of such a journey. Virgil explains to him that Beatrice is waiting for him in paradise, the great love of Dante's life, whom he had fallen in love with when he was nine years old. However, marriage between them was impossible. 
When Beatrice died at the age of 25, Dante was inconsolable. Her death inspired his early poems, and she appears as a personal myth of Dante's, a reality in his own mind and heart, a figure that has become eternalized in his works. Dante agrees to enter the gate of hell, and thus begins his extraordinary journey to self-knowledge. Hell is depicted as nine concentric circles of torment located within the earth. One might say that it is the journey of climbing to the depths of the unconscious. It is not just some sadistic observation of the eternal suffering of the damned, but an invitation to recognize one's own dysfunctions and see the consequences through myriads of punishments in hell. Before descending into the first circle of hell, Dante and his guide pass through the vestibule of hell, where they hear the cries of anguish from the opportunists. These are the souls who were indifferent. They are guilty of the sin of fence-sitting. Since they took no sides, they are given no place. After this, they enter the first circle of hell, known as Limbo, which contains the unbaptized and virtuous pagans who were not sinful but were ignorant of Christ. Many of the great philosophers and poets reside here. In fact, this is also the home of Virgil before he became Dante's guide. They are not punished but spend eternity without being able to see God. After leaving Limbo, the real suffering begins. The next circles contain lust, gluttony, greed, and wrath, symbolizing the self-indulgent. It is part of the upper hell. As one gets deeper into the circles of hell, the punishments get more harsh and painful. Dante makes all kinds of mistakes when he enters hell. Eventually, he learns that sin is not to be pitied. However, this lesson takes him many circles of hell to learn. When Dante faints upon witnessing the suffering, he is quickly awakened by Virgil, for it is a journey of vision. The next circles contain the lower hell. Circle 6 is home to the heretics. Here we find the Epicureans, who are trapped in tombs burning with fire. The Epicureans believed that the soul died with the body, and stated that pleasure was the chief good in life. The goal is to reach a state of tranquility, without overindulgence, and minimize suffering, which makes their punishment quite ironic. The next circles all have more concentric circles within themselves. The seventh circle is home to the violent, including violence to others, murder, violence to oneself, suicide, and violence against nature and God. Dante depicts the worst of the sins in circle 8 and 9 representing fraud and treachery, respectively. When they finally reach the very center of hell, they meet Lucifer, the fallen angel, who is condemned for committing the ultimate sin, personal treachery against God. He is stuck in a frozen lake, and the icy wind that comes ensures his own imprisonment. Around him, traitors are trapped in various depths, according to the severity of their sin. The devil is three-headed, which is a perversion of the trinity, he is God's antithesis. Each head chews eternally on a prominent traitor. On the left and right appear Marcus and Gaius, who were involved in the assassination of Julius Caesar. And on the center is Judas, the apostle who betrayed Christ. Virgil and Dante climb down Lucifer's body. However, Virgil suddenly turns around and begins climbing back up Lucifer's legs. This scares Dante, who believes they are going back to hell. Virgil reassures him that they are not. Things appear to be upside down because they have passed the opposite side of the world. This begins the second part of the book, Purgatory, the only landmass in the waters of the southern hemisphere formed by the impact of Lucifer's fall from heaven. Before we begin with Purgatory, there are two important distinctions to be made. Humans have intellect, the faculty of knowing, and will, the faculty of choosing. The problem arises when one lacks knowledge, and thus cannot make the right choices. However, even if one knows the right thing, one doesn't always make the right choices. Dante the Pilgrim echoes this when he writes, To will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. The first step for Dante is to get his faculty of knowing expanded. But why exactly do people sin? A person might choose to do something bad because he thinks it is good for him. It is often the case that what appears to be good is in fact bad. 
there must be a distinction between appearance and reality. If one asks a murderer, when you were committing your crime, did you know it was bad? It is likely that he will respond in the affirmative. In other words, the problem isn't the faculty of knowing, but the faculty of choosing. Dante was influenced by Aristotelian ethics, in which the lack of self-mastery is less condemnable than intentional pain and malice. That is why those who abuse the faculty of reason through violence, fraud and treachery are in the deeper levels of hell, while the punishment of the self-indulgent is less severe. Hell is an eternal reminder of what we have done. God doesn't send us to hell, we send ourselves to hell. The doors of hell are locked on the inside. When we refuse the divine love, it lights up fires of suffering within us. That is hell. In the inferno, Dante develops his faculty of knowing. However, when he reaches purgatory, it is not enough. He must learn how to use the intellect as a basis for making good choices. It is a discipline of the will. Purgatory is the place of catharsis and cleansing of the soul, where imperfections are burned away. Unlike hell and heaven, it is temporary. Every soul in purgatory will ultimately go to heaven. It is depicted as a seven-story mountain associated with the seven deadly sins. Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. In the first and most serious of the seven levels is pride. This is the fundamental human sin. Eat this, the serpent says to Eve, and you will be like God. It is the desire to be God that led to the first sin in the Garden of Eden. While those in hell are people who try to justify their sins and are unrepentant, people in purgatory sinned but prayed for forgiveness before their deaths and must labor to become free of their sins. The work in purgatory is what Dante calls contrapasso, where one is forced to suffer the sin, work through it, and build a virtue. Swiss psychologist Carl Jung calls it an anchodromia, the emergence of the unconscious opposite in one's psyche. The prideful who elevated themselves are pressed down by great boulders. They carry their oppressive false persona until they can willingly let go of it. When they are able to do so, they stand tall, humbly, and free from what they mistakenly thought to be their true selves. Dante joins the prideful to carry boulders because he realizes that it is also a serious flaw of his own. After seeing all the sins in hell, one has work of purification to do in purgatory. The envious who look with hatred upon other people and wanted to deprive them of their happiness, out of resentment, have their eyelids sewn shut. The wrathful walk around in blinding black smoke, which symbolizes the blinding effect of anger. The slothful have to run. The greedy lie face down on the ground and pray. The gluttonous are starved in the presence of trees, whose fruit is forever out of reach. And the lustful have to go through a wall of fire as a means of purification. Purgatory is like our real world. It is a place of transition. Heaven is above us, and hell is below us. We all have inner work to do. We must strive to lead as virtuous a life as we can. The goal is not perfection, but wholeness. When Dante reaches the top of Mount Purgatory, He's ready to fly to heaven and is joined by Beatrice, who is his new spiritual guide. She leads him on a flight through the various levels of heaven. When we turn away from our self-centered ego, it is like a weight is off our shoulders, as if we could fly. G.K. Chesterton wrote, Angels can fly because they can take themselves lightly. Dante reaches the Imperium, the highest point in heaven. He earns the rare privilege to be in the presence of God while he's still living. He explains that he cannot describe what he saw, because language is inadequate to do so. Knowing where intellect cannot take us is important, as well as what our human limitations are. God knows only himself, because God is the entire universe, and everything in the universe is his reflection. Dante understands that he must be able to see himself in God. As soon as he realizes this, his vision becomes flooded with a light so bright that he can't see anything. As Dante wrote, this is the result of perfect vision. For the brief period that he's in God's presence, he is at one with the universe. He has achieved union with God. To enter heaven is to become more human than you ever succeeded in being on earth. To enter hell 
is to be banished from humanity. Throughout the Divine Comedy, we see the constant interplay between the positive and the negative, the hopeful and the horrific. Salvation, as described by Dante, holds a striking parallel with the process of individuation defined by Carl Jung. The problem of individuation is that the psyche consists of two incongruous halves, which should together form a whole. To become individuated is to reconcile the dualities of the inner world and outer world, consciousness and the unconscious. And according to Jung, this is the most successful adaptation to the universal conditions of existence. To reconcile these dualities, the knowledge of symbols, the language of the unconscious, is indispensable. For it is in them that the union of conscious and unconscious is realized, creating our personal myth in life. In the beginning of the poem, Dante the Pilgrim has recognized the split in his personality, and that he must embark on a journey to become whole. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. The English poet and visionary artist William Blake wrote a book titled The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Unlike Milton and Dante, Blake describes hell not as a place of punishment, but as a place of energy. He writes, Without contraries is no progression. Attraction and repulsion, reason and energy, love and hate are necessary to human experience. From these contraries, spring what the religious call good and evil. Good is the passive that obeys reason, evil is the active springing from energy. Good is heaven, evil is hell. Blake accepts the terminology of standard Christian morality, but he reverses its values. Conventional evil belongs to the devils, wrongdoers who suffer in hell. It is associated with the body, desires, and consists essentially of energy, abundance, actions, and freedom. Conventional good, which is manifested by angels who are in heaven, is associated with the soul, regarded as entirely separate from the body, and consists of reason, restraint, passivity, and prohibition. Blake rejects the dualism of body and soul, and both good and evil, heaven and hell, are necessary to life. He anticipated Freud's psychoanalysis with the conclusion that energy, or libido, called evil, arises from the unconscious, hell, and is restricted by reason, called good, the product of the superego, heaven. Blake imagines himself walking among the fires of hell, delighted with the enjoyments of genius, the devils being the original thinkers and revolutionists, which to the angels, who are conventional and complacent, looks like torment and insanity. Blake states that hell is full of energy, and energy is eternal delight. Fire is identified with the forces of the unconscious, the flames of inspiration, and possibly as the means of salvation. Blake's technique of revelation by the infernal method of melting apparent surfaces away and displaying the infinite which was hid reveals the proverbs of hell, which show a wisdom different from the biblical book of proverbs. Some of these include the road to excess leads to the palace of wisdom. He who desires, but acts not, breeds pestilence. If the fool would assist in his folly, he would become wise. You never know what is enough, unless you know what is more than enough. Excess of sorrow, laughs. Excess of joy, weeps. Though Blake was a devout Christian, this work can be seen as a satire, parody, and criticism of orthodox values, as well as the so-called books of wisdom that were often published in condensed forms and consisting of collections of biblical verses to be taught in a rigid manner. Blake's proverbs are designed to put the individual's heart first, rather than laws. They are designed to energize imagination and human emotional response. Always be ready to speak your mind, and a base man will avoid you. The soul of sweet delight can never be defiled. Blake firmly believed that individuals must be able to freely exercise their imagination in order to construct a reality for themselves. This is what he calls the poetic genius. If there's one true religion for Blake, it is the divine spark of the imagination. 
If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. For man has closed himself up, till he sees all things through narrow chinks of his cavern. Like dreaming or visioning, mythologizing is a process that takes a whole being to the borderlands of existence, a place beyond which our eyes can barely make out the vastness of a terra incognita. Yet those who decide to venture that far receive a gift to take back with them to the inhabited land we are familiar with. What appears to be a journey of exile into the unknown is, in fact, a journey of returning home to the depths of the soul. There is only one way, and that is your way. There is only one salvation, and that is your salvation. Why are you looking around for help? Do you believe that help will come from outside? What is to come will be created in you and from you. Hence, look into yourself. Do not compare, do not measure. No other way is like yours. All other ways deceive and tempt you. You must fulfill the way that is in you. Just like Dante had Virgil as a guide, Jung's personal guide was Philemon, a magician and wise old man that represented superior insight, whose words of wisdom was full of the sounds of life. On the other hand, Nietzsche's guide was the prophet Zarathustra, who grows weary of his wisdom after spending ten years in solitude in the mountains, and speaks thus to the sun, I must descend into the depths as you do in the evening, when you go behind the sea and still bring light to the underworld, you over-rich star. Like you I must go under, go down, as is said by man, to whom I want to descend. What is great in man is that he is a bridge, and not an end. What is lovable in man is that he is an overgoing and a downgoing. In one of his lectures, Jung stated that a point exists at about the 35th year, when things begin to change, it is the first moment of the shadow side of life, of the going down to death. It is clear that Dante found this point, and those who have read Zarathustra will know that Nietzsche also discovered it. When this turning point comes, people meet it in several ways. Some turn away from it, others plunge into it, and something important happens to yet others from the outside. If we do not see a thing, fate does it to us. In his late thirties, Jung experienced this midlife existential catastrophe, and was overwhelmed with visions. In his hypnagogic state, he plunged into unknown depths, which he later called his confrontation with the unconscious, lasting from 1913 to 1916. Fearing psychosis, Jung kept a loaded revolver in the drawer of his night table, in case the visions became unbearable. In the Red Book, Jung speaks of his descent into hell which should not be understood as an afterlife abode of condemnation, but rather as a present living condition of utter bewilderment, encompassing a momentous existential change. What do you think of the essence of hell? Hell is when the depths come to you with all that you no longer are or are not yet capable of. Hell is when you can no longer attain what you could attain. Hell is when you think and feel and do everything that you know you do not want. Hell is when you know that your having to is also a wanting to, and that you yourself are responsible for it. Hell is when you know that everything serious that you have planned with yourself is also laughable, that everything fine is also brutal, that everything good is also bad, that everything high is also low, and that everything pleasant is also shameful. The roots of the tree of life reach into hell, and the top touches heaven. Through uniting with the self, we reach God, which unites heaven and hell in itself. The self functions as a union of opposites, and thus constitutes the most immediate experience of the divine, which is at all psychologically comprehensible. Jung found himself standing on the highest tower of a castle. He sees a figure in the distance, who slowly makes his way to him. He hears footsteps in the stairway, and a strange fear comes over him. It is the devil or as he calls him, the Red One. Jung has a conversation with him through active imagination. The Red One. I greet you, man on the high tower. I saw you from afar, looking and waiting. Your waiting has called me. Jung. Who are you? The Red One. Who am I? You think I am the devil. Do not pass judgment. Perhaps you can also talk to me without knowing who I am. 
What sort of superstitious fellow are you, that immediately you think of the devil? Jung, if you have no supernatural ability, how could you feel that I stood on my tower, looking out for the unknown and the new? My life in the castle is poor, since I always sit here and no one climbs up to me. The Red One. So, what are you waiting for? Jung, I await all kinds of things, and especially I'm waiting for some of the world's wealth, which we don't see here, to come to me. The Red One. So, I've come to absolutely the right place. I've wandered a long time through the world, seeking those like you who sit upon a high tower on the lookout for things unseen. Jung, you make me curious. You seem to be a rare breed. Your appearance is not ordinary. And then, too, forgive me. It seems to me that you bring with you a strange air. Something worldly. Something impudent. Or exuberant. Or, in fact, something pagan. As Jung continues his conversation, the Red One is amused by his ponderous speech and seriousness. He tells Jung that life doesn't require any seriousness. On the contrary, it's better to dance through life. Jung tells him that he knows how to dance, and the devil is surprised, for he considers dancing to be of his own province. Thus they reach common ground. The peculiarity of the devil is that he fails to take seriously anything that only concerns others. The devil is convinced that dancing is neither lust nor madness, but an expression of joy. In this, Jung agreed with the devil, echoing what Nietzsche wrote. You hire men. The worst thing about you is, none of you has learned to dance as a man ought to dance, to dance beyond yourselves. Jung ends his conversation with the Red One as follows. Jung, perhaps too there's a joy before God that one can call dancing, but I haven't found this joy. I look out for things that are yet to come. Things came, but joy was not among them. The Red One, don't you recognize me, brother? I am joy. Jung, could you be joy? I see you as through a cloud. Your image fades. Let me take your hand, beloved. Who are you? Who are you? Joy? Was he joy? Jung earnestly confronted his devil and behaved with him as with a real person. He learned to take seriously every unknown wanderer who personally inhabits his inner world. He was his joy, the joy of the serious person. Whoever tastes this joy forgets himself, and there's nothing sweeter than forgetting oneself. Jung writes, If you ever have the rare opportunity to speak with the devil, then do not forget to confront him in all seriousness. He is your devil after all. The devil as the adversary is your own other standpoint. He tempts you and sets a stone in your path where you least want it. Taking the devil seriously does not mean going over to his side, or else one becomes the devil. Rather, it means coming to an understanding, thereby you accept your other standpoint. With that, the devil fundamentally loses ground, and so do you, and that may be well and good. When Jung realized that the devil is joy, he wanted to make a pact with him, but he couldn't make a pact with joy, because it immediately disappears. The essence of the devil is that he cannot be captured. The devil seeks to saw off the branch on which you sit that is useful and protects one from falling asleep and from the vices that go along with it. The devil is an evil element, but joy, if you run after it, you see that joy also has evil in it, since then you arrive at pleasure and from pleasure go straight to hell, your own particular hell, which turns out differently for everyone. Unlike Faust, who in his depression and dissatisfaction with life sold his soul to the devil, in exchange for power, knowledge, and material gain, Jung avoids this danger by reaching a mutual agreement. He achieved some joy, and the devil accepted some of Jung's seriousness. It is always a risky thing to accept joy. It cannot be pursued, it must ensue. What Jung initially perceived as a deeply critical period, leading him to the brink of madness, eventually came to represent the source of the most creative and significant period of his life the stuff and material for more than one life, as he put it. For Jung, purifying one's vision while traveling through hell involves, first and foremost, the acknowledgement and integration of an evil counterpart through what he calls the shadow. 
However, while it is within the bounds of possibility for us to recognize the relative evil of our nature, it is a rare and shattering experience to gaze into the face of absolute evil. Whoever fights with monsters should see to it that he does not become one himself. And when you stare for a long time into an abyss, the abyss stares back into you. The descent into hell is a cathartic journey, which leads to self-knowledge, self-transformation, and ultimately self-transcendence. It is easy to get into, but very difficult to exit. It epitomizes a process of self-transformation similar to what the alchemists intended, with the negretto phase of spiritual mortification and putrefaction, a dangerous yet healing descent into one's inner underworld. Only in the region of danger can one find the treasure hard to attain. Everything in the human mind belongs to the natural play of opposites, which regulates life. Real self-transformation shall never be complete without man's reconciliation of heaven and hell. He who journeys to hell also becomes hell. Therefore, do not forget from whence you come. The depths are stronger than us, so do not be heroes. Be clever and drop the heroics, since nothing is more dangerous than to play the hero. Greetings, folks. We're back at it again, doing the best broadcast ever in history. It'd have to be that way because your humble narrator and trusty broadcast host is here at one Paul Unslaved. Shadow banned as I am, they cannot stop the white gorilla because, you know, you got to own it. To me, my apprehension, not much else to do other than speak the truth, live the truth, uphold God's law and to question and or rebuke the infidels who want to gaslight and manipulate and deceive and disempower. Again, these folks, the ubiquitous they that the conspiracy theorists talk about, I don't perceive them, if they do exist, to be all-powerful. Just a collection of psych psychopaths and sociopaths who are cowardly and weak without their groups and resources, just like the public. So there's really not much of a difference between any of these human scum who populate this realm. They're all basically one personality uh, with various disorders. Um, and they're looking for power in this world, just like the public. And they're going to get it the same way a lot of the public would if they knew how and or were willing, which they're not willing to do anything. A right? year and a half ago, I told you, we're going to do World War III. Uh, Iran is going to be one of the players which will lead to Israel, Russia and Ukraine, of course, once we saw that start up. See, that was my signal. That was my canary in the coal mine. Once I saw Russia, Ukraine, I go, oh, I know where this goes. The last three years were your fucking official wake up call. If you didn't get the message, you're fucked. You paid the bill for your own slavery and genocide. How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, how much smoke before there's a fire? Uh, and how much fire before folks start to batten down the hatches, so to speak. These are crazy, zealot, dogmatics. They're tapped into some force they think is God. I contend it's the devil, the dark one, whatever entity or state of consciousness runs this place from the beginning of time. And they're going to cause their own destruction and destruction of others with some misguided spiritual pursuit. They're being avatar and used, is what it seems to me. We got Fox Noise saying that World War III is officially started. Axes of evil time. They're going to connect Russia with China and Iran. A few other folks. They're going to connect the United States, United Kingdom, Israel, and a few other folks. Uh, and then everyone else will be forced to choose sides here for a time. And we'll get back to one world order, some folks might say. So the storm is coming. You're all giggling and laughing, acting cavalier like something's going to be solved. No, the storm's been coming, like I said, a year and a half ago. They're going to shut this place down. They're going to torch the economy. They're going to move the floor under you. And a lot of you are going to be out in the street begging for food. It's called greater depression. It's called economic collapse. It's called centralized digital currency moving in with social credit system. This is not new. One world currency, one world religion, if they have their way. And I'm not interested in folks who want to ignore it and act like everything's going to always stay the same in their naivete. 
know that the, 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 it's just it, it's just middle ground every time. The Tao is the middle way. Walk the middle ground. Moderation in all things. Preparation. Careful. Uh, surrendering in faith after we've done the next right thing. Many things need to be done. Nothing is left undone. Greetings, folks. We're back at an indoor command center today. It's a bit windy outside. It's a bit blustery. I am, of course, as you may or may not know, your guide for this evening. I take you on some twists and turns all over the metaversal projection of this existence. We got a Brian O'Shea in the back. Let me just bring him in. And it distracts me when I got folks hanging out out back. How are you, Mr. Brian O'Shea? It's good to see you, sir. What's up, Paul? And say, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. All right, I got to do this. Just give me one second to do this because I'm just I can't can't keep an idea in my like I got a mind like a sieve. I practiced mindless so long I can't even hold on to a thought. Like right here, right here, not right here. I'm not. I got a Talcott in the back. Okay, okay. How are you, Mr. Talcott? Oh, I'm feeling inspired and blessed, brother. Oh, I got that. I mean, what did you think of last night? That's oh my god. <laughs> it's fucking year and a half. I sit with this snafu warthog clown. He's driving me crazy. One day I was screaming so loud because of him and everyone else on here. I felt a pop in the back of my head, like right here. And I'm pretty sure that I did some damage and it hasn't been the same since. I just kind of ignore it. I just kind of ignore it and act like it's not there. But seriously, why the fuck would he put me through this for a year and a half when on his channel with no one watching, he can be somehow a completely normal person? They hate me. They hate me. Part of them hates themselves. They really want to just do chaos and destroy me and this place. It's evident. Right? There's no other explanation for it. I just asked you a question and then answered it. I'm sorry. Please answer because I just can't believe what went on. Paul, I agree with you. I feel for you because the reality is your patience with that man, it's been like, holy shit, you're the only one that can that has been patient with him like that. And then to see him, dude, that was fun last night. He was a totally different character than what we what we've been seeing yeah he's got extreme person that's all i conclude over and over is everyone on here and then i have to go after i make the statement i have to go holy boy remember when you say we're all oneself on the highest level and on the lowest level it's like still the same consciousness with personality disorder you must it must be you like i do the that's you to me back to me because I go, that's what this must, it, there's a possibility. It doesn't have to. There's a possibility. It indicates that, that there's extreme personality disorder, even to the point of like multiple personality uh, syndrome. This is some kind of snafu syndrome. And then I have to wonder, am I doing this? Is this why like no one in my life can understand me completely? Because I'm just different personalities at different times, like wizard. Like Tarek, where I have a woman, I have a I have an Isabella in me or on me or around me or, or avataring me. I'm sorry. Please go ahead, Jack Talcott. I'm being rude as always. You're here. You're a star guest, Brian O'Shea, world famous comedian, uh, and I'm just rambling as always. Brother, it's an honor. <laughs> this life we're living, it is nuts, man. And I have, and you're doing what I'm doing too. I'm looking around and I'm like, fuck, is that me? Am I doing that somehow? What, where, how am I bringing this into my reality? <laughs> what the hell is going on, dude? <laughs> right. Then you're forced to have to check and say, it. maybe that's you. <laughs> right? Right. Like it's, That's what it always comes back to. You don't want it to be true. No. You desperately want to believe you're above and beyond these people and it's just them and God, look at you, and then you got to go, but that's you, maybe. Maybe right. it's you. I go, fuck. The <laughs> ego twist. Hey, can can I throw your throw us in a different direction? Because the thought I was having Absolutely, in, sir. in your intro, man, it got... Here's something I'm wondering. 
I'm not really a Christian, but I'm I'm like I get a lot of this stuff. Now, in the end, there's supposed to be these two witnesses. What if that's you and me, man? Because I'm I, mean, let's see. <laughs> I, I guess that would make for an interesting story. All right? of all of scripture from two thousand years ago comes down to me and you right. <laughs> being the last two witnesses. Okay. I would, I mean, that's interesting. That kind of gives me a, a high level sense of self, like I'm really important, which then kind of pads my ego, right? And then allows me to believe I'm way more important than maybe I really am. That, but I, I don't know. I could run with that. I'm trying. You are talking, you realize you're talking to an egocentric narcissist, right? So you throw something like that at me, I'm bound to latch on at some point. You I'm little talking, devil. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out what the hell is this story that's going to be happening, right? How is this story going to be told? What's the connection? There's something big happening, and we're a part of it. <laughs> I I'm, I keep trying to tell you. I think there is something bigger happening. We are a part of it. It's called mental illness. We're and <laughs> it's a sign of the times. Paul, oh, <laughs> that's it. But but we we are the witnesses. We are the. We're here strong enough to confidently share the truth, and the truth truth overcomes mental illness. At least the profitable shit that we're dealing with today right <laughs> <laughs> the truth overcomes mental illness and the truth is we're bound to be like brian o'shea living in a car at some point for the rest of our lives and that's okay unless that kind of mitigates the illness once you accept it unless we change i was i was inspired you you heard that have you heard the name john uh Asaraf, yeah, oh. by chance. Oh, I haven't heard that. But bro, O'Shea, are you from O'Shea? Get on camera, man. Oh, is this, guy, this guy's a world famous comedian, and I got to tell him how to do this broadcast. Tell Kyle, you see what I deal with? Just get on camera, and I want commentary. O'Shea, come on. He's beautiful too, and he's hiding his face. Do you know John um, Asa Smash? What's the, what was the name? Asaraf. 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 Yeah, do you know uh, John? What was his first name again? John. <laughs> John Ashraf. Are you aware of that, Brian O'Shea? Sounds like uh, Christos' cousin, Ashraf. You know what? I'm kind of. I don't. I don't really like the fact that, like, I like everything else Timmy does, but I don't like the whole thing of he comes over and lets himself in. Like, that's why I don't give keys to anywhere that I live with people, because, like, I don't like that. I don't like how that, I don't want anyone to be able to let themselves into my area, right? Like, please knock next time, Timmy. Even though I know you have the keys and you can let yourself in, could you just try to act like you're some kind of ethical, cordial person who respects my privacy with Mr. Talcott? We could have been doing weird things in here, right? Like, not for nothing, we could have been in here doing weird stuff, and then you just let yourself in, and now I got a whole bunch of explaining to do, right? I don't want to be put in that position. You understand. My bad, my bad. But I love you, Timmy. And I love, yeah, could you go back out and, like, come back in, actually? I, yeah. I would appreciate it. I wasn't going to ask you. Okay. Oh, hey, Jack, Brian, we got somebody, like, outside in the back. They're knocking. Hey, Timmy, what's going on, man? I just let you in. You know, okay. even though you have keys, because that feels better yeah. to me. I got boundaries. Yeah, man. Got, I'm learning boundaries. Hey, I love how you communicated your boundaries, though, Paul. That was very mature. <laughs> I wasn't abusive. I didn't curse at anyone. I didn't say motherfucker. I'm making progress on here, you know, I'm becoming more peaceful and loving. And I'm going to have to say a big part of that is credited not to you, Jack Talcott. I know you thought I was going to say that, but to Wizard. No, no, to Wizard. I've learned a lot from Wizard about being peaceful and loving <laughs> and reconciliatory. He's taught me a lot. Okay? You don't know any of that? You're laughing at that. You're almost doubled over, cracking up. 
I can see how you did learn that from him, though. I mean, there's examples in many different ways. Um, <laughs> it's in the code. It is. The code. The code. The secret, right? This guy, John Asaraf, was part of that The Secret movie. That's why I brought him up. He did a brain-a-thon this weekend. Or today. I did a brain-a-thon with him and like a free thing online. And he's right. talking about his neuroscience and stuff like that. The Neville Goddard, the Napoleon Hill, the all the different methods of changing your minds. And so I have been so inspired today about success, Paul. <laughs> and so that's what got my mind wondering. What is and you what? know why you're so inspired recently? Because you finally took my suggestions, and probably I don't know because I've been I've been letting you do your thing over there, but I, I've I've been hearing you got a lot of the cretins out of your life, a lot of the users, abusers, duplicitous two faces, parasitic, narcissistic trash that want to project their shortcomings onto me. Right? I'm not perfect, but I'm not those things. I'm a person who listens. I show care and forgiveness and faith and peace. Oftentimes, I do have an aggressive streak in me. Though there's a bit of an aggressive streak. At times, it come out. At times, it come out. Yes, at times, it come out. Wheeze here at Unslavious Industries. Hold on, I'm going to talk black because Brian O'Shea has a new thing going. Right. Wheeze here at Unslavious Industries. Sometimes we get aggressives, and it comes out. All huh? right. <laughs> Because that's just it's part of the human experience. It's colorless. You know, we got an animal in us. It's part of us. Just like we got that conscience, that animal, that angel. We got to reconcile that. So Talcott is helping me to do that. That's what I feel. We're Your thoughts, Timmy? Better. I want to hear from Timmy, Jack. He seems like he's got something going on today. He's like, he's like I'm got laser focus. I'm good. Uh, good. You're saying that, but I see a look in your eye. You got a laser focus about you. There's something on your mind or heart. No, nah, there's nothing there. It's just, just chill. Nothing? Yeah. All right, well, then get out. Nothing. What do you think? I bring you up on a broadcast to have nothing in your mind and heart? You just sit there and not say anything? Fucking, Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Brian O'Shea, what are you doing? He's checking his hair in the in the reflection of the phone screen. No, I'm reading chat. because I, I How need fucking high are you today? What are I'm you on? on? I'm coming. I'm fucking got 5G radiated, dude. Fucking I'm coming down. i uh, coming off of uh, some type of thickness. I thought I was gonna be in bad shape, and I texted you the other day. Um, I thought I was gonna be down for days. I thought I was gonna die. I was ready to go, dude. I was ready to leave it, leave this body. You ready to shed your body like Ian from a little cold, a little flu. <laughs> Right, I thought it was over, dude. But then the next morning, I felt better. I was shocked. I don't know. Yeah, because you did what the daddy told you to do, right? You eat a whole bunch of garlic and onions. Did you do the, the rectal suppository thing that we talked about? I checked my temperature <laughs> with a dildo slash thermometer. Oh, yeah, I didn't suggest that. You just you, you ran your own program on that one. Where'd you get yeah. the dildo? <laughs> what do you mean? What, 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 like he's Brian O'Shea, world famous comedian. You don't think he has that type of shit lying around his house? I whittled it out of wood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. I presumed. How'd you know your Painted temperature it. though? Oh. It was I felt I felt it. Oh, that gives bush crafting a new kind of meaning, new vibe, I guess. Backdoor bush. <laughs> Brian, please. Why does it always, every time I go to Brian O'Shea for anything, it always goes here. You notice that, Jack Talcott? He's very, he's very guttural. He's very low level. <laughs> what, Jack? You never checked your temperature? <laughs> Not like you, 
Um, Whatever. I like it accurate. All right. You know what? I got it up here. Since we're on the topic of you, let's get it over with. Uh, we got open mic O'Shea from last night. So let's get to that. All right, Ian, I'm about to shit on everyone. Johnny, you don't mind that, right? Do whatever you want. And if you're touching, appreciate that, yeah. So, Johnny. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Leave in the fucking room. Can't even bring the person up. <laughs> fucking just, rambling five minutes before It's like a whole conversation happening in the right, right, right behind the stage. Like, like right in front of the stage. I can only imagine. We don't ever get to see it. That there's a whole bar where people are just sitting and drinking and have their back to Brian O'Shea. It just sounds like they're all talking amongst themselves. No one is paying attention. <laughs> Do I have this right, Brian O'Shea? Am I describing the scene pretty accurately? Yeah, that's the whole point of me doing what I'm about to do. It's, fuck that place. That's a, really. that's a horrible room. <laughs> I can already tell. Horrible room to do comedy right here. This is pretty much that ninth circle that we just saw in the intro of Dante's Inferno. It's this room where folks are having conversation amongst themselves and cutting into steak while they're drinking. Yeah. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, what's going on around here, man? Willie B's the shoe in for the 100 bucks? Like, what the fuck? Skinny fucking Jimmy for fucking Indiana Rich Boy, dude? Who the fuck would you like a person like that? Some fucking 21 year old fucking dork? It's an <laughs> only fucking chance, man. It's me and you, Asian guy, man. Everyone else in here just sucks, man. I hate fucking everyone in here, though. You should just fucking make love tonight, man. I don't even know. <laughs> Are you a child? Shut up. You're gonna help you. I'm 18. Well, you're 18. Fuck it. It's not a child. Fucking moron. Legal. You guys are super I hate everyone in there. Well, I don't like her. I don't like her. I didn't know she was sitting next to you. Hello, random normal white lady. Your boyfriend's filming it. You guys seem like a lot of fun. Seriously, man. I know you guys don't. You all suck. You're all fucking idiots. This room is terrible, dude. I bomb here every time. Everyone bombs. This room is horrible, dude. Johnny's a fucking moron. What is Johnny's problem, dude? He's always just rambling with fucking nonsense. Like, what is his backstory, dude? Suck on his parents. He mentioned his fucking stepdad earlier. Dude's a fucking weirdo. Dude, fuck this guy over here. He sells the shittiest drugs ever, dude. I'm not that drug guy. I'm trying to slowly read. His drugs fucking suck, I'm sure. <sighs> this chick was pretty funny. She should definitely win over Willie B. Fuck Willie B, man. Why do people like Willie B? Yeah, he's a skinny fucking rich dweeb from Indiana. What the fuck is so good about that? He's rich. That's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Guess it. it just seems like some entitled suburban. Fucking dweeb, dude. I'm having fun, dude. Fuck you guys. The big fat guy in the corner. This guy's five days sober. Don't fucking look at me like that, dude. You fucking scumbag, dude. Everyone can fucking. <laughs> She's trying not to make eye contact. She got it earlier during the rap song. Dude, fuck you, Andy. Do not turn your head away from me. You can get this too. And so can fucking. What's his name? Josh, the other sober guy, 95 days sober. Fuck him. I know. I don't know what he was saying there. Fucking community. That's a fucking loser. This guy looks like a tattoo ball. Is that a guy or a girl next to you? I don't know. What's her name? Is that Brett? Is that a guy or a girl? Who's a guy or a girl? Whatever. It's a good vibe. It's a good fucking scene right there. Holy fuck. I love this fucking room. Where's Ian at? I'm over here. Ian, what's that video game you're going to get coaching in again? Uh, Rocket League. Uh, I'm being pretty good though. I'm diving now. Like, uh, uh, so he plays Rocket League, right? Uh, he has a family with children. He wants to get professional coaching yeah. for a video game called Rocket League. They drive around in a car. Fifty dollars an hour, man. Yeah. Fucking, you drive around in a car in that game, right? Uh, well, you're, it's a mixture of soccer and rocket cars. It's amazing. He's just playing with some. Can you imagine the children of this fucking dude getting <laughs> fucking Rocket League coaching?
There's a part two to that, Paul. The, the dude filming it, his wife ruined it. She goes, let me hold the phone. I got it. I got it. And then I immediately turned it back on. There's like two minutes left. Yeah, I think that she like she checked out. Like she when it got unfunny, she just ended the the, the video. Like you had something going there, and then it kind of just fizzled out there for a bit. Well, the main thing to see in the in the second part is uh, that the host didn't do anything. Guy that I was shitting on, all he said was, "You got to sage the stage," and that was negative energy. And then he brings immediately brings up the next person. Shouldn't you have spent like the next hour just roasting me? And taking control of his room back yeah it's not a fucking wim hof yoga session you know like we're not there for only positive energy it's a fucking karaoke dive bar with piss smelling homeless comedians i mean come on like we dwell in the darkness we dwell in the pain yeah, he was all know? butthurt after it he didn't even like he tried to like avoid eye contact afterwards I love like when you go off on everyone and insult everyone and love it. You were having a great time. Like when you're having a great time and having fun, I'm having a great time and having fun. I don't even care what you're doing. Salt the, the room. Kid. All the better. Yeah. And the skinny kid, Willie B, at least he afterwards is like, all right, it's on O'Shea. I'm coming after you, which is exactly what should a comedian should say, even though he's skinny. But he's like the superstar of the scene. This fucking 100 pound, 22 year old fucking kid from Indiana suburbs. All right, part two. Let's go to part two. No, that's the wrong one. That's the music part two, maybe. I'm just going to say open mic part two. There's a music part two and a open mic part two. There it is. Can't see it, though. So you got kind of like, is that natural gray hair? Or is it like dye? There's a white one. Oh, natural eye. Like, it's weird. Fine. Holy fuck, Johnny is the biggest piece of shit ever, dude. Why does he suck so bad at his job? He's really good. He does. He sucks. He's given me three erections tonight. That's, a, that's, that's how I do it. How could you get erect right from Johnny? He fucking sucks. Everything about this place sucks. Actually, this is a cool kind of place. Good food. Let's hit. And then the room always just sucks. No one does well here. Why? What is the problem? Free much just you. Although you're really funny at night. Hey, you guys have a secret no shit. You're funny. Who the fuck did well tonight? Supposedly Willie Bean is here with that money. She did not do that fucking well. She should fucking win. That girl in the corner should fucking win. I mean, she didn't listen to the assignment. Fuck all you motherfuckers. I got a really stupid fucking dice. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna soak that one. Everyone fucking sucks here. You got 40 seconds. What's your number? Seven. All right, number uh, seven. Uh, uh, so, uh, number seven says, um, the unimpressed audience prefer a set while pretending the audience is utterly uninterested in your jokes. It's not you fucking you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, fucking Dude, you know, this room is. This room is. <laughs> Fuck this room, bro. Everyone in here sucks. This room fucking sucks. It's almost as bad as Dive Bar. This goofy bitch is fucking room. I hate her too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was me. So I was a fan of that. Did they play the slave? Did they play the fucking slave adoption song right there? Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a second. Wait a second. There's no way, there's no way that, that we're that synchronistic where you just, you just completely bombed and didn't make any jokes. And then they played the looping slave song <laughs> right after <laughs> they have to watch what we do here. Someone has to watch what we do here. Or God is like Talcott says, either God or the devil is, is directly involved because you just, I swear to God, this is what goes on here regularly, man. You can't make this up. Out of two, out of the two songs of the two looping slave videos, as soon as you're done, he loops looping slave original version. Is it the same song? Of course it is. Are you kidding me? Oh, the angels, yeah. 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 
me arms up in anger. The universe is hilarious. Yeah, it'll talk to you, man. That's the thing. They'll say Paulie's a schizophrenic, and maybe that's true. But if you look and seek, you will find, right? That's what I'm claiming. So, like, just just go watch. Just go look and seek, and I bet you'll find. And then the universe will open up to you, whatever that means. God, in quotes. And then it'll just start putting shit certain places, it would seem. Like, you know, unless we're making more out of it, and it's just one big coincidence. I mean, out of the, all the songs that could have been played at a comedy club karaoke bar, right after O'Shea's done looping like a slave, they play the looping slave song from my clips with you. Holy Whatever. God. You know, I don't need anyone else to accept that that's for That's me. That's for me. Right? Special delivery. It's for Brian. You're pointing it out. Well, it's for all of us. That's the thing. It's it was wrong. like the day my uncle died, and my father goes, how come he came to you and not me? I go, you would ask an egocentric, prideful question like that. I go, if he shut all the equipment down and the broadcast down for 40 minutes, then it's a message for everybody, right? Like, it's not personal, you know, especially when, again, that being was high-level influence to me and what I do, right? A lot of the references, a lot of the classic material, the comedy, all that, that that comes through him, right? So it would make sense that he would, if he was leaving here somehow or moving on, that his last interaction would be with a medium that um, kind of reflects our journey in that sense. So that was a big part of, of his life was classic radio and, and classic film and comedy and shit like that. So, uh, you know, again, I, I don't make objective claims. I can't because I don't know on the highest level. But I, I can go with what it seems, you know, and it seems that there's highly synchronistic uh, events going on uh, around me or this place or folks. I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's centric to me or you folks. I don't know what anyone else's experience is, but I've heard the anecdotal details. So I suspect it's all one and the same. Your thoughts? I'm going to hit some reefer. Talk amongst yourselves. I did, I, I did music at that anything. same venue. Start with part two music and then do part one music. If you you want music now okay Give so me what start, with part two. start with part okay, two okay seriously like we have so many synchronicities and quote-unquote coincidences here that you can't even fucking count them all or keep them straight what are your thoughts on that i did we i didn't hear anyone else's thoughts on the looping slave music like am i just fucking imagining shit here i i think the more we pay attention the more synchronicity synchronous synchronicities we will see. I think they're actually there a lot, but we're not actually noticing them or paying attention. That's my my thought. Brian, what do you think about the what do you think about it's your life? What do you think about the fact that well, you finished a set and that, that song plays? <laughs> if you look at I have this app on my phone that looks at the stars, the amount of conjunctions and in, in like everything is like everything is pairing up there's two like neptune and venus mars and saturn the moon there's they're called conjunctions and they're happening back to back to back to back all throughout this year and then we got a major solar eclipse happening in a couple of days and then we got all these synchronicities and something some energy ramping up like i'm on some sort of weird trajectory after getting arrested like i don't know man like the stars are aligning as they say like quite literally now, do you take that as some kind of a direct message and then go ahead, Tim? Like, like, do you take that as the universe basically saying, hey, bro, respect you getting up on stage, you're having fun, it's a good deal, good vibe, but you're a looping slave, right? Because you really didn't get down anything, you just kind of looped around the room. And, you, like, am I going anywhere with this? Do you get what I'm saying? Or am I making too much? Of it? Yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying. Um trying out a completely new style so i'm basically a beginner again and it's like i don't even care about comedy at this point dude. like if this shit helps me out in court or something <laughs> like that if this owning the room and helps my confidence i don't really care about comedy dude. yeah it's working i agree with you in that sense and i do the same thing in my life it's like it ain't always about being funny it's about working past your own inner demons or past your own comfort zone and fears so you can do the better comedy right because you got to be able to own that position to do the better comedy but uh, you know 
I, again, I ain't going to tell you what to do, bro. I mean, I could just tell you what I see and what, what I've experienced. I think that the more you do that and combine it with, with like crafting more jokes, uh, you, you, it's all going to come together, you know, but yeah, I, I definitely think there's value to you just saying, fuck it. I'm not even going to do nothing prepared. I'm just going to walk out on stage. We will and embarrass myself for the moment, you know, stay in the now man. Uh, and then talk about what you see and what you're experiencing. So I think that that's good therapy. Yeah, yo, the last the last three four years after Slave it, uh, it's weird. Every day, at least at least five times, some ten times, sometimes ten times per day. Like uh, I'll be listening to something, an audio book, this something else, and then like my attention will just be like drawn, like my head will move to something, or and then uh, I'm. I see like a one a note on my paper or something on the screen or something, and it's the same word, and it happens like at the same exact time. Like somebody will say "slave," and then I'm just I'll look at something else, and I wrote down "slavery" on on, on a paper or something. And like my head would just move to it. It's really bizarre. It happens too often to be a coincidence. It's uh, and that never happened before, so it's weird. It's very weird. I. The thought that comes to mind with that is notice what you're noticing and then ask, why is that in my experience? Is that something I want in my experience? That's what I that's what I've been trying to do. And with with O'Shea, man, I see the confidence in you. I don't know if that was comfortable or not, but you seem pretty comfortable being uh, being uncomfortable. So good for you. And the thought I was thinking, Paul, what if Brian's like a, uh, you know, little lesser on the wisdom scale, but a modern day Diogenes, like the dog is <laughs> out there. Yeah, the guy who masturbates in public. Right. Well, he's he, he practiced begging from the statues so he, he could get com comfortable with rejection. And Brian goes... I guess setting himself up for rejection a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of the cornerstone of what takes a man to the next level, right? A man's world, you could argue, is built on rejection. It is. Um, it's kind of what differs from a woman's world to a man's world, right? It's like, you know, even in the courting sector, right? It's like you deal with women, you're going to have to deal with X amount of them and get rejected over and over again. Uh, until you just get comfortable with who and what you are and what you're doing. And if something comes along and is meant for you, cool. If not, well, then I'm with me, you know? So oftentimes I think a man doesn't get an option to use another woman or people, place, or thing to complete themselves. You know, it's like that has to come from within and then extend to the outer realm and then return backward, kind of like a sonar ray. That's how I kind of picture that. So, yeah, I think that rejection can and break you like most things based on the perspective and then if you hold a different perspective about the bigger picture and process the rejection is what's going to make you because once you can accept that rejection and still validate yourself from within know who and what you are and what you're not and continue forward um you're going to be solidified right you're going to be tempered like the steel that's what i've been learning that's that's the key I went through my week past, you know, when I couldn't even put the bottle down. Um, when I was weak, what the hell? Lost my thought. My weakness was out of my own mind. We create our own limits. We are the one who believe what we can and cannot do. But um, to really know what you can do, you got to push yourself. You got to put yourself out there and see what what are you? What am I good at? If you don't try something, how do you even know? And I do think our talents are, many of our talents are hidden behind the fears that we discover. <laughs> and, and I think most of our fears we discover are implanted from our youth. And so it's like this crazy game of, of development that's been, that we're going through. 
individually and together. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I've experienced with my son for the past year. It's like, uh, I mean, most of it is just, and it's, I think it's reflective on our own lives. It's like most of the things, it's just uh, don't, don't do dumb shit in front of him. Like don't be a loser failure in front of him. Uh, cause it's not really about what I say. It's just how I, how I am and how we are in front of him. So it's the same way. Like, so if I'm not just, he's, he's not seeing horrible activity to mirror, uh, then he's not going to have all these bullshit fears because he does they, these, uh, our progeny doesn't come out fearful of anything. I mean, uh, he's not scared of nothing. It's amazing. So that shit is definitely learned. So, Timmy, would you yeah, like to yeah. view um, something that kind of hits home with me? Because again, we're all oneself. That's kind of what I believe opens the door to the synchronicity is when we check this false belief of who and what we are and just see the whole, right? Like see the all as the all and then how it comes down to the dimensions. I feel like that's what opens up the universe to speak to you uh, as the Kabbalion and other ancient texts talk about. Um, I could pull up the quote, I forget how it goes, but the lips of wisdom are closed to the ears who lack understanding, something along those lines. Um, so yeah, the universe does talk. It's not an audible voice. That's schizophrenia. The universe talks in synchronicity, right? So we have to understand the difference between schizophrenia and that false projection and synchronicity, which is a very real thing. It would seem talked about from the beginning of time. Uh, and by pretty much every great man in their field of psychology, sociology, uh, epistemology, and all the rest of it, you know, so let's like not, let's not do that thing, you know, where we like make false characterizations and forget that this whole culture and society, although that could be an indicator of something else, is built on the back of folks who have made these claims, right? So either the gods in, involved, the devils involved, I could claim proof of one is indirectly proof of the other. And then we have to prove, is this local or non-local? I guess we don't have to, but uh, it begs the question. Is it inside of us or is it around us and off planet? Or maybe both and neither at the same time. Schrodinger's Shatan cat, right? It's there, but it's not one of those deals. Bill Cosby condoms. Okay. Uh, how are you, Bill Cosby condoms? <laughs> How many ditties did he diddy diddy if he diddy diddy diddy? <laughs> condoms, Cosby, condoms. <laughs> that's it? Wait, I gave my background too, and that's it. Just gonna leave it right there. Yeah, hey, see? <laughs> mic drop, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wow. think that's how okay. you land. <laughs> yeah, that's his new bit. Ever since I cracked up the other day, him do, attempting to do Bill Cosby, that's going to be his new bit, I guess. Um, thoughts? What were we saying? What was happening? I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, that's right. I was going to ask Tammy if he wanted to view this video. Yeah. Um, I was segueing to rather long roundabout segue. Um, mom puts teenage acid head in a mental hospital in 1967. And this reminds me of the good old days with my father when he brought me to what he claims was counseling that was in a room that had two big metal doors that they locked and had a sign that said, you might not be let out of here. <laughs> and then they brought in some effeminate man who, you know, claimed to be an analyst. And he was asking me questions in a lab coat. Uh, I thought it was a mental hospital. Turns out my father said it wasn't you know, Stony Brook psychiatric facility. He says it was just a little bit of counseling. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love the, I love the gaslighting manipulation projection that gets to be exposed on here. And then they double down on it. I go, okay, <laughs> if you want to really do this in front of a live audience, I'm totally for it. You know, we can finally get some vindication here. You know, they wonder why I have so much anger and bitterness and resentment maybe because i've been abused and gaslit all my life uh i don't play the victim i'm just saying it might be possible some folks have said some of the audience members have noticed a shocking pattern of what seems to be potentially deception manipulation arrogance ignorance gaslighting and false projection right Polly boy's a little sick the drugs got him something wrong with him 
one man's got of all media is the next man's uh, albatross. So let's let's uh, go to that. Hopefully, I won't be copyright because everything's copyrighted nowadays. You play the Tao, it's copywritten. You know, <laughs> sayings of the Buddha, copywritten. I, I'm pretty sure Lao Tzu and Buddha didn't copyright any of this shit. So you guys basically stole their work and then copyrighted it and then want to give me shit for playing it. It's kind of interesting. I don't know how that works. My legal team's looking at it. Let's just view this because this is like, I watched a few minutes of it and pretty much reeks of like, the whole travesty and tragedy that is my upbringing and many others out there because god forbid you don't act like this mother you're going to see later in the clip just completely fucking brain dead indoctrinated mind and heart controlled god forbid you're like this child who says i think i've seen or found god and you know goes to explain what it feels like or what the experience is that'll make you crazy right not voting for slave masters who are corrupt not paying the tax to do genocidal wars around the world right? No, no, no. That's not crazy. Taking this substance and saying, maybe you met God or know what God is, wild stuff. You know? Joe Biden running your world? That's just another day. This is this is the inversion land we're in. So I'm going to play this enough venting. It's pure insanity, but you can get a peek into the average suburban American household and how things run. You um, like LSD? Yes. Why? Well, because for one, it, it teaches me a lot about myself that I didn't know. And it, it now, to be clear, I do have this on 1.25 speed. Um, not really as much for the time as to try to throw off the copyright slavery issues. Kind of informs me about my environment and what goes on. What does it tell you about yourself? It tells me what I like. What, what do you like? Well, Steve. You know, I can't really explain what I like. It's hard to explain. You see, you had an experience that I haven't had, and I'm trying to find out what your experience is like, what it does for you, what it feels like. Well, um, it makes everything a little unreal. You know, everything that is it, it hallucinations project from my mind, and uh, everything that I see is is myself. I mean, it's all coming from my mind, and and all the all the things that I see, everything that I see is is all, I'm all, I'm making it all. You're controlling everything. Yes, I'm controlling what the scenery looks like about me. I'm not controlling it necessarily, but when it's happening, that's that's what's me. That's now, let's be clear. This is 1967. This is what the mother and them are going to characterize as insanity that later goes on to be the foundation of quantum physics. Okay? Just, right. uh, let's just be clear about that, right? Like, this this is the, the fine line between genius and insanity. You could argue the ones called insane are really just genius ahead of their time. But let's not get into that. It's upsetting to some folks. That's me happening. How about people? Do you think that uh, before you used the drug, you were afraid of people? Well, I didn't know it at the time, but I realized that I was when I took the drug. Because it brings out your inner feelings more intensely. And why do you think you were afraid of them before? Because I didn't know them. Do you feel that you do not? Did I cut out Talcott? I'm getting I'm getting all fucked up on my screen here. Yeah. Frozen. Frozen. Yeah. Fucking incredible. <laughs> it really is. I'm I'm fucking hardwired in, man, to the goddamn modem. And we're gonna play this fucking game. Timmy's spinning on my end. Video spinning on my end. You can yeah. still him. Yeah, we hear you. And the video is spinning though. Here it's coming okay. back. Spinning. We're coming back now. You got to summon it. You got to, you got to, you got to make sure you go, you go get behind me, Shaitan demon interfering with my broadcast. Get behind me. I'm spinning. I'm spinning, right. You know what? This is a good time to, to segue to this. <laughs> I got something for you, demons. Supernatural is me. I'm supernatural. G. Supernatural. Word, girl. Supernatural. Supernatural. Yeah. Supernatural flows on here on you, demons. Stay the fuck around me. All right, that's enough of that. Let's get back to it. They don't want me. The they, the it, the thing, something. 
my service provider. Someone, something doesn't want me talking about this. That's what I'm getting from this. Like the Ouija board. Metaverse is like the Ouija board where you can open a portal and call in these these energies and spirits and then they try to communicate through the equipment. It's like a ghost radio. Go ahead, Tal. Real quick on that, uh, the fine line between genius versus insanity and people being misunderstood before their time, it's it's not just the time, it's also the people were around, right? Because you get confused people around, ignorant people around, and the brilliant are confusing, and the simple, they don't want to admit their confusion, so they they blame and they punish. That's the ways of the past. This is crazy, but I, I want to point out, you know, genius versus insanity. I suppose you can tell by the truth, but then it also depends on the opinions of those around them. Well, yeah, I mean, again, this goes back to Plato and beyond. Um, we're almost consistently <clears throat> seeing uh, systems and societies where uh, the genius is governed by the inferior, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, hello again, let me yeah. direct the court's attention back to Donald Trump and or Joe Biden, even better. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know everyone loves Donnie. It doesn't matter your system, at least for four years now, or however many it's been, I can't even keep track. It's all one moment to me at this point. Um, at least for four years, put forth a completely retarded senilic person to govern the rest of us supposedly and you wonder why i'm not down with this endeavor anymore and i'm not listening because it's become <laughs> it's become almost a godly intelligence test will you accept this system and who and what comes with it if you will well we're gonna fuck you harder they tell you we're gonna you're gonna get fucked if you don't follow it but i go i'm willing to gamble i'm willing to take my chances i can't do it with a clear conscience anymore i never really did never really joined it to begin with right never voted once you know, never have really done any of it. You know, I paid limited taxes at one point, even when, you know, I started to look into this at one point, I, I changed the status of the way it was filed when I was on papers with these folks working, you know, so I'm out, really don't care how it turns out. Um, you know, I'd like to not go to prison or be killed. If that happens, I'm going to have to sit wherever, either in the ether or in the box going, I still believe I know why I'm here. And I'm and I have to be okay with that because I'm done with the sickness and the insanity and the inversion of reality. I just can't participate anymore. Sorry, Paul. Paul you are my brother. Sincerely, here's a distinction though between us. You just shared you never bought into it. I did. I raised my hand and took so many friggin' oaths. This is this life. It's I've got some repentance maybe within me. And so that's why I'm so focused on, let me go, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's confront this nonsense. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that kind of saved me, if you will, or, or allowed me to be a bit of a different ilk is, and I'm not saying this from an egotistical prideful perspective. I have, apparently they tell me I have a, a, a fairly high IQ, which really just amounts to being able to make connections that the rest of the slaves can't. So like from like 12 years old, pretty much and on, I'm looking around going, uh, what planet am I on? Right. And they're like, what do you mean? And I go, well, it seems that once you get past that 100, 110 IQ threshold into the 120, 130 areas and beyond, you start to see a whole overlay of reality and like what's actually going on. And it's pretty much like hell on earth to somebody who's, you know, a bit above the 90 to 100 IQ points. Like once you can start to look at the world and make the connections read between the lines, and then you start to talk to everyone else who can't, you start to, like the man said from the beginning of time, a man who's proud of his intelligence is like a condemned man who's proud of his large jail cell. <laughs> There's nothing to be prideful and egotistical about. You're literally alone the majority of the time. Because you're communicating a reality that to these folks may as well not exist. And you're living in a reality that shouldn't exist. Amen. What do you do with that? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about intelligence being linked to mental and emotional and spiritual illness? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> That'll do it to you. Oh, can any of that? Dude, well, it's not, well, I could, it couldn't be pointed out better. Sorry, stumbled on my words there. <laughs> JG, how are you? I noticed you were a little bit uppity, you know, this the beginning of the broadcast, kind of, <laughs> you know, wanting an interaction with me, wanting some attention from me. Uh, are we good to go? I kind of want to heat wave. Yeah, let's get back to the kid. You're right, Talcott. I was going there, but I wanted to be cordial and courteous and, and greet Mr. Right. Heatwave. <laughs> feel any rejection towards him. I, I used to be constantly thinking about being afraid of him, but now I don't have to be afraid anymore because they're all beautiful, and whether they reject me or not, they're still beautiful. Does it ever seem to you that this may be a little unreal? I think I got speeded up there when we were got when we got broken. Me, that's me happening. How about people? Two. Do you think that uh, before you used the drug, you were afraid of people? Well, I didn't know it at the time, but I realized that I was when I took the drug. Because it brings out your inner feelings more intensely. And why do you think we're afraid of them before? Because I didn't know them. Do you feel that you do know them through the drug? No, I don't feel I know them, but I'm not afraid of being rejected by them. Because I, I don't feel any rejection towards them. I, I used to be constantly thinking about being afraid of them. But now I don't have to be afraid anymore because they're all beautiful. And whether they reject me or not, they're still beautiful. Does it ever seem to you that this may be a little unreal? Oh, yes. But, I mean, uh, after after you learn this on an acid trip, you practice it when you're straight, too. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't no, leave you. If everybody is beautiful, then there's no one who's, say, dangerous to you. Oh, but the dangerous people are beautiful, too. They're dangerous, sure, but they're still beautiful. Why are you here? Well... It's a long story, but I'll try to break it down in short. I, I found God, and uh, I, I made me feel quite good, you know. And my mother mistook this good feeling for uh, taking. I found God, and I scared the shit out of all the dumb infidels around me with broken hearts and spirits. You'd understand, Mr. Doctor, wouldn't you? Drugs, and I was getting kind of wayward and everything. I mean, I wasn't coming home on time, so she phoned the police, and I was brought to YGC, and then I was brought here. Because of my talking about God and everything, they might have thought that I was a little crazy. Do you think you are? No. But I understand how they felt because I wasn't making myself clear on it. It's very hard to... Ex I was trying to express something that was hard to express, and I wasn't really capable of expressing it. I mean, I can have the relationship between myself and God, but I, uh, it's a mistake to try to make other people feel the way I did, and that's what I was trying to do. What's God like? Well, first of all, God is everything, so he's like everything. <laughs> he is everything. There's nothing that he's that he isn't like. Is he like a man? <laughs> I, I don't know. Everything he lives in everything, everything, on this earth. I can't describe to you the feeling that it's the genius when your son says to you, "Can't you feel it? God is everywhere. Uh, I'm going. Get up, and I'm waiting for God to come and get me. Uh, it, it's it's a it isn't a happy thing at all or an inside it's a death wish and I tried talking sense to him I said Jimmy you don't see God till you die but he he couldn't see that at all he believed that he was seeing it right now right because you're the infidel death worshiper like it says in scripture you think you have to die in order to know God when it's a living God not a God of the death the dead that's your God. See, imagine a world where this woman considered that this is a dualistic simulation. Sun and moon, night and day, male and female. I can go on. Republican, Democrat, I'll give you something you can understand. <laughs> right? Even you can understand that. So you wake up one day and you go, oh my God, I'm alive. And my beingness extends beyond this physical vessel. And, you know, that beingness is united on some level with the all. And they go, holy crap, this kid's gone crazy. Right. Everyone knows you don't you can't know God or the Holy Spirit till you die. We all right. know all us Republicans and Democrats know that, huh? And that's when you realize you're in a mental asylum full of <laughs> demonic infidels who want to keep you from knowing the living God. Hello? Is anyone hearing me? Am I doing what the kid's doing where we think that we're smart and know better than them, but they got all the answers? And we're just crazy now. 
That was because this is the exact conversation I had after smoking PCP for about a year straight uh, with the effeminate man at Brookhaven Psychiatric Institute with the big closing metal doors. They say they're not going to let you out of if it goes bad, which was a little scary to me. I got to tell you, you know, to have like your mother just broken from your life and then get to a certain point where your father pretty much thinks you're insane and then hands you over to these people. And then you're talking to basically that guy's mother with a degree is what it feels like. And I'm like, oh, my God, my life is, is resting in the hands of an institutionalized, indoctrinated, infidel slave. I better be very careful about my words here. Right. Good thing I'm a good talker and I can somehow explain myself, even if I'm acting crazy, because if not, you wouldn't know me right now. <laughs> you wouldn't have seen me again. Right. Yeah. So I go, listen, guy, I get it. He goes, have you used any drugs? I go, it's possible. I didn't, I go, I really don't want to get into it. I go, I'm sure you could understand why I wouldn't want to get into this. I start playing Lauren Laguna now, right? I'm, I start going legal counsel to the effeminate psychologist. I'm like, I might use some things here and there, but let's not get into that. He's like, tell me about your experience. I go, I fucked up. Um, I had some experiences. I got a vivid imagination. And I went and made the mistake of trying to tell my low-level consciousness father and other people about different aspects of reality that I was, you know, pontificating on. That was my, like the kid just did. He goes, oh, sorry, guy. It was my mistake. I tried to tell my indoctrinated, retarded mother about God. And I even tried to even convince her to have this experience. Really sorry about that. That was my mistake, right? The kid's more accountable and responsible and clear and precise and conversational than the damn mother who's supposed to be leading, guiding, and protecting. And you wonder why I come on here at times with my father and the rest of them with the energy I do. Because this shit's been going on forever, it seems. It's, it's beyond sickening and grotesque. I can only, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hope. I was going to say, Talca, I was going to say, I can only hope this mother died a painful death because she's dead by now. It's 1967. Doubt she's 150 years old. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to err on the side of died a painful suffering death where she was forced to look at all of her fucking condemnation and projection and dysfunction uh, right before she begs for forgiveness. Pathetic slave. The same pathetic type of slave that would have went and voted for someone to send that boy to Vietnam to be blown into bits. Right. For, 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 for a demonic mockery sorcery ritual. Go ahead, Talcott. I'm starting to feel the, the churning of the vitriol yeah. acid yeah. coming yeah. up to spray on these people's false masks yeah. to just yeah. dissolve it. I, I feel for you. This is what I was talking about in my own experience. When I came out of my confusion, <laughs> the, the slaves around me got confused and they, they got afraid of me. And, um, I've been learning how to be gentle, though. <laughs> Paul, I can imagine, though. Luckily, you had the gift of uh, speech that you do. Because I could imagine things could have gone differently. <laughs> hey, listen, get up here, bro. Don't sit in my chat like a hoe typing with Twitter fingers and emojis crying. I think he you got a link here. down there. You get the fuck up here and you have a discussion. Right? You bring whatever you want. We're not like those bitch ass sectors over there where they got all these types of rules and appeals to emotion and false authority. You know, you can get everything you came for here. So come on up. Let's have the discussion. Let's do the y'all have a back and forth. And then we'll move on with the rest of our fucking day in life. Huh? What do you say? You were saying Mr. Talcott and others. It was a, it was a funny uh, truth that, uh, the Vietnamese uh, veterans, there's no such thing as PTSD here. They don't, uh, none of them have it. So, but all the Americans do. So you make of that what you will. Give him the link, O'Shea. He's on your end. I dropped the link on my end. Apparently he can't see it. Let me finish the, let me finish the clip. Jim hasn't adjusted well to school. He's an extremely introverted boy, or has been up until lately. Uh, you think maybe it's because he's surrounded with people like you? 
You think? You think Paulie got introverted as much as they say he's an extrovert? He's loud and proud. He's, he's so gregarious. Uh, yeah. Do you think there might have been a time in my life where I was completely introverted because I was surrounded by bizarre, skewed perspective, demonic infidels like this woman? And whoever the normal child that would be born to this woman would be that you'd be hanging with, you know, in the schoolyard or in class. I don't know. Maybe. Shy. He wouldn't try. Yeah, the least sign of failure to him meant an automatic stop right now. And I, I think that the problems that he had were magnified and triggered by the relief that he seemed to find in drugs. And I feel as though that this is many of the, of the children today are doing this type of thing. And if, if it could be stressed that this is a medical problem and not a criminal. No, you dumb cunt. It's because every time he tries to fucking do anything and explore who and what he is and generate results, you got something to fucking say about it. So you've already uploaded him with a fucking personality disorder and neuroses. So he can't fucking do anything that when he feels like he's losing and failing like you, he starts to check out because he doesn't want to be like you. He goes, oh, I lost and failed. I'm going to get judged. I'm just going to stop trying because every time I try to be me and do what I do, I got some devouring mama cunt over my shoulder making projections onto me, trying to cut my balls off with a system. You think maybe that has something to do with it? Goofy broad? If only she had a man like me who was uncivilized and undomesticated around her to put her up on some fucking game. And tell her how to mother a boy into being a man. Thoughts on any of that, Mr. Talcott and others? I'm going to go hit the reefer. I got I to gotta calm down here. I'm very Take angry. Take. Very angry and upset, Ch Talcott. And it's, it's triggering the folks. Remind yourself it's the past. Please take take a break. Yes, it's not Thank happening you. now. It's not happening now. It's not happening now. There you okay, go. Right, right, right. There you go. There <laughs> I'm you free. Go. I'm safe. I'm free. I'm safe. <laughs> yes. Hey, Brian. When when Paul asked you to drop the chat, it was the the viewer who's asking for the chat is on your channel, not Paul's. You dropped the link in Paul's channel, but not oh, okay. yours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, think about when i went through this myself and i've met several other people who have gone through an awakening and gotten themselves locked up because people didn't understand locked up in different ways and they friggin well i didn't know <laughs> i didn't understand the way the world was working myself and i ended up getting locked up and they force medicate force medicated me um i was not pleased with that experience that's for sure and it's just evidence our mental <laughs> the mental health professionals <laughs> they're, they're just gatekeepers man they're just gatekeepers to to maybe the spiritual gates they're like they're like that may be i don't want to say the word enemy but uh that's that's uh them and the religionists that's that's brutal because yeah. they the psychology and the, the way we think and that's like if they can control that and keep that going i mean you can make an argument for history or, or culture or uh politics but um yeah them controlling those books and everybody following it, all that DSM one two three, you at UCC one two three and the DSM one two three, um, all these codes, right? Overlaying on uh, reality. It's just crazy. Yeah, because that's what this whole thing is about. When you zoom out, it's about removing God and the God's law and the track put down for all of us, the fate, the destiny. It's about removing the connection with that and having all the human beings operate like the machines they're about to replace us with. Dummies, you're running off code. You're running on code. You're a biological machine and soon they're going to replace your bitch ass because unless, you accepted the fucking sorcery and mockery. Unless, unless people find within themselves the will and the determination to start changing and start breaking free because <laughs> this is the time man there's there's a shift and a happening and we're a part of something 
something pretty big. I think the world of the future, well, just like in our lifetime, the world has changed. So many Jack Talcott, things. do you not think I and others are being used, like you say, by God to give everyone an opportunity? Every one of these punk ass cowards could have took their fucking plates off at the same motherfucking time, V for Vendetta style. They're not going to do it. And when one or two folks poke their head out and they get tapped on the head, the rest of the little chimp monks go back in their fucking slave hole. That's the reality of it. It's whack-a-mole season. So stand up and step out or you're fucked anyway. You stand up and step out. If they fuck you, but it's your choice, so to speak, it's a different level of understanding as far as I perceive. It's a different karmic resolution. So that metaphysical box is going to hold you or it's going to be your training round. Right? It's either your container in your coffin or it's your training round your ring like a boxer in a sense, metaphorically, metaphysically. So, you know, again, when you see it for what it is and when you realize you're the one or linked up to the one to the thing, color aside for a lot of folks who can't get over that because human consciousness is human consciousness. We're all made in the image of the most high. All right, we have a so play a TV in the back. How are you, so play a TV? What's up with it? Uh, uh, Emma writes, what's going on? <laughs> Greetings. I just want to enjoy this conversation, this, intellect, this intellectual, uh, one-sided, biased, biblical conversation. So I want to add some flavor and color and blackness to it. Absolutely. Go ahead. And I make sure you hey, make sure you take up the slack on ignorance and arrogance too. We need some more of that. That's cool. I'm, I'll be sure to do that because my smoke. I'm ain't sure really you will. Me. Go ahead, sir. My smoke ain't really with you. It's your compadres right here. So I just want to sit back in the cut and just see if they're gonna just see. Do they speak all the things that they utter when they come other places in front of their uh compadre, their leader? Well, let's be a little bit more specific because I believe that you're addressing this to a one Brian O'Shea. Am I correct? Most definitely. All right, so let's just be very direct with each other, right? I have no issues with you. I have no past experience with you. I'm open to hear everything you have to say, uh, and we can dialogue as men, color aside. Let's do it. Uh, Mr. O'Shea, uh, what, what's your purpose uh, of running? I'm not going to speak on other people. I, I like your uh, person here that says Paul on, on slaves. So I'm, I'm going to well, stay Thank on you, level. sir. I appreciate that. I, I like you too level. so far. Yeah, I'm gonna stay on his level, and we're gonna and we're gonna keep this very educated. What is your purpose <laughs> of coming to panels? And I'm not gonna speak on others. I'm just gonna speak on mine. No, I purpose? just want you to be clear that here we police our own. It's a lot like prison. We're not racist, but we understand the protocol. I can't have the blacks beat Brian O'Shea. So if this, like, you know, court, so to speak, I thought you said it was all color aside because we can't. Have no, 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 no. I, I'm white. saying I'm I'm invoking the color in order to put it aside. I'm saying okay, at the okay, end of this. You. If we, through this courting process, determine that Mr. O'Shea is an error, the quote-unquote whites, as you put it, I don't identify with whiteness, but I know I will be identified with whiteness. Let's the go. whites will police Brian O'Shea, and they will beat him and get him back in line so that the blacks do not have to engage in that. I like you, Paul. Let's go. Let's rock out. Let's rock you out. Go. I like you. Go I ahead, like you. Brian O'Shea. You're up to bat. What, what's your purpose for coming up to uh, coming up to my panel several times and, and causing, causing disturbances and uh, you know just dropping unnecessary things on my in my chat, dropping unnecessary things on my on my screen? Like, what, what's your purpose in that, sir? The exact purpose is being manifest right now is to get you to have a conversation with Paul and Slay. Bro, you're trying to take out my channel. You don't even know me. I'm not trying to take out your channel. So why do you have who? Bro, you came to my channel several times. I'm not I'm I'm not trying to throw you under the bus in front of your people, but you know exactly what you did. I just want to see if you're gonna be mad enough to admit what you did in front of your people and your peers. Can you be now, can Mr. You Nat Turner, Turner you just to be fair? Mr. Nat Turner, just to be fair, so that you have this knowledge, we are aware of Mr. O'Shea's activities, and this has been uh, you know a pattern of behavior. We're aware of it, and you know, some of us, I'll speak for myself. I believe that his intentions are not racism and hate, and I believe that he's not looking to take your channel out. He's merely looking to do some what we call trigonometry, where we, you know, talk about things that may be sensitive to folks, right? It's not even about color all the time. We do this with white folks, brown folks, yellow folks, all types of folks, right? It's color aside. 
So he's doing a bit of humor and a bit of triggering in order to generate a conversation where we can create clarity from one side or the other. I don't believe he means you any harm. Okay, I'll take that. But can can let me talk to you, Paul. Do you would you say that he's acting as a as we would say in like gang culture? He's acting like a foot as a foot soldier and not like a boss. Can I jump uh, in? Here if we're gonna. It, yeah, Jack, just real quick. Um, let's try to create some. Let me try to create some clarity here if I'm able to. Uh, I don't believe I could see how that's seen from a different side, from a different culture, right? I've been all over. I've kind of experienced it at all. I don't think that he's coming at it from that perspective. Um, I think he's coming at it from more of a media broadcasting perspective, right? Why can't Where he he's, he's, himself? You're, high, you're educated and you, and you seem like, and it's not no smoke. Absolutely, like sir. If you, I'm not going to talk for him. I'm not going to talk for him. Go ahead. I, again, I just wanted to tell you what I was aware of and what my experience is because you were saying that he but has to like admit to... You're meeting on the level regardless of any differences that could be here. But like, you're having agreed. to speak for him because maybe you think that he doesn't have the word, he doesn't have the, the vocabulary to use to get him out of these type of situations and he might sink in front of you. So don't give him a life jacket and save him. Well, listen, I've been accused of that in the past. So I'm going to take your advice in this sense and I'm going to back off and let him stand his ground and communicate his thoughts and feelings and intentions. We're listening. Now, if I, if I may, and Brian, I actually, I think Brian gave you the answer already. He I was want your answer. I don't, I don't oh, know if you ahead. thought it. The, the why behind, what I heard Brian say, the why behind it was to get an introduction between you and Mr. Paul Unslaved. And so, from that aspect, what you described, Nat, it sounds accurate as well, acting as a foot soldier rather than a boss. But yeah, I would prefer the term emissary. Foot soldier has such an unsavory connotation. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what exactly what it sounds like. You can't you can't tell me the uh, the, uh, the cognitation to use and how I perceive it. He looks Who the definitely fuck like a foot are soldier. you, you cupcake? I'll take your channel down. You cry See? like a V. Are you a Me Too victim? What's up with your satanic symbology on your icon? You want to talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about whence came you. Let's do How it. How about we talk about you whence niggers you? being you? racist more than the let's, whites? Let's, bro, we can do it. You whence guys are you? racist as fuck. You brought racism up in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's up let's with go. your symbology? And what's wrong if I do strike your channel? Not O'Shea me. Snap Who snap. is you? Who is By you? Way, Who am I talking to fucker? now? Who am I talking to now? Because I can handle all of it. Exclu excluding Paul, we, we because he's the only one where I can see with some sense. Hey, the two that's talking, yeah, I can handle y'all Emma Rice. Let's go. Yeah, Snafu, just to be clear, you're doing what you usually do, and I'm not sure how much of it's a bit or a non-bit, but you're escalating. Rather than de-escalating and having a conversation and a meeting of the minds, we're now in escalation mode, when we were already past that. Exactly. See, a lot of folks, you claim to have done time in prison, bro. What impresses me is that you made it out alive. Because how you could take yourself around in any venue like that and escalate like this when we're already beyond that point, it indicates something to me is like off. I, I don't know how it all fits together. Something's not. You must have not done this in prison is what it was. Like you do this shit on here, but you must have not done it there. Because if you did, you probably wouldn't have made it out. He would have got his block knocked off. No, no, no. These motherfuckers know what they're into. Look at his little bro. satanic symbology. Bro. Come up, up here trying to right. show The reality of it is, bro, you don't know who he is, what he's into oh, one way or the other, and he's not been belligerent or combative. So why you would escalate with someone who you don't know what the consequences yeah, are, really, you know consequences. is your ignorance. I always am packing. I'm always okay. I'm always safe. Motherfuckers want to check me. Let's play. we got real whistleblowers in this shit. This motherfucker wants to come up here with his satanic symbology. Trying to push these black panels push more racism than the white panels, ladies and so gentlemen. So then have the conversation, bro. Then have the conversation. You don't need to yell and scream and all the rest of it. Have the conversation. All right, you guys push more of the racism than any of the white panels. All you black community segregated community panels. Well, my panel's not about that, so try again. Bullshit. Try again. I got your channel. We know exactly what you're about. We looked into already. We know why you're using satanic symbology. Fuck off. That's another reason I feel comfortable, Paul. This is a little digital metaverse came in Me Too movement. We know what he's about. He's crying already about his channel. Okay. So okay. I, you're right. When he's done, I'll speak. I'm going to give you the whole prison, floor. Paul. Because I see right now. You right, yeah, go ahead. Because it. he has a habit of, of he's not going to shut up and then he's going to try to talk over you. And I'm like, I've told him many times.
He 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 he's another one who can't conduct himself properly on this channel, but on his own channel, he's the nicest, most kindest, politest guy in the world, but he can't summon that energy here somehow to get to the fucking facts. Go ahead, sir. All thing I'm saying is first of all, my channel it I'm I came here as what you see on here. Yeah, that's what I do represent. But if you go look at any not uh, any video on my page. I never. I don't talk about this. I talk about rappers in my in my city in Dallas. I don't get here I'm talking about Christians, Muslims, Voodoo, Hinduism, Masonic, Shriners, anything. That's not what the the contingency of my channel. Period. So for him to give that false information, even coming to my channel to bring that to my channel, come on, bro, that's stupid. You just stirring up stuff to, you, like the same thing. I, that's the same thing I got with Brian. Come to my channel to stir up these conversations for what? I, my channel's not even based on that. We don't even do this type of content. So it's dumb. Find your bite with the go find your fight with the NAACP or the Prince Hall Masons or your Christian black Christian pastors or whatever. Not what are you fight with me for? I'm here. Well, sir, rappers. I mean, I think that's what the again, this is what the sentiment I'm trying to indicate to you is is it may appear to be one thing, but the pattern of what we actually do here with this bit he's doing is somehow it gets funneled back to me. We have great conversations and then we create clarity and unification for other folks who may be witnessing. So and I, I think that that's good work. Paul, Cause you sound like this and you know, I came in here on some, on some BS, but like, I understand how people act outside of their, you know what I'm saying? Click culture, organization, whatever, pals, friends. I'm saying you sound educated. I'm saying if you can hear what I'm saying, Whatever he came back over here and said to y'all when y'all having y'all's conversations about it, great. What I'm saying is the point was purposeless. It was just doing something out of boredom. Like, when am I ever... Well, I'm not going to deny that. When, when am I ever on my channel having these type of topics where I'm doing panels and we're, and we're going to go through all this esoteric information. Woo -woo. I can't say in my four years of blogging on this net, that's probably happened five to ten times out of four years so telling me this is what my channel's based on this is why you're here this is why you're starting up stuff this is why you're coming to my panel bro you were just higher drunk and bored <laughs> okay that aside i'm not even gonna deny that i don't i can't again brian o'shea anytime you're ready man just unmute and have a conversation with this man because it is it's like it's reeking of kind of half promotion marketing and then creating something here and also like putting off your responsibilities and obligations onto me. So like we got to meet in the middle there. He's yet to say anything. It's me and you conversing. <laughs> right. I don't know what, I don't know what is like, he's been doing this like, and this has happened a few times and I'm not quite sure either what his ultimate uh, and, game and, here and is or, or like so outcome or intention. Let me say something in this world that they figure is racist, but in my mind, I think just to, just to kind of catch some of the quote unquote white people's back, because this happened, this, they, they threw reverse racism on white people all the time. Yeah, on my panel every night, one of my co hosts is a white guy. You see what I'm saying? How, wow. how dumb that sounds? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I just want to throw that Wait, out. You there. have an actual caucasoid beast over there, and, and you let him co host? Right you let him co host. From, from, from the tribe of Canaan, sits right next to me. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Well, that kind of warms the heart a little bit. <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> you know, a warm cup of cocoa. Right? <laughs> Let, let's do it. Because I'm somebody, if, if they have heard me get on these type of topics, I'm someone who, when I do get on this type of information, I say, hey, man, the very first thing I, the, these black uh, leaders have taught us about, you know, black de uh, about white devils, the black, the blonde hair, blue eye beast, and all this. But I'm gonna tell you, if I was in leadership, the very first thing I'm gonna take out is the black devil because he harmed me before the white devil even get to me. He, uh, the black devil is employed by the white devil, and the devil is the devil regardless of the damn skin color. I don't give a damn if he's Asian, Mexican, white. Uh, I don't give a damn what he is. Purple devil is devil. God is God. It's not magnified by no damn color. <clears throat> I mean, listen, I, you know, you're basically. You know, we're one self on the highest level and we're speaking the same language because I just had this conversation or did the monologue the other day about, you know, usually in most communities, the person who you got to look out for, if you got to look out for anybody, looks like you, whether that's on the white side or the black side, right? The white man in the suburbs is not looking for, uh, you know, Pookie and Ray Ray typically because they ain't living around them. They're looking exactly. for another motherfucker that looks like them in a suit who's going to take their whole house and their whole livelihood and do it with paperwork. 
you know, and obviously on the other end, the guy in the hood in the ghetto, he's not looking necessarily over his shoulder uh, for some white guy from the suburbs. I mean, maybe in uniform, but usually he's getting shot at or competing with somebody who looks like him from the areas that what I've seen. No, that's so, fact. And then, yeah, you can argue both sides of that, those worlds cross over and meet in the middle at some point, right? There's a yin, there's a yang, and there's a gray area. So, you know. And, and then when I looked at his page, and I'm just going back to the Brian dude, so I said, let me do my homework. So I go look at his page, and then, like, one of the titles, The Blacks Are Racist, I'm like, bro, and, and I'm not messed up. Everyone has their opinions. Everyone has their, their background. I'm not messed up with none of that. I keep asking, like, so what was your purpose of coming to my page with what you was coming with? And then when we invited you up to the panel, bro, we invited you up to the panel. Then you come up there. And I hate to say it, bro. You can say it wasn't you, but you porn bomb me, bro. <laughs> he he doesn't do that, uh, that I know of. Well, it, it's just, it's so, watch this. It's, it, I mean, I, we're going to just go on coincidence. He comes, he's in the chat. He's saying what he's saying. And then I let this mystery person up that we've never seen before. Then we got this mystery person in the chat that's saying all this. Yeah, they stuff. follow. They follow. He, so he maybe he's not one of doing his that. Friends or something. Well, I'm just saying. No, uh, it's the followers from these channels, bro. They follow us around and then they they try to hop on the back of whoever whatever's going on. We're not into that. I I I, I, I can't say completely because I'm not over there with him, but I have enough experience with him to know, bro. He gets on stage and does comedy. He's not looking to fuck your channel. He's looking to have interesting conversation, make people laugh, or trigger and have controversy at best. You know, if it leads to something, you know, well, he's not him, looking to, to porn bomb you or have your channel taken out. Well, I, I invited him up because, you know, hey, I, I just to give you a rundown of my resume. Hey, my father was a preacher, so I'm from the church. But I did once I got to my own age, you know what I'm saying? I did take up on the Nation of Islam. I left from the Nation of Islam. I went to the Ansarala community. From there, I became a black uh, a black uh, Hebrew Israelite. From there, I stepped onto the Masonic path. I became a master mason. From there, I, I went on the higher degrees from there. I went to the ancient mystic order of Melchizedek. I'm very versed if he wants to have the conversation. But coming to me, can I ask you a question personally, if you're willing to answer, do you find that? Because I think part of what he's he's what it became is I've noticed in my own experiences and I've noticed with his kind of simulation he's doing that it does seem to be that it uh, it is black folks in quotes, right? Darker skin folks who do appeal more to the colorism and the racism than the white folks on these panels. Right. It's like nine out of 10 times. If he even goes to a panel where it's predominantly black folks, the first thing that they start talking about has how he's an ugly cracker, Caucasoid beast like, you know, racist piece of shit. And we're like, where'd you get all that based on the color of his skin? So I think that's what it becomes is this revelation that you have a lot of black folks on here talking constant colorism and racism coming from without when really they're holding it within because they're seeing color and then making a whole bunch of determinations and disparaging remarks based off the color of somebody's skin without even knowing them or having any experience with them. And that we know is incorrect from all sides. Well, I can, I can agree to that, but let me just speak on the sector that he went into that, that, that man got greeted with open arms. There's not a panel that that dude Brian went to where he was not on, where he was not welcome to come up there. No one kicked him off. he, what happened was he gets into these confrontations, get kicked off because of his own doings. He starts this ruckus up, which makes people turn on him. And that's any conversation. That's anything. If you get in front, if, let's just take it to pen, all penitential rules in effect. If you if you fuck with the woods, the woods is gonna say fuck you, nigga. If you and so if you if, if in reverse, if if we're gonna say fuck, you know what I'm saying, fuck the fuck the white boy. So it's just like if you up on a panel of blacks and you attack a black or two with your nonsense, hell yeah, the blacks are gonna group group up and kick your ass, white boy. Just like you were doing the opposite. So I'm not right. going for that petty excuse when he's the person that comes up there because every panel he went to, they was greeting him with open arms and he started something. He cries like a baby once he when he starts up this shit and it don't go his way because maybe his crew's not here to fight with him. Yeah, well, that's the thing is there is no crew. I mean, while I kind of did the bit non bit before, we're not in the penitentiary, right? And we don't have to establish limits and rules for ourselves based on color of well, how we interact like in politics, right? Well, I so, can only imagine that this dude have to, like, if he's a street, let's just say, if he ain't did no time 
whether it's a, a couple a couple of years a couple of months in the county or if he ain't did no time in the pen what is his reason for moving like this what's this militant action and then to fall back on your sword like you're the victim again i don't necessarily see it as a militant action he's basically he going doing? he's going to panels that are predominantly black for right? what and what's his purpose again, Again, he wasn't he, asked. He, the subject did not. Well, Brian, why about? don't Brian? Again, we're back to square one, and I can't argue with the man on it. Could you please have a conversation with him? I'm gonna go hit the blunt a couple more times. Yeah, I'm rolling up one uh, two right and, now. And Paul. you can like yeah. politic with him, and you can have a conversation with him, and you all can reach some kind of common ground. I'm not daddy. I am. Um, I was voted sir best online daddy, 2023. To be clear, black folks weren't a part of that, and that's part of what I'm doing here. Because I figure if we're going to elect me as a daddy online, best 2023, we need to have representation from black folks and other folks. I need best online black daddy 2023 and 2024. You might be that, right? You might have to father this young Caucasoid beast and get him in line. I don't know. I don't really know what he's completely up to. So, Brian, please talk to the man, figure this out, and, and I'll be back. What's up, Brian? I'm here. We're on your terms. We're on your grounds. I can't control it. Talk to me, bro. Yeah, so, you know, as far as there being, like, some overall grand strategy, it just started as something where I click a live tab on my page. And for some reason, it I know that different channels that I have have different – I get different options to different lives when I click that live tab. It's a generic thing on the main YouTube page. So I click that live tab. And for some reason, on my main page, these Mo3 sectors come up, right? But I just looked at them as black panels. I didn't know, really know what they were. So I click on it, and I noticed, like, you brought up the stream titled uh, The Blacks Are Racist. Now, that title came up as a result of me hopping on a number of black panels. I mean, it's all documented. You know what I mean? Like, so, so what I'd hop on, and a lot of it would be like, who this is? What you doing here? Oh, this white boy, this crack of this pepper wood. Get the hell out of here. Like, a lot of it would just be that. Like, you barely even get up. If I do get a chance to get up, I'll say a few words. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago to South. Side. Get his ass out of here. Like, a lot of times, you, I can't even get into any conversations. And then once I do get into some conversations, if anything comes out of my mouth that is can be deemed in any sort of way, like, people are just tri they're on the trigger. They have their finger on the trigger, ready to be like, get him the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, white boy, crack of pepper wood so I'm just saying that that's been my experience. Um, and then from that, it just sort of builds on itself to where I keep making, I keep putting the blacks in my title now, but now it's like nothing disparaging. It's all like the blacks today. It's the blacks in O'Shea go roller skating, the blacks uh, in O'Shea go to a comedy club. Uh, wise white man leads the blacks in uh fight for freedom. Um, strong, you know, strong, strong oh shit strong blacks and oh whatever like you know blacks is always in there but just because i say blacks it's, it seems to trigger for some reason and, and i heard i can't even use the word trigger because it rhymes with something bro you're making this all this up is, is an illusion in your head you're making this up to fit some crazy ideology and narrative to make you feel like you're some i don't know radical influencer that you're not cut the bullshit and be you bro All this shit is figmentation of your mind. Well, the, the the fact is, whether or not these conversations lead to a, whether or not what I do leads to a conversation with Paul, and whether or not that's what I should be doing, the fact is, it happened, right? Now, whether or not I should have my own voice, and I should, you know, have to lead, uh, you know, because Paul said he, he would like Black Center from the beginning, like two years ago, he said, I would like to... Uh, you know, have a have a black audience or some sort of um, interaction with with black panels. And I think he's had a similar experience when he's tried to like go up on there, and he's had similar things where he can't really like. Eventually, he just gets kicked off and called a a cracker or something. Um, I can help. Let, let me explain that. Let me tell. You, it's like this. It's like you see the type. You see the type of setting that y'all have. And what y'all talking about? I think it would be a lot different whether if if with you being a white guy going to a black panel or me being a black guy going to a white, it's going to be different based on the topic and what they're speaking of. If they're talking about a whole bunch of, in some cases might be nothingness. It could be somebody got into it the other day on the internet. It could be 
some uh this happened with this certain rapper so this is the big news here and then you come here with this you're not on our time sir it's like you're coming here to disturb us but if the panel was set up like this and you came and approached a conversation that was set up like this i don't think that would happen to you you're, it's like you're coming to talk esoteric knowledge to some people are talking about the rap what happened with the rap world today make it make sense yeah like if i go up there and say the topic is diddy i might trigger by saying hey why y'all gossiping about powerful men when y'all ain't powerful and got no money like what are y'all doing that for so your first thing is to denote them and then you want friendship well i mean i'm triggering they're not so why would you I'm trigger not... someone and think you're going to get a, and get a good vibe but who says i'm looking for a good vibe but i'm 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 breaking down your i'm breaking down your reasoning for even coming up there before anything happens you're saying trigger i come to do this and then at the end of the day I, uh, they should be friendly to me they should just let me talk no fucking way sir well, that's fine. I just move on to the other panel if they don't yeah, want Yeah, won't you, won't you try a different approach? Well, I mean, that's fine. It's I not look working. At... Is it working? You're here talking, <laughs> aren't you? No, I'm here. In a I'm way, here it kind of is. No, I'm not here on your cognizance. Listen to me. I'm here for the same reason you did. I was sitting there, I was sitting in my bed, bored, smoking a blunt, and I scrolled through the live, and I seen this one. I clicked it, and I seen... Your, I seen your name and another face that I was familiar with, so I hit the link. But unlike your situation, you are y'all are up here speaking on this type of information, so it's okay. When you go do it, they're talking about damn Jay Z and P Diddy, and then you're trying to bring up. Yeah, I get what you're power. saying. It makes sense. I guess where where we find the middle ground is if you go on to these quote unquote black panels and they're talking cultural stuff or whatever it is that's germane to to whatever the experience is. And you come in there as a quote unquote white looking guy, and then you bring the category or the topic completely left. It's the, the issue we're, we're running into is instead of just saying, who is this clown? We don't want to talk about this shit. Get him out of the paint. There always has to be a reference to the color of the being. So then that leaves the person having the experience thinking it's about race rather than them just not seeing any value in that person and really not wanting to inter interact with them on their terms. I agree with so, you, Paul. I agree hey, with you 100%, but I can't get over the fact that he came in there to trigger me. And if you come here as a black person, if you come to trigger me, I'm going to give you every fucking thing you're looking for. Well, that might be something, again, I'm not going to tell you how to live as no, any color man how, or any. Just, just, just a message to, to, this is not nothing. I know we get deemed a lot on, on this in, in society, but society can't change how we're going to be as a culture just because you might think it's rude or think we should do about no it. no no sir think. listen i'm the guy i'm the guy that they call me the well-to-do white folks on here part of the legal system and the rest of it i'm the guy who goes to jail and won't do the policy and code and i get called the white gorilla right so okay you know again i'm irish and italian we pretty much have the same culture and the same history on this land and it's it's like we're not quote unquote from what I'm told by black folks and Latinos and people I've grown up with and interact with. Oh, he's not really white, whatever that means. And I get what that means in the sense of I might have light colored skin, white colored skin, whatever, you know, with brown spots. But ultimately, I'm not part of the system. I don't engage in the in the in the racism and the bigotry and I don't engage in the in the systemic fraud and illegitimacy. I'm a person who on this land historically would be next to a black man fighting essentially to free that being from being treated as property. I'm essentially doing that in the modern day, my own way. It's just color aside. So we also have to make the distinction because as I'm sure, you know, in a lot of these communities of uneducated folks, color aside, this theme is that all white folks are involved in slavery and all black folks have lineage tied to slavery and we know that's not the truth on either side and the bigger truth is slavery's been going on from the beginning of time to all people because it's about classism not colorism and it's going on today with all colors of people that that's true what you're saying but if we're going to be right and exact slavery has been going on since the beginning of time but it wasn't called slavery the actual was paid for the service those people was known as indentured servants let's get it correct well, right. It's all really just oh, so under the head slaves. of slaves. Let's get it correct. No, well, again, when they I say slavery, for their services, like you have a maid or a butler in your house right now, sir. I get that. I get that. There's ways to justify what it really not is. That's what it is. Again, uh, sir, I, I understand. It is what it is. 
Sir, I'm I'm if you let me, Go I'm ahead. saying government is is slavery because the etymology of government is to control the mind. Gouvernare mente. All forms of government could be argued are slavery. Order the chaos. Seeks, again, it seeks to keep the being from the ability to choose what it is their destiny is. So again, I can meet you in the middle. Uh, worldly governance and systems, mind control is for folks who can't govern their mind and their heart and their beingness, right? The so Masons let, have let made a great business Let's, off of order out of chaos, and I'm not looking to overthrow that. I'm just looking for myself and others like me who have an understanding of self and the universe and universal law to have safe passage to govern ourselves without the dictates and the policies and codes of fraternal orders. And I believe that's equitable. Let, 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 let me piggyback off what you're saying, because I think I think this is what's happening here. I, I understand you on a different level. Your knowledge and in, in how you seek out life and how you go about life, you try to teach the others and enlighten others. So that's the same thing I do. So I'm going to I'm going to look at you like this. I can't expect people who you're guiding to actually, you know, what I'm saying to always uphold what you uphold when they're under tutelage. You see what I'm saying? Correct. So I can deal with that same problem. So I think that's why me and you can have better dialogue. You see what I'm saying? Well, we're kindred spirits, sir. Fight. As soon as you came in here and we dropped the ego bullshit, uh, you know, it's clear that we're kindred spirit, right? We have well, a lot of the similar, same experiences, understanding, probably application, and I'm sure results. So, you know, you, they argue God works in mysterious ways. I could argue Brian O'Shea, like all of us, is a godly being because he's of the creation. And part of the mysterious way might be to unite us for us to work together and do more in this venue and potentially other venues. I don't know. But stranger things have happened. I agree, but it's kind of, I do want to just, for the record, I don't know how much credit I want to give it to him. I, I will say, if I do give him the credit, I don't know how much God I can put onto him because God and the devil is evil. So I'm definitely <laughs> going to put that as on a negative side of how he came into it. And, and the negative turned and maybe turned into some good, but he started this off with his intentions as negative. And so I can't put that as godly anything. Well, God uses the least amongst us, doesn't it say that? It does, but he also he's but you are when I'm using you as a guy when I'm using the devil, I'm aware that it's a devil that I'm using. All right. Well, if we have to characterize Brian O'Shea as a devil in order to reveal the godliness. I'm not saying devil as in now, I'm saying devil as an as is an adjective, as is a negative being, a okay. masculine being, you know what I'm saying? A disagreeable his being character of his behavior, has, which was up, potentially mischievous. Anyone has willpower as a human, so even with being a Madeline being, he can still create positivity so i'm not right. taking that away but what i'm saying is his initial motive was negative so i'm going to start that the first is is the truth of the being all right but and i would know, just caution you for your own being this right and i'm not saying that from a, an e egotistical perspective caution i'm cautioning you from your perspective to not necessarily objectively ascribe a negative motive or intention to him if he's claiming that was not the case i heard him but like i i, I heard him and as a human i have uh we have this heart that uh that we that only pumps vessels but we say we i think that feelings. he actually has a love for black folks and he's not quite sure how to express that or explore that and it comes off as the mischievous clown that you're speaking about the aspect of self where he's he's using comedy and humor as a coping mechanism and mischief and triggering because really, I think he, in a sense, looks up to black folks or has so, a love for them. Can you tell me this, Paul? Do you, can you just agree to this? Just from me and you talking, do you think if he would have came to me correctly, me and really could have had a conversation? Oh, yeah. I'm Again, I'm not. You're getting no argument from me that he has an unorthodox, <laughs> mischievous, clown-like, comedic way of, <laughs> of going at this for whatever his reasons are. But I wouldn't ascribe malicious, malignant motives out hand right i think there's a lot more of this story i think there's different so, aspects and, and, to the demons i do this on a high level so watch this you vouch for it and you and if you vouch for it and they, and they got you as the head of it i'm going to accept it ain't that how it works i uh, potentially but again i want to i'm going to caution that i'm not a part of any group or organization no, come here on, and you're vouching it 
I'm just saying what I what I want to believe so is true leader, about and him, I'm and I have no. I'm listening to you, so I'm gonna look. I'm gonna, instead of looking at the peers, I'm gonna take the leader and say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the onus off of Brian, and give and give is what we call an olive branch and start it over. But I'm putting the onus on you because you're the leader. You can't escape. Get out that seat. Well, I mean, listen. There's perception, and then there's the reality that I get to choose, right? There may okay. be perception, oftentimes, that I'm in a leadership role, and I may take that role or that you know facilitate that or run with that. But ultimately, I'm not part of any group or organization, and I ultimately am not responsible or accountable for Brian O'Shea. He is because so, he's a so man. So let me say this: I say this to Brian. I asked you to go ahead and come up there to the panel. And the people is trying to get you to come up there because even though when you went to the other panels, let me go ahead and tell you some, uh, it's only one. I ain't going to put it out there. I'm just going to say, I'm a person that's equipped for this. So that's why they was like, yes, let him talk to these people because they know I'm abreast on all levels Well, somebody else might get frustrated, might not understand, kick you off, fuck you white boy, whatever. But I'm, I can handle this whether we need to go radical with it or do we need to have a diligent, intelligent, I can do it either way. So I think that's why they said no. So Get Brian O'Shea, do you want to meet some of the Black Panthers up close and personal? I think that's what he's. We're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna have dinner with you in conversation, exactly. <laughs> dinner in a movie. Exactly, and we'll introduce <laughs> you to the Crips and Bloods and all that. Let it know how it all happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit, it's like I'm saying I'm not one of those people who's saying. Uh, my my white friend Matthew or whatever can't come to the barbecue. I'm gonna get on my black homeboy's ass for fucking with Matthew. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta understand who you're talking to. You can't label and group everyone in a bunch like you don't want us. You don't want us to do you like that. Hey, you're a crybaby, fucking racist. See, what is this? Man. Racist. To <laughs> what yeah. is this? Man? Are you into pedophile optics too? You. That's the snap food <laughs> creature. Let him get it off. You don't pogo off. fuck. I, I can do this. Well, I can do this with. And complaining you about the rap game and shit, and you're crying about a white guy. You bro, I can. Lingo? Whatever you want to say We're about rap, I can take it back off. We are gonna strike this channel. Look up what Chapel Two is about. You piece of shit. Keep promoting symbology for your race. Your oh, fucking satanic shit, you dumb fuck. Come play with me, homie. I'll check your bitch ass out. Fucking cry, baby, racist nigger. Oh, I said Whoa. nigger. Guess what? I'm brown. Oh, I'm dark. So skin. hold up. Hold up. Let, yeah, let, hold let, up, let me help nigger. him out. Hold let up, me help nigger. you out. Let me hold, hold up, up. Hold up. Let me nigger. help you out. My nigga. Hold up. You can my call nigga. me a nigga. Oh, hold up. Let me, let me tell you my something, bro. Pogo? Bro, bro, you're not going to fuck me up bro. with you being a white boy calling bro, me a nigga. Because channel, I'm a dude. proud nigga. Big back. Big I'm back. Not, bro, I'm fuck not a black you. American. I'm not Afro American. Where I, where I, I am a nigga. From the descendants of the slave. You can't fuck me up with calling me a nigga. I'm a nigga proudly that'll slap the fuck out your white boy ass, boy. I will put you in the dirt. All your mouth was racist. Well, I will, well, I will fuck you up, bud. Community. I got well, lots I of black fuck friends. You up, sir. I'm dark skinned too, bro. I will hog tie you. Like, you. Like boy, I will hog you tie you one. with my white you sheet on and, and take you to the Grand Wizard. Think most motherfuckers are closing Walmart. I will call your Grand Wizard, sir. Thug-ass motherfuckers. Sir, I will call your Grand Wizard. You brought racism. You're the nerd who likes to pick up. Like to they play your little butt. What the black dude talking to shit right now? You the racist, and you want to? I created you, you, sir. We looked into your. I shit. created you, sir. You're you a cannibal. Who was connected in the? The black shit. man you was first, it. sir. You're nothing you without nothing. me, sir. You're nothing. You wouldn't even exist without me, sir. Check your melanin out. You sick selling and being. Hey, we're, we're striking your channel. Are you following the policy guidelines? Bro, you are a six ether hey, being. Sir? You sir, can't you fuck with me on your best day. You bro, you couldn't fuck you with me. You need to be more like Paul. You need to be more like Paul, bro. You need to be more like Pimp. I've been trying to tell him, sir. I've been trying to tell him for for a while. You're not gonna make it into like what you're not gonna into that pearly gates of heaven. You're not gonna make it. You won't when, when you get there, Paul will not vouch for you, sir. It's your work. Your work doesn't prove worthy. He will not vouch for you on the other side. We will make sure of it. it's not a black or white thing. Us agreeable beings will make sure you will not make it where we are at, sir. Oh, he won't oh yeah, no, I understand. This he is won't about vouch this. On the side, sir. Yeah, this is not about color. This is about competence and capability and resolution. 
He's not gonna vouch for this. It's not about that. You're trying to make this about some shit that happened in the 1850s and shit, bro. We don't give a fuck. We're in 2024. You can't fuck with no black person is mad about someone calling him a nigga. We say nigga every day of 50 million times a day to each other. You can't you can't get me out my body for calling me a nigga. I'm a nigga. Does that make you happy, sir? So you calling me something that I am? You think that's gonna offend me? I am nigga nation. I'm not a black American. I'm not an Afro-American. I am a N-I-G-G-A, a N-I-G-G-E-R. I have been called nigga so much. It's my motherfucking name. I wear it proudly. You can never take that, that nigga off me. It's a part of my heritage. I love it. And that nigga would smack the fuck out you, bro. <laughs> I bet you won't stand in front of that nigga. You better stand in front of this good being right here. Because if I get in nigga mode, you wouldn't sit in front of me. You talk this shit on the internet, but you wouldn't sit in front of me and talk that nigga shit. And I don't care about white people saying nigga, but you wouldn't get in front of me and talk that nigga shit in the, in the way that you said it. If you said, what's up, my nigga, pass me the blunt, I wouldn't say nothing. But you wouldn't get in front of me and say, fuck you, nigga. You're a coward, bro. Really can't argue with any of that. You're a coward, bro. You would not get in front of me and say, fuck you, nigga. You would get in and say, you would get in and be like, my nigga. Turn on the game, my nigga. Give me a beer, my nigga. Pass me the blunt. And I'll be like, you know what? You know what, Crackle? Let, let, let's fire that blunt up. That's how it's going to go. <laughs> but if hey, you think you would get in I mean, front of me and say something derogatory, boy, you wouldn't, you wouldn't dare. And I think me and Paul could actually do a little dialogue like that. We could pull up and we could have a whole nigga crack a conversation and smoke blunts and get beer and would nobody be offended. But you, sir, would not get in front of me and say nothing derogatory without, <laughs> bro, <laughs> I would show you. Just like I wouldn't get in front of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get in front of some real woods, some real K, 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 K. I wouldn't get in front of them and be like, yeah, fuck you, Pecker Wood. And then, then, then think nothing's going to happen. Bro, yeah, that's the thing is that I wide. have no need. I have no need to reduce the conversation to that level, which only demeans me, my intelligence, and my spiritual practice. I I'm mean, trying, the point I'm trying to prove is like we. Can no, I get, I get totally you what you're saying. Think, I'm I saying even you're though sitting in the room and you said instead of saying Nat Turner, so player, you could say, my nigga. Damn, you've been holding the blunt too long. Oh. Passed up, and I'd be like, you know what, Cracker, you show goddamn right, and we are gonna sit back and laugh. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, my uh, dude, I'm the guy who, you know, when I was in that neighborhood living there and, and with folks who look and talk like you, whatever that means, because yeah, they'll yeah. say I'm the same thing right from the other side. But, yeah. you know, again, that's the, this is the joke of it, the irony of creation and, and the hypocrisy. But um, I'm the guy who they go, oh, no, Paul, you could say whatever you want. And I go, no, you don't get it. It's not about permission. It's about I don't see the benefit. I'm not going to call myself and you that. I'd rather go the route of, you know, we was Kangs than sit around and call each other niggas. I'm not, I'm, I'm just not into it, right? Well, like, I, I, I understand they're going to characterize us as that because we're the on the land people, the everyday people. We're made in the image of the most high, but we don't have the benefit of the system on our side. All the better because we're God's people, right? Color aside. So I'm not interested in demeaning us, who and what we are, color aside. I'm not interested in referring to each other as that. We could do better and be better than that. I'm going to show you how God works. Your demeanor, your calm and collectiveness, your choice of words, um, knowing how to converse with even if it's uh, a friend or adversary. Because I came up here with the wrong mission. I'm going to tell you what I came to do because that's just type of man I stand on business. What happened to me on my panel, I felt was unwarranted, unnecessary. And I came to return the favor back. But after just letting you speak and hearing you, I seen that that everyone's not on the same page. It, and it definitely be wrong of me to come do to you what was done to me on the behalf of others. So yeah, I, I mean, I can already tell, you know, a while back when we first started, uh, you know, communicating that you seem to be an equitable, trustworthy, honorable, presentable being, right? So there's no color involved in any of these conversations with me, right? This is about competence and capability. You know? And again, I'll make the joke that uh, I had a black dude up here the other day and we were talking N-word and what the meaning of it actually is. And he was saying, well, 
you know, it's got nothing to do with color. There's plenty of black folks who are intelligent, honorable, capable, competent, presentable, successful people. And then there are N words. And then I said to him, well, let me show you my resident N word. And then I pulled this man up. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind of the bit non bit because it's about confidence and capability. It's about responsibility, accountability, authenticity, all the things that make you a man color aside. That's principles, logic, morals, and ethics, value systems. There's no color in that conversation. I agree. So I'm saying you calm me down. Because hey, I really black call fucking for fools trying to hunt me down, tell them I'm in Arizona. So basically, what you're saying is, sir, is like a horse whisperer. <laughs> I'm a black whisperer. I'm like, if Brian O'Shea or other caucasoid beasts get the blacks in a fury and wanting them to, you know, show them the, as you say, the internal N word within them that they're project being projected onto them, they're all too willing to do that and give you what you're asking for. But I come in as the, the intermediary, the whisper, and I just, I dispel all anger um, and toxic negative emotion. This we could might we that. might be able to promote this. We might be able to like market this. So Brian, can me and you can me and you talk like me and now? <laughs> Brian, and, 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 I, and I want you to shoot your shit because I, I I got this <laughs> skin, so I'm not I'm not saying you can't shoot your shit, but can we just talk like me, bro? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So like, what the night that you came up to my panel, like what? What do you what did you want to talk about? Let's have this discussion. What was your purpose? What did you what did you want I don't to talk even about know you? who you are or what panel you're from, to be honest with you. All right. Well, when it comes to the Mo3 sector, I'm the person that kind of started the Mo3 sector. Um I've been doing it for three and a half years uh, for three and a half years. I'm an uh, influencer in my city, which is Dallas, Texas. Uh, a lot of these content creators that uh that you see in the Mo3 sector, um, some of us together, some of us have uh separated from each other but there is a core that came from the beginning and then that's basically this it and i'm they called me the godfather because i was the first one you see what i'm saying i was the first one to kind of start the sector now it is where it is now 2024 we started this way that back in 2020 so things have run amok a little bit um the the core people who started it is not none of the core people's channels that you went on you didn't get that till you came to mind i'm one of the founders of it the now, can I ask you why? So, can I ask you yeah. why you, such an articulate and intelligent being, such as yourself, relegates yourself to only speaking about hip hop culture and the rest of this? What I would consider to be crap, whether I enjoy it or engage in it or not, I think on the highest level, um, it's just a distraction. And and and, and again, forgive me because I don't watch what no, you do. Right. I'm sure you incorporate like I do because the same thing could be said about me. Why do I do breaking news and the rest of this, you know, cultural crap and nonsense? I add on to it and then kind of break it down and talk about it. So, you know, I'm no, just that's, curious, that's, like, do you do that or? That's a good question. Um, that I don't let my worlds can kind of collide. When you look at me as, as Soul Player TV and you, and I do the things for the underground artists in my city and I do those for the artists that have made it in my city and I do my interviews and I do my blogs, that's my job. That's not me, the person. Me, the person, my name is not Soul Player. So unfortunately, me, the real person, that's not what I bring to the YouTube. I bring the entertainment to the YouTube because the entertainment industry is a big world. It's a trillion dollar industry. I used to be uh, a rapper. 15 years ago. This is how I know all these people. So I did what was in best of my interest for my family to, so I can put money over here and get my name and, and brand out there like it's supposed to be. That has nothing to okay, do with Okay, that's it. honest. I mean, I know that they're going to project a negative characterization on that, but you're being authentic and accountable. You're basically saying, you know, we're going to do or involve with ourselves what moves, right? What sells. And apparently yeah. what yeah. sells to most of the sheep slaves is bullshit culture <laughs> bullshit. gossip oh, hip-hop and the rest of it and that, and that's kind of where the shame is right is for me that's i'm not saying side, you though. should feel that i'm just yeah, saying I mean, when i look at the side, world I and like that I, I should be i don't think that anyone who does that should be even ridiculed this and sheep because uh basically i'm giving instructions i'm doing i'm doing under orders under instruction i'm still and i am who i am 
if you look at that symbol up there, y'all go do, y'all do, we do all the doctors. I am no who I am, a messianic, satanic, ritual, crybaby. Hey, by the way, your boy, we don't use YouTube software to track your IP address, whether it's a fake account you're using or not. You're still on your device. Remember, the biggest tech company is trolling the crew. I think you might want to do more research about me and so so your black fouls too. Look, you guys are being racist as fuck. That's what O'Shea's proven here. Doing what he's not doing really. shows that these black panels, you, the segregated ones like you guys do, are racist. Panels like this one where it's any color, any ethnicity, there's no color to the game. You still this whole stream bring color, 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 color. You're racist. And we know you're Mason. And your boy, we're, we already got his IP address on his devices. Fuck off, homie. We got who is that? Guys now. I don't That's even know who him. That is. That's him. He said do a little more research, so I figured I'd pull up his latest hit single. Who is it? That's me, motherfucker. That's Snap Who Snap. That's me. Indeed. <laughs> He's got a song about laying in the bed and being in his feeling. You're a rapper? Wow. I mean, isn't everybody nowadays, anyone with a computer or a camera pretty much is a rapper? So what, you want some promo? <laughs> because don't ridicule me for doing this for the industry and then you come back and tell me you're a damn rapper. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a good time yeah, to pull my set my from last night. Songs. You need some promo? I'll, 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 send, I'll send you my promo I'll list. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of great packages that you, that, that you can Look. use, sir. Snap food, you're feeding back. Fix your fucking tech if you're going to get up here and act like a moron anyway. You, 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 I'm hearing a double fucking effect here. Um, so I, bro, I, got, I got promo my... packages. We can help you out. Hey, Paul. This, right. might, be a, this might be a good time to play my yes. uh, performance. No, it's not a good time, bro. It's not a good time. Um, you guys are so fucking desperate for any kind of fucking notoriety. Like, no matter how... W w listen, you know what? I'm not even going to get into it. I'm, I'm going to hold my tongue, something I rarely do. In the interest of diplomacy, with this man saying I've been so diplomatic, um, and equitous. I'm just going to reserve commentary. Uh, Paul, you can listen to this dude. It sounds like he, you know, I'm I'm in Texas. He know he's like they got this little game. I know y'all play poker. You know, you know, you got to know when to hold them, when to fold them, man. I'm glad you know that. I have so, born and bred in Texas. I got one question and one statement. All right, you go know ahead. what? Fuck it. I'm going to go ahead and gamble here. I'm going against my initial um, is, instinct. And I'm going to go ahead and give you Brian O'Shea uh, because you're in the music industry and this is going to be looked at me as, as hating and cock blocking. And I know Brian O'Shea will immediately go, you had a chance right there to promote me and my music and you completely dropped the ball. Let me and hear it. He, yeah. He's going to hate. No, on I want to hear it. I got to do it. Yeah. I want to hear it. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm Yeah, you don't well, have an amazing voice. Do. <laughs> you Why don't you do the new one I did last night? Weird guy. That was like really going to do this now where everything I pick, you're later going to go, well, why'd you show him that one? Bro, I'm not even you trying to show the new my one. shit. I'm just show you were going to show the new shit anyways. Come like, on, bro. What's the new one? Where is it at? It's called fucking music. It's the newest video. It's, one it's of the called I'm videos. Gay. All right, there it is. I'm Gay. I see it. Give me part... It's just I'm music. gay part five. Music. Wait, go up, go up, go up, go up. <laughs> Crawling in brick performance. Crawling in brick. Okay. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, you better go off. Yeah. 
you to be smacked up. She said, look, bro, look. I've been moving, I've been moving, I've been moving, never losing. Now I'm cruising to the top. Tell that goofy bitch, stop, 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 stop. Try to do me focus, stay in focus, rolling like some focus. Hoses, I'm a G-Jig. 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 Hoses, I'm a G-Jig.
first of all, on Soul Player, I don't judge music. I do whether it sucks or not, but it's not for me to like, per se. He's a beginning rapper, what I can hear. Sounds like he's older. He's art. He's he's white. He has things he's that's beginning working at the age of forty something. Yeah, but that right. that song that song is judging from the level in which I see. I'm not gonna come judge on. like I'm looking at the Matt, Phil, could you turn your your your, your walkie talkie down, please? That song is from ten years ago. I mean, if you, I have a brand, I have a bunch of brand new tracks as well that are on. Oh, the, I dropped my good track. Not sitting on a bench, but in and the I back. did too. List. Wait a second. Now we have two more repeating track. But like, sucks. Now we have two tards so, dropping their so, horrible let, music. Let me ask you some, Paul. Are they hoping they that it's going to get promoted? Are they, are they kind of opposing? Like, do they want the same spot? Is your particular for or the rap? Do they want the same like clout? Or, it seems like uh, Brian's a little bit more reserved, but the, the dude over here, he has the energy. Maybe he, maybe the energy I'm looking for from Brian, the dude over here that keeps coming from, he has the energy. That's why he understands. It's just incredible Brian. because it's like. I'm the guy. I have a channel. I can also rap and have energy, as you say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't occur to any of them for us to do business or work together or see what we could come up with. It's right Dude, away. My hey, fucking look at five ball. different people's horrible fucking music. Dude, fuck it's off. It's like, ball. okay, so I'm now you got to look now. Hold on. Promotion. Shut up, O'Shea. Why are you fucking. It's Tard Central. Hey, do you want to host Tard Fest 2024? It's a festival I'm going to do, sir. You want to suck um, dick to put narratives? I don't want to. Uh, Mr. Nat Turner, yeah, would you like to host that. Tard Fest? Fucking jealous. I have a list of, I have a list of Tard who just hang around me constantly and scream and yell and, and force promote on whoever and whatever's around me. And I figure we could take that on the ground. Right, we could like just play your fucking rap song, Paul. That TCC did. No, I don't have any because oddly enough, I didn't come on here to get famous. Just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Nothing yet. Um, oddly well, enough, I have yeah, over, yeah, over, over millions of views for doing what's true and what's right. That's what this is ultimately. <laughs> You're a fucking bitch. Could, you, could you turn the Could you turn the walkie talkie down, Snafu Snaps? You're feeding back. Can I Go ahead, I know, Shay. Bring all your subconscious bitterness, resentment, and hate you, out. Dude. I knew it was a matter of time You're anyway. It always dude. happens. Fuck you, Timmy. Uh, I'm, making I'm making assumptions. I'm making assumptions that four Fuck people, off. as soon as this guy said, I'm from Dallas and promote and do anything, you don't even know if he has 10 people watching. You and then it's right away. Hey, play this, hey, show bad. this, do this. I got four people who want to promote their horrible music and music videos. And no, just I'm completely just forget that, up. like, you know, I'm here, and then they wonder how that makes me look at them. No, no, about, no, like, no, what no, their intentions and motivations are on here, and like how much they don't respect themselves or me or really anything. Um, I don't know. I just think it's telling and interesting. I think it's Brian, great. You do better. I'm not mad about it. If you're yeah, confused, you think I'm, no, if I was mad about it, I wouldn't have it here consistently, dummy. Don't you get how that works? I'm yeah, the 50 cent. I bring my Tony Ayo and Lloyd Banks all up. over with me just you to talk shit about them and laugh at them. Can you shut up and let me sell you something. I'm I'm the fi I'm the white. Can you shut up and let me say something? Yes. Can you shut the fuck till I'm done saying something? No, you've been talking forever. Can you shut the fuck up till I'm done saying something? That's how that works. I know that everyone forgets where we're at and who's doing it and what you know what it all means. I know that's like just goes right out of everybody's mind. I get that. That's what makes this place special. It's that I don't like wield too much power, false power online for my own good. But every once in a while, it's necessary. Like the man said, you got to order the chaos, right? Because, you know, if it starts with you three, then I'll have a list of folks in here right now. Hey, I got a picture I painted. Show the black man that who's in promotion. Hey, I did a fucking home movie. I did one of those white big books where you put pictures in it in kin kindergarten where you clip them out and put them in there and tell a story about your family. It'll just be a fucking stampede of folks who are going to use me, abuse me, and promote their garbage and then completely ruin the reputation I have with whoever this person is. I'm used to that by now. I actually right, like it. Turn? It's part of my whack pack experience. Fine. It's part of why when I do what I do. Turn? I have when an amazingly morbid sense of when humor. When is my turn to talk? Brian when I'm done speaking. Right 
Timmy, can you help him out? His turn to talk oh is when God, I'm done speaking. He can't. In between? He, he's, he's not he hearing. Him. Him. He won't Why accept that. What do they call it? In, what do they call it? You're in, embarrassing uh, me in front of my new African American friends. You're embarrassing I have being a fucking dude. Gentlemen. African American gentlemen and ladies, this I I would say this normally doesn't happen, but I'd be lying. So I guess that my apology. That would be a lie, Paul. Okay, is it my turn I, to talk now? It happens is regularly. Yeah, I don't know what to do. With well, it. You just said you're jealous. Is it my turn to talk now? Is it my turn to I'm just going to go off screen. Turn to talk now. Is it my turn to talk now? All right. So I did not want to use this guy for promotion. I was looking for a little bit of feedback, and Timmy's an ugly, skinny, fucking Jew freak. Why do you it's, call Paul turn jealous? Turn your camera off, Timmy. Why you do fucking you say smile, Paul fucking jealous? Shut the fuck up, Snap. I'm I want to know what you say. A fucking word. Not done talking right now. What did he? What would he be not jealous of? Talking, Snapu. Shut the fuck what up. What is Paul going to be jealous of Brian O'Shea? I'm going to appreciate it. And I'm not if it talking, continues, it you will not be welcome here. I'm not done fucking talking, you fucking bitch ass hoes. So what do you have to say about that? So now I'm going to finish with the fuck I was saying. I wasn't trying to use this guy for promotion or anything. I was just looking to get a little feedback on fucking some artistic shit I did. You guys have taken it there. Oh, he's looking to get fucking blown up. Hey, dumbass. <laughs> You're definitely not going to blow up with that shit, O'Shea. The song's You're 10 years that. fucking old. I got fucking liar. I guess I could tell you it could blow up, like Chalcott said, so I could lie to you. So he gave you the energy comment on the video that was last night, and he said that on the video that was yesterday, not 10 years ago. Oh, I see. Timmy brought some optics. Good job, Timmy. Yeah, I got the feedback. My point is that it's not, it's not about I'm disagreeing with the feedback. It's that Paul's narrative that I'm trying to use this guy for promotion. Uh, you said Paul is jealous. What What is Paul jealous of? Well, hopefully you guys will let him get his show back. He's jealous of all the connections and the clout that I'm making and giving to him. That's what I, he, I'm... Wait. Yeah. I'm who, jealous who, of all the connections and clout right and energy and numbers that I'm creating and giving to him. I'm jealous of that, what I'm giving right away. Now, the guy on your panel right now for me, because of what I did or what you did? Well, basically what happens is African-Americans yeah. storm into my go. area going, where's Brian O'Shea? We're going to rape him and kill him because he pretty much called us the N-word indirectly. And I go, whoa, 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 hold on. I think that there's something we could talk about here. And then it just winds up, we make beautiful music together. Nowhere in there, as the man said earlier, other than you being some bizarre pawn of the devil or God, maybe some white Luciferian devil, uh, does this take place? And I think you're like overshooting your 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 value and import in this scenario in this situation. Yeah, the, you're merely a pawn. Now we're at the crux of it. Yeah, I'm a merely a pawn. I have no value. Now you're subconscious. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I had to do it. That's you. I didn't want to do it. Wait, wait. You said you said though specifically. He said who caused them to come here? Well, if it wasn't for Paul <laughs> helping you from the beginning, you would have never went to troll the black community and be a racist fuck. Bit non bit, even though I like I said I stand by the black. I, I'm dark, but I also think they're more racist than the other panels. But what I'm saying, Brian, is now you're pr trying to say Paul is jealous of you, but in the end, it was because of Paul. Why you're even doing what you're doing? Yeah, I think it's more likely this. Our new African American friends seem to be on it. It seems more like Brian is jealous of Paul, and that's a common theme we have here, day in and day out. It wouldn't be the first time. Probably not going to be the last. I fuck with y'all. I don't care what other, Brian, other, other, other my black constituents have to say. <laughs> so, Brian, isn't this, that's a good isn't reference, though. We got, our, we got at least our third good reference from the African-American community. So we're making progress. You're coming Dude, up, okay. this, this, this is indicative. This in, The last 10 minutes are exactly what Nat Turner, the dude down there, was saying. And, the energy. And, this and, is but let me say this. Paul, you were right. And what Brian O'Shea did, I, I'm sitting back listening to y'all, kind of hash it out, why I went quiet. Yeah, what he did worked, it did get me over here, because I'm over talking to my wife now, like, yeah, that shit did piss me off. <laughs> and now I'm over here. <laughs> now, you before, know I'm I know now I'm not before like we that, catch it, to be passion, clear, 
Because I just pulled this picture up. Me over here, and now I'm listening to y'all music, and we're we're chit, we're, we're we're fellowshipping, and we even had some dog. Even though we even though dude comes at me, I think that's just a part of his what he does on the show. So I'm I'm understanding the whole dynamics now with me sitting back because I'm a content creator myself. I got twenty thousand. We call it non cupcaking, sir. You don't cupcake. This is my Donald Trump, right? Before they say something, because I know what it looks like. Like even this picture, I just realized you know, when I'm with the African Americans. And I pull up this picture, and then I pull up like I go, "Oh my God, what did I just do?" Because because this guy goes, "I have I'm a Mason, whatever." This was a picture I made from two years ago, and it's meant to indicate when I started a campaign for Donnie Chimp because they were running Donnie Trump, and I said, "I said if we run a chimpanzee, we'll infinitely get a better country." Because the chimpanzee will have no ambition and motivation to be like genocidal and murderous. It'll just sit around eating bananas and doing chimpanzee stuff. No, actually, so I started a whole campaign to elect Donnie Chimp, who I put in a suit <coughs> and then said would do way better than Donnie Trump. Right. I so, picked up on this know. as well. Hold on. I picked up on you're right. And everything you're saying is factual. But with me picking up on your intelligence, you also you I'm not going to leave out because you're a smart dude. I've picked it up. You're a smart dude. You there's no way you went through the mental and said this is also ingenious because I know the blacks is going to think I'm attacking them, even though I can sit here and tell them how much I'm not because I'm not. But I can still use that as a ploy to go viral on the Internet and use it as a tactic to bring to bring awareness to what I'm trying to say. No, the shit is smart. No, don't I didn't that do that. No, no, when don't I first did that. I'm here, bro. No, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I'll tell you, I'll I'll be totally candid with you. When yeah, I first did that, when I first did that, it's merely because I've been saying that that all human beings are chimpanzees and genes in this realm but and they were the black statue. Well, like I just said, once I threw the picture up because I have a bunch of pictures back there and me as a mate, because he said Paul for president. So I put the one up of me hold as up, a hold mate. Up. You're a go rider too? What? You're a go rider as well? You said you're a Mason? No, no, no. I dude, oh, I'm not okay. I've never I've thought about infiltrating because I wanted to figure out what it was with all the lore and the you know the the conspiracy theory, so to speak, or the, the evidence, you know, and what it seems and to be. I'm an open book and an active member. I mean, me again, sir, I, I worked for somebody at one point who was a 33 degree Mason, according to a 32 degree Mason, according to them. I'm from what I that. from what I discerned, um, Masons can be anything from seemingly an organization looking to take over the world to, on the lowest level, a, a local boys club. So. You know, this guy didn't exactly seem like the most intelligent, spiritually adept, uh, articulate being. Um, you know, it's, just, it's not about it's the intelligence. Like, yeah, most ones that I know don't cupcake like you did, sir, when you came up here. Don't strike my channel. Duh, 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 duh. But right now, O'Shea's being the bitch, not you. O'Shea, I mean, you're being I mean bitch. it's cool. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe for unlike others, you know, so I can't speak right. to you. The cupcake I can't, let, let me be the cupcake. I'll be. I, I will be the hostess cupcake. Okay, it's all right. It's cool. You know, sometimes with I'll be the whole the donut with the hole in the middle. Just muffins. You're just a muffin right now. I'm just saying. I, I'll be the yeah. whole donut with the hole in the middle. The only thing I'm saying is from from what I from my bookings. Brian hold up. Really from from my bookings. From what I do in real shit. life. From my bookings. And my and with this thing that on the internet that I'm trying to protect. I haven't. I haven't clocked in in the job in four years. Don't get used to it, dude. Especially with what's I'm, happening. I'm in just the saying, right I'm now. going to only go up. The digital experience is, dude. With the it's way not about. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Did you not say who I am in my real world? When I walk outside, so, hey, when I sir, walk outside, Mason, people ask to take pictures with me, you sir. You're Mason. Are you not looking at the world optics, bro? I'm telling you. I'm telling you who I am in real life. Regardless if I'm a Mason or not, people ask to take pictures with me, sir. I'm, I'm not asking you. <laughs> like, only gonna level up. Do you think this digital experience is gonna stay the same? You don't of course think not. Nothing stays be, the same. You don't think that there's going to be like an, an issue of real recognizes real time, no more digital experience, fucking live on land, survive. You don't think that could come to America? I wish it would happen like yesterday, sir. Future, like thought ahead. Of. Sir, I wish my wife is right here to tell you my dream. I wish we could wake up 
internet is gone, your fancy little car is gone, your house is gone, all these mobile devices is gone. I want all this you shit know, gone. Don't worry about it. It's on the way, bro. Don't worry about it. You know what comes with that, though, right? Is your wife ready? I don't give a damn about no free? YouTube. At the end of the day, I'm about real principality and what's real here. I do, I'm do. i in this world because I can't change how the world is existing when I wake up. But if I had my wish, I would strip every human being of this shit. No, no, me, I myself, I don't want to be, I don't want to strip y'all and have it all at my house and be like, ha, 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 look at me. No, I'm in the trenches with you, sir. No, no, I, we're headed. Yeah, I mean, this is where Snafu, you religionists meet resistance with the Masonic folks. <coughs> is You want to resist and fight against the way of the world or the way of the self because, you know, as within, so without, as above, so below, rather than understand it and direct it, right? So okay. you will always be in resistance and you will always make an enemy out of folks who've accepted who and what they are on the highest and lowest level and attempt to direct that for an outcome. And then you can argue what the outcome is while you folks do little to nothing to build and create. I mean, it's just, it is what it is, man. Like, I don't even need to be on one side or the other. That's facts. All right, so since I can just look at it. I'm a watcher. You know I'm an owl. 33 on the fucking ship that hit the bridge. What's that? Right. Say it again. The thirty-three. Gonna start counting numbers now, like penile three in the morning. You know, what about the, what about the thirty-third? The bridge that got collapsed, right? Okay. Okay. Have you do, you so you know that boat had thirty-three on it, inverse, right? Which we know what inverse means. Bro, are you doing numerology? How involved are you? Just one of those guys? Because when people say, "Oh, I'm Mason." You get these ones who are truly involved with Pogo. Do you know what Pogo is? Privately owned, government operated, infiltrated media relations. Then you get guys who are saying, oh, I'm one of those. But they're not really deep, deep. They don't even know half the shit going on in their own realm. So I'm asking you, do you know what the 33 on the boat with the bridge collapse is about? Bro, that's all propaganda bullshit. No, it's symbology for fucking things that yo yo. It's you not. Guys. That's what I'm saying. It, it, oh, it, yeah, it's symbolism right. that was made up by man. Oh, you act like all day, bro. You act like. You act like that See, I'm not going to keep doing this with you, Snafu. You question, you I'll be a, okay. Snafu, book. That's Snafu, not, that number not one, by you no didn't do this on your broadcast last night, and I told you to fucking show up here today and going forward the way you fucking hosted a broadcast last night. It's absurd. You shut your fucking mouth, you ask good questions, you responded in kind, and you had some level of logic and ethic about you. You throw it all away when you come here where it counts. Makes no fucking sense. So you want to act like Masons are a monolithic thing like any other group. They're not. There's many different hues to that group like there is every group. Thank you. There are some of them who believe they're doing the great work, spreading consciousness and awareness while using what the world has to offer. And there's other folks who obviously you could call more dark masons who literally want to build an enslavement genocide system and keep you in bondage and trapped. Hey, for you it not to be to one, me. hold up. For you not to be one, you're speaking facts. So this is what happens in the lodge, I'll tell you. So what we have in the lodge, we have what we call paper masons. And that's what a lot of I think dude is talking about. You have those that come in, they uh they they get they do the ritual, they come out a master mason, because the only thing you have to do to be recognized as a mason is to go through the go through the lodge become an entered apprentice pass which is go through your fellowship and then once you go through your fellowship and get the pass you become a master once you become a master you can bear the emblem once you bear the emblem you can walk out on the world and say you're a mason but all y'all know on some basic information is 33 degrees so you don't have to be a third to have three degrees of the information to walk out so a lot what a lot of people do they look at the trends they read all these articles they do so they want to be one too so you got to think it's a, that's why they use the eye as the symbol because they're watching. So the, well, that's why I said the watchers. So there's a circle within yeah, the circle so what, so and, the, and the, 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 the background to that is why you say, why do the Masons always say square? But I'm saying circle because the square, a square holds three, the, the degrees are 360 degrees, but so does a circle. So there's a circle within the circle. So the paper Masons come in to get it so they can fly. Hey, I'm a Mason. I'm this, I'm that. I'm boo, 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 boo. But then you got these guys. They're in the lodge 
who don't speak to them on the real information. They just give them the book information and what's here. And then we have other stuff that we go do on the other end because we can't trust those fools either because that we know why they're here. We, they're only here to wear a T-shirt, to have a fucking ring on, to say I, I'm a fucking Mason. Uh, I'm this smart person in fucking America. I hold all the secrets. We, we understand that. So, but on those on the outside, they group us all one together. But I'm telling you, it's a circle within the circle. So like, just because you're wearing the badge doesn't mean that you have the secrets. And just because you are a Mason, and let me just account to the to whose who's panelists, is, just because that you are uh, a person who's been passed through the lodge, that doesn't mean that if you haven't done it, that don't mean that you don't know. You might not can't break it down in Masonic term. You might can't pass the charge of a Mason, but that doesn't mean you don't understand the secrets of what we're speaking of in, on the other side. Am I making sense? Right. I mean, I guess you could argue that from the other side like the the secrets of the universe the, the mystical the mysterious uh is really just what should be common sense for whatever reason it it's not be. because the the individual does not pursue a path of self-knowledge and understanding of self in the world they just go into the world and want to be of it that's um, it. And again, that type of person exists in any group you're going to meet. There's folks who really want to understand who and what they are and how the body works and the body politic and the universe. And then there's folks who just want a status, a power, a position, and the benefits and privileges that supposedly come with that. What I found is a motherfucker who's unsuccessful is unsuccessful in anything they do. As a mason, as a Thank regular you. lone gunman, as a fucking entrepreneur, I don't care what it is. So you can go to any group and they're going to say, yeah, we have our own hierarchy in here where these folks are really about it for whatever that's worth. They really put their all into it. They really want some understanding and want to do good or be good with it. And then there's all the coattail pullers and hanger honors. That's any organization. That's any, any group of, of people. Them. That's any fucking endeavor or corporation. That's from Crip, Community. Blood, uh, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't oh, matter, it's, KKK. It's it doesn't the, matter. It's all like, bro, that shit don't. At the end of the day, all masonry is 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 just lo logics and common sense, man. That's not the evil ones. The evil ones are, you know, you want to call Illuminati or this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I came up here for one question and one statement. Go ahead. All right. So you have the sword of Islam and the Ram Fam in the same picture with the Unk. Okay, so if you're a stand-up man, I'm I'm kind of trying to understand why you have a hypocrisy in your in your avatar picture. Why do you say a hypocrisy? Because you those things know what it means, goblin. Yeah, they're conflicting. Let me tell you something. First of all, let me break down that sword. Now, unlike masonry, that's not you're not looking at a Masonic symbol right there. That's something that when I put that symbol up, all the Masons bow down to, even the 33rds. My first degree on that level is higher than... Right, say that word. Uh, any, time, they bow down, right? They, they bow down. They bow down. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying on, on, on an organization level when it comes to information because what's in my first degree encompasses everything in their whole 33rd degrees. So what, what you see there in that, with that double-edged sword right there, that's the sword of truth. It has two edges on there. If you look at any esoteric, they always give you one bladed sword because it's not the truth over there. That's the first of all. The unk there is for the everlasting life. You're looking at the star of David right there. You're looking at all six points on there. I can't break down all that's the jewels. The star of David, there. though. You're that's the star of Ram fan. Hold up, and, you all, and you also got the time cube in the middle. Go ahead. It's, all it's not it's a time cube. Goblin, you know what's I mean, going on here. I, I, you know, I you get know what you're what saying. The, the I, that that is that is a good that optics. I get why you would call it that. I understand why you would call it that. I can't now. That is something that I don't break my obligation on. I don't because that's the true keeper. You can go look there. That is called the ancient mystic order of Melchizedek. Look, man, the only star of David is the star of the folks. Just be real, man. That's the star of Ram. <laughs> right, star of David is. Uh. The I, you're asking David me to break. Star David is. I get it, bro. I get where you're coming from. I'm just trying to educate you on like why you, you your question was why are all these things together? Because God encompasses all. If you was not within the all, where would you be? I like that answer and I accept it. Thank you. The ring within ring answer, I'll accept because like I said, there's good pogos, bad pogos. So you kind of said it the right way to where I kind of am yielding right now. It is true, and I'm kind of getting a read off of 
and we kind of got some info already. But I, again, I don't think you're as you know, ring within ring. You're not in that ring ring pedo pogo ring. So no, you're like, absolutely correct. You're absolutely. I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm not scared to state my position. Uh, in in that organization, it has 40 degrees in there. I only got to the 19th degree. Um, there are many that are in front of me, and there is an organization that's on top of that one where they uh where they have a set of degrees as well. But with me being on this side of it, being on the level I am, I'm very abreast, and I know who to talk to and what information. I'm I'm in the chain of command. Did you I'm not say you. that you're a 33rd, right? I'm past the 33rd. Okay, which means that you're a Shriner is what that is. I'm past the Shriner. A, 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 a Shriner a Shriner's a 32. Okay. But the ring so, within rings, I absolutely understand, especially with the whistleblowers we have. And just like Paul said, infiltration, well, crew's been around a long time exposing criminals. Instead of trying to, like, pretend you guys are so fucking adept and intelligent, how about asking the motherfucker some questions? Like yeah. you were doing last night. I just asked I tell him all the shit you don't know instead of letting him educate you. How about you ask him something compelling and interesting? Hey, bro, you ever fucked a goat? Hey, bro, what's the creepiest, what's the creepiest, weirdest fucking thing you've seen in your masonry and at your diddy party? Whatever, you know, like bring it somewhere, man. Did you fuck a fruit or a fucking, did you go to P. Diddy's party? Because the fruit fucking is a thing, believe it or not, with some of these weirdos. That's uh that that you no know, when you spoke of that word uh symbolism, um that has to do that has to do with something that, or symbolism on a symbolism on a higher level, and I do understand the the pun on the the gay shit, but if to go through the ritual and because I don't want to break obligations for them or not y'all are highly intelligent people, it does have to do with a fruit. There is something that you're gonna do with the fruit, oh, but I people take that, but people take that and run and run with it so many different ways because they're. Because they they're seeking, they're they're actually fishing. They don't know, and then they expect someone well, to just come drive. Tell it's them both sides of the coin too, though, because it's circle within circle, you guys take the fruit optics in a different version versus us on the other side who know what we've learned about the fruit optics, as you said. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes on both sides of the of what they have concluded or, or thought. You know, because trust me, I take that fruit optic. Trust me, we know a fruit fucker very involved. In <laughs> in I do. You think it's, I do? <laughs> Brian O'Shea, are you still in your feelings? Huh? Oh, I'm checking in with Brian O'Shea to see if he's still in his feelings. Oh, I'm sick of you, like being wrong about me, dude. Yeah, like, in the feelings. Boy, is good. Now, yeah. far as the goat, far as fucking the goat, uh, it's not about fucking the goat. It's about feeding the goat, and the goat is more like your congregation. So, what? And I'll break that down. You feed your goat because you uh, you want your goat. How can I say it? Um, you feed your goat. So it's like what we're doing right now. So, like, if y'all are the congregation, wait, 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 so I, I know what you're about to say. You should say it. <laughs> you no, know, I know what you're about to say. You should say it because this is why you and I are on opposite sides of the coin. Except I get the circle of circle thing you're talking about, so I'll respect that. <coughs> I will respect that. Yeah, it is. So it's like we feed the goat, and so because the goat is what's going to raise you and take you to the next level. So, so a lot of times what you. What, Figuratively speaking, they say we're goat riders. We ride the goat. Uh, the goat, I will tell you this. Y'all have heard about the goat of Mendez, right? Yes, yeah, no? no okay. So, right so, so, so we're, 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 we're going to go down the five points, right? We're going to go, we're going to deal with the, we're going to deal with the pentagram, right? So we ride this goat and we feed the goat to keep the goat off our ass. And the goat is the people that's uh, basically, that's initiating you. Uh, they're the goat. Well, they keep You're, the goat off their ass, but they play with the goat's ass. Well, it's true. Well, yeah, yeah that's Nafu, true. If and you're going to play with the I'm telling ass. you right now, man, the no, worst thing you did dialogue. was – hold on one second. I have to fucking let him know now. I'm giving you official notice. I already told you. The worst thing you did last night was show me you're capable. Now that I know you're capable and you're not completely retarded and insane, I'm holding you to the standard you set last night on your broadcast. If you keep asking questions – hollering out over him, trying to be cute and clever and funny, and trampling like the goat creature you are over the information, I'm throwing you the fuck out. No, Lee, Seriously. I can handle it. 
I can handle it because it's I ridiculous. He was an it amazing is, host. I'm going to play you the video of him being an amazing host yeah, and coming over here that. and doing this crap. Don't do don't it's do purely that. resentful and it's purely uh, uh, self sabotage and sabotage yeah, onto me indirectly. I, I was proud to see you and Jack Talcott uh, re reconciled still from last. Go fuck yourself and let him finish on what he's talking about. When you ask the question, let him fucking finish and then go to the next thing. You are capable. I know now. And the only thing I was basically saying is like, you're the goat. So like, I keep the goat off my ass by like, they just say, Paul, his thing is, I don't give a damn. Anytime I see one of you motherfuckers, my thing is I like orange crushed soda. Um, Brian's thing. Every time I, every time I see this motherfucker, he's like, uh, so player, I don't give a fuck how, how far, how low you got to go to seek this. I want, I like honey milk biscuits made from grandma's house and you can only get it in fucking Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? So to keep the goat on our, to keep the goat off our ass, we have to find ways to get these crazy unfeasible tasks done. Otherwise, the goat is going to be on your ass all fucking day, all fucking night. So we show up, let's just say, on a, on a Wednesday. Y'all show up here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. We want to talk to you guys because they're, they're, the, they're the big brothers. They're the Masons now. You're not. You're trying to be what they are. So it's going to be always some brothers in there that's going to be like, have all these whole high-ass delisted demands like I'll tell you. It's going to be simple brothers in there and be like, bro, just know this know, know this for me or know this for me. Then you're going to have brothers in there that's going to be like, uh, uh, like, like I say, uh, I need sweet grandmama cookies from fucking Italy or, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, how the fuck do I get that shit? And one of the favorites, like, bro, bring me back pussy in the can. You know, you got to be smart. And that's tuna. You see what I'm saying? Like, you got to be smart. It's, it's training your brain to think. How do you work? How do you get these? How do you get, how do you feed the impossible? How do we turn a, a regular stone to a regular stone? How do we turn a, an imperfect stone to a perfect stone? So they break you down to the to the. All the humility, like what we're doing here on this panel, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can sit here and go through all the discrepancies of each other, but it's only to build you. So once I break you down to your lowest compound, only then can I build you from the irregular to the regular. Only then can I build you from the uh, imperfect to the perfect. So they're going to they're take all these groups of men because in, within this room, within these 20, 30, 40 men, you know what I'm saying? One of these men is you. You know what I'm saying? They they walked your life. You're not that fucking different. You know they're gonna they're gonna see them in yourself. So guess what that person's gonna say? I got Paul. I want I want to be the person that's over Paul. And there's gonna be other people that's more that's adapted to you because they can see the mistakes in you as a man. You know what I'm saying? That, that you make throughout life. So they're, those people are gonna be people calling you that's made those same mistakes. So those people are gonna be on your ass, 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 on your ass. That's and you know why this is life. fascinating? Everything that you're laying out as a Masonic bent perspective has applied to this broadcast. It's why so hard hat, soft ass. You don't know who that is, but the audience does saw me in a subconscious dream where I had horns on. He thinks I'm the devil. No, I'm the proverbial goat here. Gotta feed the goat. Yeah, and it ain't going to come with me through money either. They've learned that we give Pauly boy fiat coupons and he still turns around and charges at us with the horns. Yeah. Cause you got to be kept on your feet on the balls of your feet. You got to be kept just like I am aware, awake, conscious, able to respond, response it. Shut up fat fucking slave. I just said, do you want me to pull up the video? You last night capable. You're not willing here. You're capable here, but you're not willing here. I'm going to show you some will. We've been doing this almost two years now. So keep it going, man. What am I talking about right now? You're not feeding the goat. You're trying to put horn to horn. So when you have the capability to not only feed the goat, but yourself. Let me break this down for you. Because what it is, as men, we're all searches of truth tonight. Uh, a truth. And we want, we're trying to all, we might be taking different planes in different directions, but we're all trying to get to the same place. So what's the very first thing you do? You, I'm going to show you something. You ask. So ask is not even a word. It's an acronym. And what I mean by it's an acronym is A-S-K. So first thing you're going to do, you're going to ask for the light. Once you ask for the light, you're going to seek the light. You see what I'm saying? Then you get and then you knock at the door. So you so you ask, seek, you knock. Once you knock at the door, the light is given to you. See, once the light is given to you, that's why they said we're the light bearers. That's when you become a master mason. Now you have now you have the light. You're off the goat. So now your mission is to get to the camel because you have to because now that you found which was lost in the east, you're going to take that information 
that to the west so this is where your shrinerism comes in because when you get to the west when you get to the, when you cross these burning sands and you get to the west so you're going to you're going to take a you're going to take up on a camel you're going to tie that camel to a date tree you know what i'm saying and then you're going to go through some more rituals right there and this is kind of the end of freemasonry and that's why i got that double-edged sword up there because they when those camels that they were on if you know anything about financial status and stuff, those were only one. Th those camels only had one hump on them. So, because the, the true rulers, the true kings, they had two humps on those camels. It's like having a Benz or a Honda. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I have two swords on there because they know when they see me, I had two humps on my camel. I'm the one that showed you how to tie the goddamn camel to the date tree. I'm the one that told you it was in the date tree over here. I'm the one that fed. You. I'm the one that gave you the water after the oasis. I'm the one that fed you the manna out the sky from God to, to give you this information to build these. Uh, lovely temples and and uh, and uh, sh shrines and right. It's all allegorical, about. right? The camel can carry water through all the harsh conditions that there, the well, others can. It it's up. allegorical. You're picking, it you're picking it up. So it's like, so all this. When I heard the word symbolic, yes, yes, a lot of the stuff we do, we do speak up in symbol because in parables because only the wise is supposed to be seen. This the average mere man is not supposed to be able to break this down. This is godly work, and if it was, so and that's why the masons are smarter than me because they've said from the beginning you don't open the doors to a bunch of rabble scum who couldn't understand you if you showed them, let alone told them. Exactly. You'll waste your fucking time. You're wasting you your cast time. your pearl before swines. You'll only piss off a pig trying to put lipstick and a hat on it. It's the reality of the situation. I've just taken that principle, turned it on its head, and I now I do a bit, an entertainment broadcast, where we speak and show truth and also show the lack of consciousness and awareness and the lack of will, more importantly, to apply themselves to raise that consciousness and awareness. Thank you, Snafu Snaps. Yeah, um, I to be honest, I like this type of conversation more than the stuff that I do on the Internet. But that's just not my audience. It is so. It's like I will be again. A fool this is where this is where yeah, I will have to then audience. circle back and say Snafu and others have a point because the reason they'll call you and others pogos is you will be sitting here thriving in this conversation right now, bringing value to a limited audience. But because you think it's not as profitable in the world, you focus your time, energy, attention where that bag is going. So as a Mason, an original Mason, I would think you'd want to chase knowledge yourself and co-creation with the most authentic aspects of self rather than chase that bag. This is where we get into light masonry versus worldly dark masonry. I could contend that. I'm not judging you. No, so I, I'm not I, trying no, to pull no, no, you no. out. You're, you're absolutely right. I can't I cannot contest what you're saying. But I I'll, I'll tell you this cuz and I can only go so far. I'm on a mission. I'm doing what, what I'm supposed to do and I can give you this parable. You know, um Jesus the Messiah, he had the talk walk and look as those that was around him that's the only way to get their attention if you if you if you come out here and because i i wore the other garbs i spoke i've done all that but like when it's when i was told so player put back on your nikes put back on your jordans put back on your polos you know saying throw a chain on every now and then now the common man will listen to me i don't look different i don't speak different he that has an ear let him hear my sheep hears when i speak they will follow but if you look so opposite you look so different they're gonna before you even speak you're gonna sound obscure you're gonna look weird and they're gonna be on the defense so in order to for your fellow man to hear you sometimes you just have to blend in. No, so, I understand that sometimes you got to be a sheep in wolf's clothing yes, rather than a wolf in sheep's clothing. Thank but, bro. you know, again, as long as I don't know, again, I don't know what you do. I can't even <laughs> make a determination, let alone a judgment, because that's not my judgment to make anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. But, but the reality of it is, is I think that we, we, dare I do the we, would do best if we could get a lot of these folks who are constantly bag chasing and focusing on entertainment to do the other side of the coin, right? Let's flip the other side of the coin. And this is potentially why we're brought here today. No, because you're right. You're I right. think that there should be another side or aspect to the conversation that rules the nation rather than just who's fucking who, who's getting to what money, who's, you know what I'm talking about, oh, yeah. bro. This, this is, I will say, you know, we got this thing. We say it's a method to the madness and it, it might not be understood by some of the people that's around. It's not even understood by some of my friends and family, family members who actually know who I am and deal with me on a daily basis. But it's for me. To understand the mission and understand the assignment and know what i'm doing and have faith in and what was put before me that it's gonna work you see what i'm saying and sometimes it does get a little uh um, uh obscure to the eye and it might look like i'm off the mission but 
I, only thing I'm doing is getting my getting my sheep, and, and that's all color aside. I don't care if you are white, Latino, if you are Asian, if you're an Indian. My people are my people. It's just that simple with me. And those who are, uh, oppose me, they just oppose me. And I'm gonna call it as it goes. Whether they're black, I'll call a I will call a black person the devil. Like I will call a white person the devil. I will call a Latino devil. If you show me what you are, I will uh, I will assess you appropriately. <laughs> It's just it's just what it is. I understand spiritual warfare. Everyone's not on the good. Everyone's not on the side of good. So I'm not going to go around just because someone might be smart, enlightened, that they're on my side. It's just like it's just and I, that's why I do uh, the other dude that comes come, coming opposing me. I understand him. That's why I'm not really uh, messed up with him. You know what I'm saying? Because some people you just got to they got to do what they do. Some people um, the only way I can say it is is um, dumb people. Smart people can play dumb. Dumb people cannot play smart. It's impossible for them. Right, and folks get... think that I'm opposing them in my ego when I'm putting the wall up for their ego to express in public because they have a wall up in themselves that blocks them from a higher truth and what they keep perceiving and acting upon. And they don't and... think that I could know that about them and see myself in them and offer them an opportunity to do something different, which is all it is. And I don't know I why he's down mind. there shaking his head. Well, I do know why, because what the fuck I just spoke about snafu is also true for him, but he refuses to see it. And I'll say this about I'll say this about Brian and just on a man level. I thank him and appreciate him now. Even uh, even even though I didn't I didn't like it. Uh, but I, I as me sitting back, I got the most insight when y'all started arguing. And this is what I did heard, which makes me what I think Paul, the uh, whose channels is trying to tell me from the beginning. And, and, and I told my wife this. I said, I first paused. I said, these dudes are not against us. They really just want to be cool. They is like, dude, probably just went about it wrong. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't think around now, at, looking back in retrospect, I don't think nobody on her racist. They just got some questions. Uh, it's some things that they want to know. And they don't know how to go about asking because it can get a little touchy. And um, it is what it is, man. You know, um, I think they're tired of the. Yeah, if you want racist, I got them for you. I ju I tried to let Big Lack know the other day. I don't know, you know, whatever became of that. But if you're looking for racist, we got him. There's this guy Illuminati. He was actually broadcasting last night, and he has what he calls, uh, forgive me, a nigger tower, where uh -huh. he he and his audience get in the chat and they type one letter of the N word uh, till it gets spelled out because they think that's fun and funny. You know, so, uh, you know, oh, I would love again, to if, if, the, well, listen, I, I'm trying to promote him because he's been harassing me for a year and a half, two <coughs> years, constantly talking about me. So I figure he wants promotion and I figure what better way to promote him than to let all of our new African-American friends know that he's doing nigger towers over on his channel. I figure they'd really appreciate that. Yeah, so, you know what? at Illumitami, I-L-L-U-M-I-T-O-M-M-Y, and, uh, yeah, you'll get all you need. Pretty much racist guy from Virginia, meth head, tries to be cool because he lives in Denver, but can't help to expose his subconscious hate, um, bigotry, division, you know, envy, jealousy, yeah. on and on and on and on. What, Pretty much every seven deadly sin you could think of. What I really learned the most here was... Just and I was going on pause talking to my wife, and I was saying, um, the white people are tired of what their forefathers and people have set up on them. This is what I hear. This this was the outcry that I heard, like, bro, what happened in the 1700s, 1800s, bro? This is me, bro. I get what they did. That might be part of my lineage, but this is me, bro. I don't got no beef with you, bro. I can't change what the fuck they did. But I'm saying this is take me for me. That's what I hear. We can dress it up with all this nice, cute, Masonic, God, politic. We can dress it up with all that. But what I hear is like, bro, can y'all, what do we have to do to get the, the new age black people to look at us as us? That's what I right, hear. Right, and I think that's from both sides, right? Because human yeah. condition is human condition. How do we get to the place of I am that am, right? Yeah. I and, 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 and create an acceptance and an understanding and a co-creation from that position. I'm all I'm all with that conversation. Um, I know it'll get tense. I can I can't even say that I might get out of my body 
uh, uh, depend on what's said a couple of times because just do what's been put in me and years and, you know, ancestral back is just comes out of me at times. But that's not my mission. That's not my purpose. And I think after we go through those things, five, 10 minutes, I think the true the true person is going to come out. So it's going to get that's going to be the bigger thing. So, like, I'm willing to go through the little bullshit conversations, the fuck you, cracker, fuck you, nigga. I'm willing to go through that shit to get to what we got to get to is what I'm saying. I'm willing to get, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at, I'm not going to walk away with any bad or disdainment in my heart, even, even for Brian, you know, I'm not that type of person to hold it, you know what I'm saying? But I am the type of person that like, I'll address it. I'll sit in front of anyone. I'm not scared of any, any living creature on this earth. Well, you know? you're not the type of person to hold it, but JG is. And if I had to suspect, he just listened to everything that was just said, didn't pay attention to any of it. And he's been waiting to speak on what he's feeling. So go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let him go. Hey, Paul, fall back, man. You're a bitch. Uh, no, thanks for being cool, I man. I thought so. You know, I don't know, man. I um, I don't know. It, it, it's weird for me. I'll just give you my background. You know, yeah, I'm a black dude. I'm from the uh, inner city of Dallas, from the hood, quote unquote, or the ghetto. But my mom was educated. Uh, she did move to the suburbs. So when I got to the suburbs in the uh, early 80s, it was predominantly white. It was only 5% black. So hell yeah, my friends were white. Hell yeah, I can talk educated. Hell yeah, I'm smart. Because my, my mother put me over there for that to happen. But then we moved back to the hood later on in my life. And then, you know, I'll just tell you, all the black kids laughed at me. You know, he talks smart. He wore his pants like this because I, I, I got raised different. So, but I didn't understand that that would become to be my greatest ability in the world. To like, I've been around white people spent the night sleepovers best friends everything you know what i'm saying so it's just like i know both worlds from the hood to the to the suburbs i didn't know how much that was going to help me later in my adult life so i don't have no grievances towards really any anyone in any race one of my best friends growing up we played soccer with john uh his name last name is garcia so you know he's mexican uh my um, other bit uh we used to go with, with steve and, and play tennis i you know like it's having both worlds, I think, sometimes helps people. That's for white people to be in the hood and be around black people to understand their world. And it's for white, it's for black people to be over in, in the white people who are to understand them. Then maybe we don't have this. I think the reason why some people don't get it because you've been so secluded to just your one world that you can't, only thing you have about the other world is what's been put in front of you and what you've been told. You've never been immersed in it. You never had to live there. You never had to deal with it on a daily basis. It's so it's so different when I meet my uh my Caucasian brothers who from the hood or who had to live there five, 10 years. You know, it, it's different from someone who grew up in the suburbs their whole life. My white Caucasian who and you know what I'm saying, who grew up in the suburbs their whole life, who never lived in the hood, who never had to be over there. Yeah, th those are two different type of mind states I'm I'm dealing with. You know, yeah, one thing I one thing I've noticed is is uh, I'm from I'm from Philadelphia, but I'm I'm from uh, I'm not from like North Philly. I'm not from a project the hood. But white guys that I would meet from the hood, they would look at me like I was a punk, and they would always try to play games. Just how like you were saying, black people would diss you and dub you because mm -hmm. you sp you spoke proper and you were educated. Mm -hmm. So I kind of I kind of have a. Uh, grudge on the dude, white dudes from the hood but at the same time i can i can just Bro, laugh I at just, it you know i can laugh at I, it i can take the high road being being it was only five percent black where i grew up man bro one of my biggest things that 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 haunt, i ain't gonna say it haunts me but one of my fucked up memories that like me and my friends three it was three of us we was walking to school junior high one of them's in the eighth grade me and my other partners in the seventh grade and we look and we're walking down the alley and we look up and my, and my partner said, damn, look at all those white dudes. And they all had on black and they had chains and shit. This is back during the punk rock. They, this is before goth and all that shit. You know, uh, uh, the, the kids was into, the, it turned from heavy metal to like punk rock. I, I grew up in that era. So, and so we look and we're like, damn, what the fuck are they on? So we kept walking and it's like about 10, 15 of them. And they had their little bats and, and we look like, damn, oh, okay. But this is when the arrival of the skinhead. So we like, we heard about it, but we'd never really seen it before. We were approaching like, damn, is this some skinheads? So long story short, you know what I'm saying? They tried to jump us, bro. And then like when we fought them three on 10, you know what I'm saying? 
our uh the school teachers and all in a couple of the uh the um the coaches will sink the fight we get we finally get to school because it's before school we get to school all the black kids which is only three of us we get called in the office and we all got suspended from school and the skinheads got to stay like you gotta understand our walk sometimes like we were just defending ourselves walking to school how the fuck did we get labeled as the bad people that's the gang that's fighting when that's the real gang over there and we were just protecting ourselves so sometimes stereotypes fuck shit up and we have to defend that shit on a daily and we have to live with that We don't forget that shit, even though it's like as cool as I want Paul to be, as cool as I want Brian to be. Like, how do I forget that shit? So it's like we have pain in us. Cause like when we want to be like, damn, bro, I know he ain't fucked up with me. I know he's not the dude that did it. But then we have to indulge in these type of conversations and prove ourselves. Like, bro, a lot of times we ain't done shit. We just stepped out black. We didn't even say shit. We just in our car driving. Our they pull us over. We ain't done shit, even though we in the hood. I'm being profiled because I got a hat turned this way and it's a certain color. Bro, I ain't done shit to you or nobody. Y'all don't understand that shit. And then we get to someone like Paul, who's cool, Brian, who just got questions. Hell yeah, we on the defense. We don't know your angle. We trying to figure that shit out. Are you here to fuck with me? fuck up my life you here to destroy my character because all this has happened then i get to you and you're just like i'm friendly like bro you gotta like what's your motive bro yeah, it's the same thing from both sides you have yeah. a lot of white folks who may have lived in certain areas and constantly got a rap of are they the police oh we think this guy's weak we're gonna try him we're gonna try to take his shit so, we do, yeah. You know, and, and we can have I the same that. experience and from both sides, and we're I'll having the that. same experience yeah, let, for let how we that. approach it because all that. it is is fear. It's we fear, right? When the white boy comes to the hood, let's talk about the cracker uh, or like drugs. When the white boy comes to the hood, he wants a little coke or he wants to get a little wooty wooty woo. Hell yeah, they're gonna charge him an extra twenty, and then uh, they're gonna try to pull all this slick shit. So yeah, I see that shit. The, am I the person that say thought that shit was right? Hell fucking no. But you got to know I live here, so when I speak up on that. Cause I'm a person, if you can tell by my voice, I speak up for what's right, regardless of who the fuck it's in front of. Man, you know how many times I've been ridiculed for speaking up for little Matthew coming to get this little dope in the hood? Why y'all trying to fuck up a little Matthew? Now we gon', now he gon', y'all come over here, y'all trying to fuck him up over his dope, and then after that, you, then you're trying to, then after you serve him a couple times, then you're gonna try to rob him, and then, you know, uh, uh, uh little Billy wanna just come over here and play football with you, play football and basketball with y'all bullying him on the court. Yeah, I'm somebody that's gonna speak up for that. But you got to think when I go, you got to think when little Billy go home and I'm in the hood outside just smoking my little blunt with my partner or whatever. It's going to be like, so play, why you protect that little white boy? You're a whole ass nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? You always on some friendly ass shit. Now, I'm in, now I got to defend my character, my blackness in the hood. Now I got all these stupid ass gangsters in like, Oh, he a weak nigga. He a fuck nigga. So they trying to fuck me over. I'm a, I got to worry about these crip niggas, these blood niggas, because I'm defending little Billy because it's just some wrong. It's just some wrong shit. So it does get flipped over on the other side. So. A lot of times what happens is a person like me, myself, sometimes it gets it, mind the business that pays you, stay out of your business. So sometimes I might have to let little Billy get picked on because I don't want to have to deal with 20 niggas tonight. Can I give you some place, the African American community to, to direct all your metaversal rage? Of course, mm -hmm. I'm not promoting that any <laughs> actual harm come to these people. Um, but metaversally, your rage can be directed at Illumitami here. And I'm going to direct you in the African American community uh, to the N word tower mm -hmm. that Tommy is so famous for. And of course, yeah, he says, Well, that. I'm not really a racist. No, let me Paul's see. a narcissist and he projects onto everyone. But this is this is a fun game for him, right? You know, for some reason. See, I like that type of shit. And you know what? I'm not, I, I'm open. My wife can tell you. I love, I love oh, people yeah, I'm who are up thing. front with me. I look, the, it, ah, and I'm just gonna use white for the word. I love the white. No, person. he's not gonna be up front with you because he's gonna like do it to try to trigger and then use humor as a coping no, 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 mechanism and then pretend he's not people. racist. Yeah, he's hateful and, and, and divided. He's sick, right? He does it with me. He does it. He's it. got a lot of self issues. He's got a lot it, of hate. But get, get where I'm coming from as a black person. Let me tell you why some black people like those white those type of. Well, no, because you know what you're getting. I get yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. I don't like the sneaky shit where like you're my friend. 
and you're cool with me and then you're acting you can talk the lingo you have all this empathy for me and we and we made a relationship but the end when you're around your when you're around your white constituents you're like yeah man fuck them niggas uh i'm on this man that's yeah i don't i don't like that i'd rather deal with the person who says yeah nigga to my face and he lets me know where he stands yeah but he's not going to that's the thing it, it, like he does this around his little buddies when there's 20 people watching his live all the other little clowns oh, he's like big. him he's not but, big no 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 that's where you come in you're gonna make him famous <laughs> so, so yeah um you know like he, he's not gonna do it when you tell him to do it and he's not gonna be authentic he's only gonna do it around his little white buddies there who think they're cute and clever you know like ebt steven david Cuck so body do, you think he do, that? do you think he does that just to get the clout so he can get a YouTube check? Because he been for real. No, this is his way of acting like a real man online. Look at me. I'm pushing the limits. I'm going to do N word towers because I'm a big, bad white man and nobody's going to yeah. stop me. Right. While then telling everybody where he is and where he runs up and down the block on Denver. He's a big, tough guy. I'll shoot anybody. I'll beat up anybody. I'll break your jaw, Paul on slave. You know, he's a big, bad, white man, tough so guy what online, does right? He fall under? What, Excuse me? Does he fall under any organization? Political? Uh, uh, Masonic? No, he's an asylum case. Oh, he's, a, he's, a, <laughs> he's a hovel-dwelling asylum case who smokes <laughs> meth. That's on record. He's admitted it. He dates 17-year-olds and smokes meth. I mean, what else? What more do I need to say? No. He's basically a soldier for Christ. How old is he? He's in what his forties. What is he doing with seventeen-year-olds smoking drugs? Well, he says this was ten years ago, so he was in his, his in his thirties dating seventeen-year-olds who were drinking alcohol while he was smoking meth. You know, no big deal. The usual shit, right? He's a sucker. <laughs> He's basically a sucker. Flunky. You crazy, Mark. Son, I'll see you. Next. I like your trolling tactics. <laughs> Fucking left wing. You can't get a nigger tower off without some leftist just getting mad. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did I save it? Did I save it because I, I kicked this it? This dude's face is ate up. Did I save it? because Yeah. Okay, you're just timed out. We'll see you in a few minutes, Ezra. Don't you Daisy ever. May, there you go again you with better. your insanity. There you go with your insanity. It's why I'm going to have to throw you the fuck out of here at some point. I'm tired of you hanger honors who can't understand the difference in context. Okay? So when I come on here and say, uh, Irish, Italian folks who have gone through what I've gone through are the niggers of this land, right, from Europe. The white people, I've heard white people call the Irish people niggers. Right, that's not me. Exactly. They wrote us up as monkeys in the paper when we first came here. said, look at the baboons. They should be kept on the outskirts of town and farm the fields. Yeah, we know that rap. Mm -hmm. We got it. So, again, that's not the same thing as sitting around going, nigger, nigger, nigger tower. Ha, 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 ha. It's just not the same thing. Me giving an impassioned monologue and speech about philosophy and psychology and sociology and history is nowhere near the same thing as that. Why can't you and the other asylum case tards figure that out? Context. The retards in this realm don't do well with context. Color the black aside. people would definitely have this, can understand the discernment in that, so you're right. Like better we, knock when you walk through that door, S. Ryan. You never know when cakes are rolling through. Usually, hosts don't take part in this. Um, she fucked it up. Is what it was? Is she opened the door and I was? What is he talking I, I about? I either kicked the door. I either kicked the door shut real quick, or I'd caught that cake. He's an insane drug addict who can't make a point. Now, if you listen to him for an hour, he'll never make a concise it. point. That is Seymour. He's just hiding. Yeah, yeah, it's because uh, Paul was talking about getting laid the night. He before, hates on me constantly, case, and then does this. That was teamwork of uh, running Live. some cakes, running some free. By the way, he sure. does this to twenty Good people job. and makes no money out of it. I think that's yeah. That's crazy. Oh, that's is that saluting? It's hard to see on my phone. What was the title of the, of this live? Uh, on my end, it was between the E and the R. And, and maybe I had uh, timed her out so fast that it didn't even come through on your side. I'm questionable about the timing of uh, chats versus when... It should be the second channel when you search Station 33. When did you get in trouble for cock jokes? 
He also constantly says that which is offensive to Paul. <laughs> I might be able to make that good idea, or Paul, I think I can probably make that. What did you just say, JG? How, how many subs does this dude have? Uh, about five or six hundred, three quarters of that from this audience, from hating on me. So he's constantly. not even monetized. Well, he gets super chats. How? Oh, he can get super. What? I think at five hundred, you 500 get super chats. Gets, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He can get super chats. Yeah, he's desperate for money because he can't even pay for his own dog, but he claims he's rich. <laughs> So this is, I'm going to tell you something that we do in our little sect over here. See, it's people like that. You have to make the choice as if you're the bigger platform and y'all control the ship. If when you give them the clout and you, and you make them famous, you're giving them a check. Is this the people that you want to give a check to? Well, ultimately I'm, I'm for like the freedom, you know, I'm for whatever free enterprise. Meant to be so meant to be. So free enterprise, give them a check. Yeah, I mean, if he can somehow take his insanity and, and create a rap with it or appeal to an audience, which I don't think is going to happen on a broad scale, just don't think it's possible. I'm open to it. But yeah, whatever it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I mean, who's going to sit around of any kind of, uh, you know, congenable conscience and watch this guy for any length of time? He's completely insane and hateful. And he masquerades as a warrior for God so, I'm while hating on me constantly. I'm going to sub his channel, and when he go live, I'm going to see do he let you trying to say he's going to switch the tone when he Absolutely. Sees the black he's a coward. He's a punk coward. He, he says he's going to beat me up, break my jaw, shoot me. As soon as I, I, I push the line with him, uh, you know, he goes to saying I'm bullying him, harassing him, striking channels, saying that I'm trying to get him harmed by holding him accountable so to other black folks about saying the N-word. Like, I, I guess I'm trying to see where does that end. I don't strike channels. I don't care if you use my content. I don't I do not do that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's more like the free enterprise thing. Uh, but y'all, this is one of these dudes that'll strike your channel. So you, he, he's going to he's gonna throw his rock and hide his hand and then try to get you out the way. He's one of them type of people. Like, he, yeah, like he's he going to twist it on to me that I, I'm the bad guy for, you know, exposing his nonsense to more than the 20 people who meet there at a at a – a clan rally where pretty much I'm the the burning cross. Like they they pretty much they do a clan rally and then they burn me as the cross. Well, you trying that's, to be that's well, pretty much well, what well, Paul, you're trying to be cool with the niggas. Well, yeah, I mean that like <laughs> I, 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 I mean I'm trying to be cool with real people of, of all sides of all yeah. persuasions, and apparently a lot of folks don't like that. And you you're know, trying to be cool with fake. the niggas and you're Irish. He's gonna oust you. Hell yeah. He's right, and I'm like funnier, you. and I'm a better conversationalist, and a better philosopher, and I'm more entertaining, and you know, I could go down the list. It, it kind of upsets people. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I ain't gonna lie. You know, them people use like that. I usually don't give them any attention, but I, I, I do. I am gonna go over there to hear what he's talking about, and I am gonna drop down in the chat and just to see if there's uh, anything, anything switch up because. I don't know. I, I haven't checked to see how many subs you got or anything like that. Or done any, but, you know, it's sometime we got to level up. You know what I'm saying? It's like not saying I'm better than anyone because I'm still I don't even consider myself nowhere near a big YouTuber. But like, bro, I got 20,000 subs. You got 500. What am I doing fucking with you? You know? Yeah, I mean, listen, bro, I had over 22,000 subs and then they wouldn't let me get any more. They take hundreds a month. They started striking all my videos, even private ones. They shadow ban me from the algorithm. So yeah, moved over I, got, here. I went through that for a year and I worked my way out of it. I went, yeah, I, went I pretty much came over here. For a year. Yeah, I pretty much came over here to kind of refocus. And with that came a bunch of, you know, bottom feeders, uh, you know, parasites, vampire creatures, users. You didn't get out um, quick enough. You entertained it too long. That's why you that's why you lost your shit. See, I let that shit go. And just worked on the rebuild on the channel that I had, had all my subs and everything. So I lost. Yeah, but this is why you need to understand. Then Masons are never going to take me because I'm pretty much insane, like these people I'm talking about. Because somehow in my life, I got one question. I would rather you. go with what's why? true. I'm going to show real. you something. I got one question for you. Do you believe in the higher God? 
Absolutely. That's what allows me stop to go to the lowest stop, places stop. I'm gonna and show you something. that. I'm going to show you something. That's the only requirement to be a Mason. Okay. Mason, but Masons are accepting anybody. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian. No, or it's not. It's not about accepting anybody. Their only requirement yeah, is that, bro. I'm one. I'm trying to tell you. The only requirement I, I is. I understand. I understand. The only requirement so is you? that you believe in the higher. We don't take atheists. So regardless if you're Christian, Buddhist, Hinduism, uh, you can even be satanic. It doesn't hey, matter. That's Tommy you, right there. You, Tommy's on Brian O'Shea's panel right now, and he's calling me the, the you know, the white nigger oh. now. So yeah, that's him right there. And he's so, on and he's on Brian's. He so doesn't Brian think that Brian? I know that it's him when he just showed up before at station 33. Then he just disappeared. And now there's a guy. Paul's a fraud. All of a sudden. Like, I can't so figure that Brian out. Went live. Brian dropped down and went live. Oh, I, I know. Brian's still up here, I believe. Oh, I'm talking okay. about Tommy. No, that's that's oh. a Luma slavery. The kid on the on the on the on screen the, on right the now, the little that's white that's trash that's meth, you know, pedo pogo, as Snafu would say. <laughs> Can I ask oh, the no, uh, well, go ahead, sir? I just want to ask him one question. I heard you say in the goat. So is is being the, called the goat uh, uh, like a noble thing? No, it's it's just symbolic of the people that's teaching you. Okay, but symbolic of what exactly? The people that teach it. it um, th they're using the goat as the as that's like the guide. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. uh, I'll tell you this: we 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 use words like trestle board. You would call you would say Bible. So um, the goat guides us using the trestle. Did he cut out on everyone else's end? No, I got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. Sorry, so, so, I did for a second. So my question is. In the Bible, it says that uh, the goat symbolizes demonic forces, wicked uh, uh, men, and oppressors, and Satan. So I'm just wondering how does that work with the I Masonic? I think that your first mistake, like I've told you over and over again, is appealing to a biblical fantasy story as the absolute word of God. It's the same mistake you all keep making. There's correlations to truth in there. There's a way in there. There's reality in there. And then there's a bunch of remixing and romanticism on top and emotionalism. So again, why do you cite the Bible for where you get your law when you are supposed to have a relationship with the creator living God now, which would make the book at best a correlation at worst superfluous more than what's necessary. Shut You're up, right. Santa You're right. No, he's right. Paul's right, but I'm just trying to get clarity because I, that's why I, I don't know everything about that. He said Masonic and all that, and they accept everybody as Maybe long as you're not because an because the same dark Masons, while this guy maybe is a light Mason, the two sides of the same coin of consciousness, maybe the folks who gave you the Bible wanted to throw you off from being objective and stoic and being able to take in all the aspects of the information you need so you can really know yourself and do and be better. They'd rather keep you in dogma and romanticism and emotional He's and right. fixated and culted and obsessed. Okay. He, that makes sense. That He's right. No, he's definitely right on that. You know, you know that's why I tell you the circle within the circle. What I posted, Freemasonry is basically the new world order. They b believe in a higher being, supreme being, but not they're all different face. But then, then the big ones, the goat is ritualistic uh, for Satanic worship, absolutely. But the new world order optics of the Mason, because they're all different religions of different faiths. They all claim, oh, it's the one being, it's the supreme, do you believe in a God, supreme being? They don't care what God it is. Do you believe in a God? Do you believe you in fucking supreme? religious losers. Fuck you. Fuck your bullshit religion. Fuck the Pope. I'll knock the fucking Pope out unconscious in the cage fight, which he never answered my challenge. You get knocked the fuck out, boy. <laughs> Won't take that challenge. That's crazy. I, I Brian, feel, I feel what you say. I feel what you like. Listen to me. Even on what you were saying with the New World Order, what you was going on, I'm not going to sit here and uh, deny any of that is what you're saying is is incorrect or false. If um, the people who is going to 
I ain't gonna say put in effect because the new order is here. Like hell yeah, the people who control that is gonna be the is gonna be the elite and those the keepers of the secret. Who else could do that? Oh, I already know. Like we said, we got into optics about the fruit fucking. Some of these people. Think <laughs> well, but we mean, you know, I know what's up. I like that word. He said the fruit fucking. The whole thing that gave me where you stand in the whole thing and listening to you. Um, you guys are you guys are emotionally appealing deviants. You guys are emotionally appealing deviants. You guys are emotionally appealing deviants who are fixated and obsessed with a dogma that the Masons gave you that you think you're going to use against the same Masons who gave it to you. It's Man, bizarre. How does that work? It, it, it works if you're a tarred. If you're fully targeted out and you think you understand something when part of it is an intuition you have, I've not denied it, like we all have. Part of it is indoctrination. Let go of your indoctrination. Your intuition's good enough. God gave it to you. Please. It's satanic worship to the goat. The okay. Okay. The goat's an inherently satanic animal. The devil made it. It's horrible and bad. Everything good, bad. Everything good, bad. Look around. The couch, good. Couch, bad. Table good, table bad. This is the mind and emotional quotient of a child. Of a child. Of a penis, vagina, good, bad. Private part, public part. Completely unreconciled being. Could you just cut the crap? Not crap. Not everything has to be reduced down to black and white, good and evil. There is a fucking gray area to the. Just Try keep hammering over me, fuck slave. I'll me. leave. I'll go smoke reefer. You fucking argue and just tell everyone what you don't know over and over with no one listening on your own channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got a question. I got a question for the man because, like Paul was saying, like, okay, they made it for you and it's not it, right? So let me ask you this question. Go ahead. Like, people say, okay, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, John Jones. Yeah. Uh, from the MMA, he's known to be the GOAT, right? Yeah. He's done so many bad things, but he's labeled as the GOAT. And many yeah. people in that satanic entity, which we all know, like the WWE, MMA, UFC, they're all into that. They're called the GOAT. So how does that work in terms of the meaning? That means greatest of all time. Let's no, just it doesn't. Praise. You're wrong. You're, you're wrong. That's not exactly what it means. The goat refers to the source. Look it up. Yeah, I mean, right, dude, you're, you're, you're no, you have a blowing, point, but you, it right you have a point, but you're just taking it too deep. Let the you, man you, you have a very you know, valid point, baby. What you got to do is simplify what you're saying because you have a point, but you're just overthinking it, bro. You're just you don't qualify for it. I'm done talking, man. You don't qualify for me to talk to you. No problem, JG. Let the man talk, please. I respect that he's somebody that actually goes back and forth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all crazy on this hoe. <laughs> but like, um, now you have you have a good point, but you're just you're just overthinking it, and I think that's because Paul used the word indoctrination. You're putting too much thought into it. Just use your true intuition, your true who you are. It's going to tell you that you you're putting too much spin on it. You're putting too much this and that and that and this. It, you're going too deep. Some it's like what happens with people where they need to go deep. They're shallow. Where they where they need to be shallow, they go deep. Okay, but but I'm saying if Paul just said, okay, the the Masons did this to confuse us, all Christians, Muslims, Jews, or whatever, right? Okay. So now I'm not even I'm not even going in that uh, perspective. I'm going to can I a help you out? Can thing? I make this really simple for you to understand? You yeah. all wouldn't be here and know of me if I wasn't a goat among sheep. Do you get what I mean when I say that? Yeah, do you do you understand that? I understand that, but still I'm just You asking are a sheep. Understand the role and position. Mm. You are a sheep. You masquerade as a sheep for Christ, but you are not Christ like. I am a goat okay. because I understand I am a sheep under God. That is my shepherd. In this world, I am a goat because I will go my own way. I'll climb to the highest parts of the mountain and I'll consume anything and shit it back out into something natural. Do you get it? I get it. Bingo. It's symbolism. I get it. I get it. Bingo. And I got some horns, unlike you fluffy sheep who just walk around, go along to get along, hear the crack of the whip and the dog barking behind you and go with the rest of the herd. 
It's pretty fucking simple. If you would just stop projecting your dogma, no, help, help him out. your Give Christian him cult of dogma onto everything that the Masons gave you to do it like that. Give him, give him some manner. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, the, the, the whole, let me just go back to the God thing. I, I'll get the little Masonic quote unquote secret. You know what I'm saying? I keep on saying a lot of stuff is acronyms. It's not God as in God, the word it's an acronym. Gomo Oz Debar, uh, which is, which simply means wisdom, strength, beauty, which lets you know that uh, God is a man. Now, that's what you're going to learn as a master mason. Now, when they get you all the way to this 33rd degree level, the biggest secret that these people learn, here comes our racism, with even within the lodge. The biggest secret that they learn when they get over there is that the black man was God. He's the original man. So why, if that's the biggest secret... On the 33rd degree level, that original man was black man. I don't even think that's some, I don't even look at that as like a fucking secret, even to the biggest racist or whatever the fuck ever. You know, but that's a big, that's the biggest secret in the Masonic world. That's what the 33rd degree Mason holds as his secret, that he knows that once he became a Shriner, that he had to put away his uh, Christianity beliefs. He had to piss on the fucking flag and turn and, and, and go and take his information. And he and he's not a Muslim. He's known as a Muslim. So he crossed over to he crossed over to is he crossed over to Islam only to understand that when he got when he got that Islam knowledge, they like, damn, well, why do I have to do why do I have to disown uh, Christ? And, and and take and take up on a law. Only only why they had to do that when they if they're fortunate enough to get to the thirty third because the black man is the original man. This is the secret. I just told y'all everything. You only got to pay all your money to go. You don't got to go through all the torment. This is what you're gonna learn at the end of the tunnel. That's okay. bullshit, man. Where where do you? I'm just where, telling like, you what's in the information. Bullshit. Okay. You might want to make saying, it. You won't learn anything different on the inside. Yeah, but. Uh, that's the thing, right? Like it's all, it's set up entirely to be a trap to where you have to go and, and learn all this, all this stuff. And then you're going to be told something at the end that you can't validate by yourself without Tarek. Can you fucking mute? I am. I am. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh. you know, it, Bobo it, Boomer. you can't, you can't validate, you can't validate that to be true or not without you, some other man telling you that that's true. So no. I, I mean, I can definitely validate that. Is and it's not. It's not. It's yeah. not. It's, it's it's not a racism thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that because I'm fucking black. I could have came out fucking Asian. It's just like right. I got to bear with. I have to bear witness to chronological order. I, I bear witness to that the Most High does stuff with structure and order. I understand that, like even on this planet called Earth, God didn't drop down uh, fifty different races at one fucking time. It's just not. That's not how it happened. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that God didn't drop an Asian, a Mexican. Uh, right. The uh, reality uh, of it is race is a false construct. Ethnicity exactly. and color is not race. Doing? We're all humans. And when you put humans in different environments, they adapt. And that looks like skin color changes, eye changes, and all the rest of it. You know, so it's not a racism thing to say that. And I even get on black people. Stop. Because I'm the first person to tell you. Uh, I'll tell my black conscious community i don't give a damn how smart they think there is black leader whatever like bro listen to me you're not no damn black god or you're not no damn black god it's just because you got black skin you can miss me with the bullshit I'm let's not also be clear sir that a lot of it would seem to me i don't have the first-hand knowledge but i'm pretty intuitive and i've done a fair bit of study and where there's smoke there's usually fire a lot of these fraternal orders and Masonic lodges are probably contracted by some higher entity. Yes. We can even are. take that up the chain. They so are. when they want to go to you and say, well, you just now completed, you're at the highest level. Here's the big secret. Uh, pst, black man's God. Is it possible there's some evil white person behind that who wants to politicize your skin color and think you just got revealed to some ancient secret to throw your ego in a twist so they can use you indirectly yeah, for some other cause. That. Hell yeah. I believe that. And the reason why I say you speaking facts right now is because when they do, when they do that, the, ver the very next things that could come out their mouth is they're going to say, well, they're going to say, what do you desire more of? And, yeah. and, they're, and the next thing could be, and you're going to say light. Because in this esoteric world, you never crave. You always desire more light. So when you thought you got to the end and they gave you the big grand secret, like you just said, guess what they're going to say? What do you desire more of? You're going to say light. 
And you, you thought you was at the end of the tunnel. You're like, well, we got another organization over here for you. Right, because <laughs> all this is is pimping and hoeing. The whole world is the whole world is pimping and hoeing. They just don't know it. And Mason, Mason, masonry is the no Masons different. Are at the bottom, they recognize a bunch of hoes who got a desire for wanderlust in them. We want more light. Great. That's all we need is desire to pimp on you. If we got a desire from a man, we can direct that and pimp on it. And, and, and it and never ends. It's never going to end you actually getting the fucking knowledge that they claim you're going to have. It's about yeah. you being used the whole way, one way or the other. Well, now, hold up. You, you are, you're right. I, and I'm not going I'm not here to disagree because you, 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 you're spot on with what you're saying. But the thing is, you do get a choice to go your own way. It's about getting you up the ladder. Of course you do. Good pimping, you, a good pimping, you don't beat on a woman. You don't give her drugs. You don't manipulate her. You tell her, get with this pimping or get lost. You can always leave. Oh, I like how you talk because you, you you talking right on my alley. You show right. That's that's exactly what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you. Like you know how they say like uh you could you know the whole could run astray and be a renegade. You know what I'm saying we ain't gonna do we we want a bitch to do the shit by we want the shit to do the shit by choice, not by force. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like so uh in that in that aspect, once you do get up to a certain level, you're asked to walk on your own because you can't even go on certain doors. But that's the point, bro. That's this the point of Luciferian yeah. deception. The best hoes are the ones who do it by choice, not by force. Most deal. Most deal. Most deal. But what do you know, think Donnie Trump is? What do you think Joey Biden is? They're all pimped on. They all got a desire. They're all being used from above. But that's spiritually or physically well, an up, organization. Hold up, but let's put let's put that word used in the right terms because I, I will have to testify like if you're on this earth and you're and I can't use you, you are not useful. No, I understand simple. that. The question it's is, just, who or what are you being so used we, we by? Are, I claim God uses people, so does the devil, and it's a slippery slope. You can't always tell who's who and what's what. That's the facts. that's the fucking subtlety and the nuance of ego and pride and desire versus consciousness and awareness and yielding. No, you 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 own you own this man. I love this type of talk. You own to something, and I think that's what your boy Paul is trying to sell you with his whole. To me, his message is all color or side. So when y'all get on, even when the white people might have a ha, can come with some good stuff about like, hey, man, the blacks are being racist. Or even when the blacks can come with some good shit about, hey, man, the whites are being racist. You got people like me and Paul sitting here like, hey, both of y'all motherfuckers fucked up. What are we talking about? Yeah, but you might have just said the most ultimate racist thing of all time by saying that the blacks are God and, and white and all the other races aren't. I didn't say. No, you heard me wrong. I said, no, you heard me. I said. My exact words was, I would tell another black person just because you are black does not make you a god or a goddess, is what I said. Okay, so you're saying that uh, all man and woman born of woman uh, it is has that direct connection to God and therefore is yes, a yes. godhead? It, yes, regardless of where you're at on the totem pole, regardless if you're nine, either six, either, regardless if you came first or you came fucking the hundred, we all came from the same divine source. Okay, I can I can dig that. Okay, I thought but I thought you were saying this is why I else. claim that this is pimping all the way down the line, whether folks know it or not, because these hip hop culture sites who all have a desire to have business and make money are all beholden to the fraternal orders and the corporate system. But what's different? It, what's, it, but it, what's different than the, what's different than those in in pop? What's different than those in gothic? They have the same shit. So don't point out hip hop when it's the same across the board, bro. No, no, no. I'm not saying specifically. I'm oh, just saying oh, okay. I'm, I'm saying that because. I want to, if I'm able to, or if I'm called to by a higher order, influence you to do what potentially you're meant to do. You know, who am I? But, you know, I am that am, I guess, just like you. So, again, I'm not, I don't need to be a source of change for you. But if that's what I'm called to do, in a sense, because I believe but you do, have way on, more value. Hold on, let question, because you said something. I'm just, just saying I recognize your light and value, bro, is all I'm really saying. Yeah. And I just want to make sure you're holding that and using that to whatever the highest good is. Most deaf, most deaf. I told you like 30 minutes ago, it gets tricky because I'm on a mission. You know, if you understand military, you understand. Um, I'm one of those people. I'm a mole, bro. I can say that over here because it, this is not going to get back to all the other places where it will get back to. But like, yeah, I'm I'm set to do. I'm I'm set to do to what, what you're saying. Like, hey, I want to invade the, uh, the the the. I want to uh, get inside and be a mole inside the lodge. I want to get in, you know, in this organization. Here. Well, you're talking to one of those people, sir, that do it in real life. I get real orders from real people. I'm doing my job. So it does. I, I tried to explain it. It gets blurry because I have to camouflage in with those who maybe should be my adversary 
Right. And these are these are you're basically an example of folks I've talked about here before when they say, why does Paulie boy seem to get treated differently? Because you don't understand that folks like this are everywhere because we're all oneself and they may call themselves Masons and court whoever and whatever when they hear you and see you and then they know that you have the knowledge and you're not doing what's claimed to be done with all the remixes. They put you to the side is what I believe. I can't prove it. No, so they do. you essentially see, get protected by the same people who would have undone you, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. No, it does make sense. We're saying the same thing because, like, uh, if I want to reach the gangster, let's just say if I'm one of these black civil dudes who want to be like Martin Luther King or whatever the fuck. So only for me to get to my people in this generation, like for me to talk to the crypt dude, for me to talk to the blood dude or uh, the gangster disciple or the dope dealer, whatever. I can't come to them talking how we talking today. Guess how I got to come? I got to have my J's on. I got to know about, you know, saying what uh, Lil Durk and then was talking about in that rap song. I got to be able to enter into the con- into the conversation. I got to, like, a mo. I can't be like, I'm here to switch you up, to put you on the right guy. Because if you, I'm going to tell you about black people. You have to teach them a different way. I can't come to them and say, hey, I'm the teacher. This is what I'm here, here to do. I actually kind of got to trick them. I got to be like. I listen to what you listen to. I eat what you eat. I talk how you talk. I feel, and I get them comfortable so they accept what I have to give. I can't do that coming out here being a goody goody and the world is fucked up. You well, can't. it's just what I tell these truther folks. Don't expect to be an influence or an influencer or create a change if you're poor and broke and hateful and bitter and angry and resentful. And you got no fucking movement going and you got no numbers and all the rest of it. There's a fine line here between walking a godly walk and then doing what we do in the world. <coughs> not understanding that there is a crossover. There is an overlay. You still got to live and work in the world, even if you're not of it. Well, when, so when, you when, when my te- when, when the thing is, when I get a bad report from my teacher, just like when we go to school, you know what I'm saying? You get your report card. When my teacher gives me a progress report and say, hey, you need to pick this up or, hey, you're failing in this area. That's when I'll make the judgment. I, I can't let the people sway me with emotions and even how I might feel on the inside. I got to complete the assignment, bro. Even sometimes I don't get it because I'll get confused. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like I'm really am out here doing all this what you might say devil shit or satanic shit because I'm over here with these rappers. I'm over here doing it. I'm, I'm, I have to question, I have to question myself. So I'm like, am I putting on the right image? But I have to remember that's not why I'm here. I'm supposed to get the light. I'm supposed to be clout so I can draw my people near me. So then I can talk to them like this, because what you see on the internet and the conversations I have in real life with these people, when I'm in front of them, when I'm on the phone with them, that's why I'm respected. That's why I can do what I do in my city. That's why I can get these celebrities attention because when they speak on soul player, they're going to say, now that man is knowledgeable. That person, that's a good dude. He's married. He takes care of his kids. You know, he goes about things the right way. They call me for counsel. Now, what we do on the yeah, internet, that's a fine like, line to walk, man. Because and I get it. It's what it starts to become when you do this, whatever this is. It starts to become. You almost have to have knowledge of the false light and use it to draw people yeah. in who are in and of the world, so you can then show them the true light if they're willing to look. If they're willing to look, and it, and that's one thing I'm here in, like through my walk here in this entertainment industry. You know, it it is more of the I'm just going to for the sake of words, say devils, you know, what I'm saying because that's what it's controlled by. So, of course, if you if, if you're over here with the devil. You cut now for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, you, you cut out. man. Snafu cycling in the chat with all his alt accounts. He's he's a, he's ready to judge and condemn as always. We're not going to long game it. We're not going to like give the benefit of the doubt. We're not going to like listen to the words and try to understand the beingness. Uh, you already got it. The warthog's got him. He's got him convicted, indicted. He's, it's like, I can't go anywhere and do any. It's like Snafu's my grandmother at this point. I can't go anywhere and do anything and talk to anyone without being judged and labeled and characterized. And, and her, you know, Snafu, my grandmother, running up and like swatting whoever i'm with going you're pedo pogo you're evil get out of my house you're not gonna play with my grandson like could you give it a fucking rest bro you're not god you don't get to judge and convict and indict constantly you want to use your judgment or discernment to make a point and and create conversation and content then do it if you can't get that done here then just stay the fuck away from me man i really don't need it 
Doesn't fucking help me. Thank you for trying to save me and everyone else here like Tariq and all the other geniuses. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm egotistical and narcissistic, or at least I trust my discernment and intuition a little bit more than yours and Tariq. Maybe that's my hubris. We'll find out. Okay? I don't need it. I didn't ask for it. It's a fucking impediment. And yet you guys keep doing it. He's a pedo pogo, young Polly. Stay away from that man. <laughs> what? Is that grandma snaps? Stay away rainwater. from that Rainwater? No, man. this ain't no rainwater, bro. Come on now. We're going to do this? Give me the give me the peace sign, man. Oh, uh, we got, we got, oh, he's giving me another kind of sign. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I, finally, I finally feel like I'm with my people now. You hear me? Man, okay, Snafu's really going to go off on me because this guy, Rainwater, from what I understand, is connected to WAC 100, uh, Charleston White, a whole bunch of other folks. I'm really going to get it now, and it's happening because not, I put not, the intention out a year and a half ago. This is this my African-American friend. Oh, man, you're really going to get me in trouble now. I'm going to get you in trouble. You're bringing, us deep, you're bringing us deep into the fold, bro. No, we're here to talk to y'all. This is one of my constituents. Nigga, now nigga. we don't have to now we don't have to sacrifice anybody, do we? Like like mama, <laughs> grandma. No. no. All right. And he's not a Mason, he's not on the square of nothing. He's in the entertainment world. He's a big promoter and big manager. I'm aware of who he is. I'm okay. aware of who he is. I I keep a, a general awareness and ear to the ground to, you know, certain things, just at least be aware somewhat for what I do here. Go ahead, gentlemen. Well, we, he, he, I, I told him, he called me while I was talking uh, due to the monologue. He called me, and I told him where I was at, so he pulled up. He's trying to see what we're talking about. And I just told him, I said, hey, man, we're kind of having a black-white conversation, and yeah, we're kind of bridging the gap. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm like I'm like Charles White. I'm on y'all side. I, side. I just called the police on four black kids riding in my neighborhood. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> nah, Here we go. <laughs> listen. Only black people call home in my life. I got shot by a black person. I got robbed by a black person. My first piece of pussy burned me by a black woman. And I got I, I got sent to jail by a black person. So yeah, at the end of the day, I hate them. I ain't gonna lie to you. Fuck them. I hate them. <laughs> Listen, my neighborhood is not a it's not a nigga in sight. Thoughts? Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> what you got for me, Paul? That's, that's, <laughs> why, I feel, that's why I feel like I'm, I'm speechless, I'm right? <laughs> I'm at home, man. I feel like I'm at home, y'all. Welcome, welcome. I've been looking for y'all all, all year. See, right? Tell him, what so my boy, what, what my boy that him? came attacking me the whole time? Like he, he came where he wanted y'all. Nah, fuck them, fuck so playing them, so playing them by the stinky weed. And, and then I, and I, I, <laughs> you smoking Reggie? <laughs> Some players smoking Reggie? Nah, fuck the, fuck the season. He's smoking the bullshit that comes across the border from the Mexicans. Fuck him. Hell no, nah, I got that good shit. <laughs> I got that good shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm smoking that good shit. I left that mess. So what's going on, Rainwater, man? Tell tell these folks about the industry. You like it like you gotta fuck Diddy. Well, how do we how how does Snaffy Snaps get in the industry but stay out of trouble? Yeah, I've been I've been to a Diddy party. Okay. But you'll be surprised though. What uh, happened to Diddy party? Surprised about what? Listen, you'll be surprised. At the Diddy party, um, the only people that got the drugs are white people. It's it's completely opposite what y'all think. I could see that. Like that's the only people that got the drugs are white people. So but, I'm guessing that the black folks show up with the dick and the white folks show up with the drugs. That's how that comes together. But it's more freaky white boys than anything. <laughs> and the girls, like it's just a high class party where everybody can be themselves. Okay, mm. so it's like it's radical freedom, like yeah. like love is love, like Jack Talcott says. You, you, you Nothing women, off limits. You have women walking around saying "woo, woo," loud and shit, and all kind of shit. It's, it's crazy, but white you know, women even. Yeah, white women. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, of course. Hey, Rainwater, did you fucking go? <laughs> Here he did goes. Snap who snaps? He's. Is that why you're raining water out of your penis, probably from STDs uh, from here? Pogo, privately owned, government operated, infiltrated media, media relations we're witnessing right now. You fucking Pogo fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About your elitism. No, you yeah, you no, you correct. You 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 correct. That's that's exactly where I come from. You correct. <laughs> He's not denying it. 
And yeah, I know you can Fafu, go, you were right, man. Go My go channel go has go become go a pogo go. hornet's nest. Yeah, you're correct. We're you, wrong. you are a pogo hornet nest, and they're they, they're, they're, they're <laughs> going to fuck you in the ass like the goat here now. Wait, you you're saying? Know? Hold on, you're saying so player and rainwater want to fuck me in the? Well, I'm honored, gentlemen. I mean, nah, I didn't nah. know what anyone cared. Nah, I've yeah, never nah. been the. I've never been the star of the show. Don't lie, you want to fuck him in the ass, Raymond, and do some satanic, pogo ritualistic. You want to Epstein O'Shea? We know what you want to do. No, no, that seemed like it hurt. It seemed like it hurt. I don't want a part of it. I want a part of it. It seemed like it hurt. Lit, nah, I want a part of it. But what I can't. Your pogos, your pogos that you fuck to get in the business. Yeah, everybody don't fuck. You suck. Yeah, everybody don't fuck. But it's, it's listen, I'm not gonna yeah, lie to we you. Know you. Listen, we know it's you. more it's more Caucasian guys is gay in the industry. Mm. That's facts. You gotta select few of white of black guys because then it, it it makes it outrageous. Oh, it's entertaining. Whoa. But it's 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 more uh, gay Caucasians. Except when you're the black guy sucking their dick and getting it up the ass. Yeah, my butt ain't that. My butt ain't that big. <laughs> <laughs> it still hurt. It, it still hurt when I take a shit sometimes. So then I, I can't do it. I can't do it. All right. Well, well, why don't you put a pogo? Get, get a pogo on the phone. Play since homeboy did phone. You got the phone. Call a pogo up. Get their asses uh, on the counter uh, right now. Let's see you I'm do get, something. No, I'm let's see it. you do something good then. Get okay, pogo, the biggest pogo you fucking know in your phone. Listen, and deck. Get his bitch listen. ass up there on the panel so we can really see media relations at play right, listen, right now. Listen, 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 I know do what the fuck this is. Uh, what's right, going listen, on? Here. Listen, I'm I tried to warn him Paul about uh, Laguna's questioning. I told him what the fuck's happening. It's a it pogo hornet nest here. You are not wrong. Pogo hornet nest. Pop, I told you last night, Paul. This one's gonna do, Paul. You like cupcakes? I like cupcakes. Do your pogos like cupcakes? Are you hey, are you a pedo pogo? All right, Snafu, take a breath, man. Uh, pal, listen, pal. I'm gonna give up the biggest pogo of a mile. Get your phone ready. Two one four nine four four zero 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 nine. Kyle Tossing White right now. All mm. right, well there you go. I put the intention out there, man. What was it about a year or two ago? I said somehow, some way, I got the intent, uh, the intuition that I and Charleston White will have a conversation at some point. Call and him right now. Call Who, him on the air? Yeah, call him. 214-944-0009. All right. Well, we could do that right now. Let's call, call him. him. Do you folks want to do that right now? Snaffy Snaps and others? Well, of course. This is what I told him to do. I, I wanted done. to put him to the test and show you guys the media relations. Well, of course they're going to get the big boy to come up. And this is your chance, Paul. Pogo Horn I helped you with your Pogo Hornet nest. And it's not Mike Jones's number? That's, that's no. Who's that's that it. again? That's my two, two, zero, three. Zero, zero. No, he's being real with you. Oh, okay. Because these Pogos want this media relation. That's why we he need, threw it out so fast. Yeah, we need we it. Know, we, need we know it. what time it is, what, how you guys are working. But we all right, so, all right, right, so what's the number now? What's the number? Two one four nine four four zero 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 nine. Two one four nine four four. Say again. Zero 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 nine. All right. Let's see. Ask him if he likes cupcakes for me. Message for two one four nine. Mm. Voicemail. Try it again. And you might, you might owe Brian for this because Brian got so play over here and so play about rainwater. Please leave your message for two one four nine. Yeah, voicemail. Yeah, we'll set it up, know. man. We'll set it up because you know what? I don't know if it's all staged or whatever, but I'm kind of tired of like seeing Charleston White and other folks running around with Aiden Ross and all the rest of these clowns. And I figure if we need a fucking white man in the mix and some content and conversation and the rest of it, uh, we can definitely uh, do that better. And if we're going to play games too, as long as they're not those other kind of games, you know, I don't want to get into it, but 
uh, you know, we're going to run around the mall and play games. You know, who better than the white gorilla? Let's get to it. Let's see what this this life has to offer. Hey, shut up, okay? I'm tired of you. Paul, you got to get ready for goat fucking and fruit fucking, bro. This is yeah, I know, I know. For anyone to be successful in this life or create content, they got to be Illuminati. They got to fuck each yeah, other. They got to fuck the goat. I get it. I get it, bro. So, I got it. You know. It is yeah, it you're is. just looking out for me. I got it. Yeah, you're it's, you're it's, my you're you're the Tony Ayo to my Fifty Cent. You're just looking out for me. Right. When I need you to do the hit, I'll let you know. Okay. When I need somebody hit, I'll let you know. Until then, just keep quiet. I got it. You got it, dude. You got this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, they gonna be on your ass now, Paul, because you didn't, you didn't, you got two other nigga niggas up here, like. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, unless, unless cool someone's gonna hold me down and fuck me, I'm pretty big. I mean, back. we got your back. <laughs> <laughs> we got, you got your back. back. Snap, food snaps. I know it's hard for you to believe, but remember, snap, food snaps. Uh, the retarded man speaking. Remember when I told you two years ago that I believe something bigger is going on here. Either God or the devil, maybe both, is using me. You know, like Talcott says, we're going to see where it goes. It's a long game here. They Remember I said Mr. Throat. Long Game? Spread it open. Get All right. Could you please, could you please with the constant gay fantasies and fixations? They know it's true. You're, you're, you just are the one who's not understanding what, what you're about to go through. All right. So that's going to be your fi finale here. This is what it's all leading up to. The finale is will Pauly get fucked or not? Right? Are they gonna fuck him or not? Are you gonna sell you know? out? All right, God, we got that. Fuck and um, worship go goats. Is it possible you, you want to get for, fucked by Rainwater and and the rest of these guys, and you're projecting that on? It sounds like he. It sounds like he can't. We. I don't think me. Me and Rain not into that type of shit. But dude, I know. <laughs> no, I'm saying like he want that. It's not like you campaign. You so you keep bringing it up, bro. I fuck that fruit. Damn, I remember. Bro, tonight. you want, you really want to? Dude, do you're it. bringing this to a place where we're you're gonna like force us to fuck you. Not even on some gay shit because no one uh -huh. else is saying that. What's no one on? else is. No, that's the rainwater. I'm saying, bro, like none of us are doing that. We don't want that. But he keeps yelling it out. He's like, "Someone fuck me!" Like you're gonna force not us maybe to do it, but we're gonna no, have to go get. No, the yeah, someone from the hood, hood. Rainwater. You don't know someone you, from the hood that can fuck this guy to stop him from yelling <laughs> that we're doing that. Uh, I don't know. No, the fuck we not for the. Gotta know him. someone, bro. If you've been to that no. P Diddy party, no, that other no, guy who does the deodorant commercial, what's his name? The cruise guy. You gotta know. He's gotta know someone. If he's not in, someone's gotta know someone that can fuck this kid and stop him from yelling it and projecting it onto the rest of us. I got a big old fat stud that can. You want? You ever got fucked by a stud? Bro, you been at Diddy party? You be fucking <laughs> Birkin fruit. You be fucking. Terry Crew. You know, I think he. he I think he, he had some technical dead. difficulties there. He no, cut he out. Knows he knows I was about to fuck. All right, man, we're setting it up. You're gonna get fucked. You've been yelling it for so long and projecting it onto me and everyone else who's way more successful than you. And by that, I mean just maybe has a gift uh, card, or like five dollars in their account. So yeah, you're, it's gonna happen now. You're finally gonna get what you've been yelling about. You do the guru thing. And it's like cool not on the cool though, bro. It's like you want that part no, to be so it true. It is like some weird fantasy or something. It's crazy. No, no, like, you, you're you're a fucking denier of God and worship the de goats like the fake that of fucking New World Order motherfucker. <laughs> you're gonna get fucked by that that by rain big black stud cousin. He's gonna fuck you to this song. This ragtime oh hit. Now, I got I got somebody for him, Paul. I got this dude named Tony Wilbridge. He's the gay. I'm crit. sure you got a bunch of gay fuckable. No, he's the, he, no. You. you can look him look you him up. Go type. You got somebody. Hey, Paul. Paul, type this you into your YouTube you right now. Him. Type in Tony <laughs> Wilbridge. Type what in Tony Wilbridge, the gay. They want to We got like him for you. We got daddy. him. All right. They want to rape me like a goat and do satanic. Bro, you asking for it? You're on it. Bro, you, gonna rape you, you, know, you can't you can't hold a conversation without talking I about can't, oh I can't hold one. Okay. I mean you haven't. But I guess we didn't I talk can't. about I guess that, I that part of the conversation never comes up until you bring it. Mm-hmm. Go fuck <laughs> Even it. how you just said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see I how you said that. Yeah. Get <laughs> on <it> over, <laughs> <gay crap. laughs> you no. see how you said that, bro? You Come got some shit going on over there. We need you. You want Tony Wilrich, the gay crip, in your creases.
Yeah, in your dark recess. <laughs> no, I'd rather. And this is him out. right here. I got him pulled up right here. I don't know why they're showing some woman next yeah. to him and some other guy. Oh, he's trolling. Because you know when he still has a penis, he can still get in some coochie too. But like he this prefers is, men. Oh, this is him oh. in the middle. That uh, I don't think that's the man on the left. I think it's that's what was that? uh, Krishanda and someone else. Uh, 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 blue. That's blue face. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> I see these folks on Facebook yeah. from time to time. They throw ads up. They say, hey, you want a song with Krishanda and blue, B blue face? Yeah. We'll do it for 10,000. Yeah, that guy in the middle is the guy. No, shut up, man. That guy in the middle is the guy who's going to fuck you to that ragtime hit. That's the gay trip. Okay, <laughs> so you got what you need now. Stick you fucking you yelling this shit. Ass dick in. Yeah, bro. Well, You're getting what you want now. You're getting everything you came for. Logo pedo ass dick fucking Illuminati confirmed for them so they could worship Satan and goats and their dick will be fucking handled. Are they gonna still let me into Illuminati and let me be on the tour bus if I bring snafu snaps? Like if he does this, am I still gonna be allowed? Well yeah, yeah because that, that's, that, that's, that's who that's what you use as a sacrifice. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yes, yeah, Snafu, do you want to, like, join me on the tour bus? It's going to be great. See? You, you want you, some the services room, that you don't, you're like, I got a friend. you like, my my friend's going to, he, he's going to do, he's going to do what I want. I got yeah, friends, you want some purple drink, Snafu? I'll you get you an outfit like Hey, Playboy, you want to, you want to go shopping and drink some lean? Are we talking, we're not being racist here, are we talking Kool-Aid? He wants some of that. He wants some. He the wants some of that pussy. <laughs> oh man! The purple Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Is that racist? Don't tell me that's not racist. <laughs> Brian, come on, help me here. You're the racist. I meant non-racist. Listen, no one's gonna be there to help you when you. Brian's get already. By. Brian's already proved he himself. Brian, don't, don't, don't try to throw this on. Don't try to throw this on Brian. Brian already proved He's himself. He's about to speak up. <laughs> Now Brian and already proved himself. He 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 good. He good. Okay. You you the Brian, Brian ain't came over here said he ain't said none he ain't said none of the homophobic things like you. Well, it's true. You fuck fruits and goats and not you, but you boys and maybe you. You know, maybe you I, I, I think I, I think I'm. Don't you rap too? No, I think you really impressed with Brian because Brian, it, it, Brian, Brian, trying to come take your rap career. I think you really. Brian O'Shea, with you realized what's happening here, right? That like I set an intention, you somehow came into my life, and literally somehow through a mysterious, godly, devilish way, brought in the rainwater guy who was working with Charleston White. You know it's funny, Brian is jealous. And, and right we're now. gonna send Brian. We're gonna send. Brian I'm gonna send Ray Water Brian, Brian right shit. now. You getting all that attention, not him. Yeah, we we go. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna go get Brian shit and send it to Rainwater. And yeah, but I gotta get. I I because I, I know the, the energy thing. We can do. We can so I, so I gotta work. I gotta work on that. I'm gonna make some new shit. You yeah, I mean, listen, role. everybody can eat, man, at the end of the day. That's the reality of this shit, is if everybody stays out of their pride and ego, everybody just does what they do, you know, we bring it together at times, or we do what we do on our own, right? But everybody can eat, and I think we're better off together than we are uh, apart, right? Unless people are going to compete and play all the games, in which case, then, game on, you know? I'm down with the competition, too. I'm down with competing, I'm down with collaborating, right? You like it, I love it, we can get it any which way. Um, only way we're gonna let you, only way we're gonna let you in, bro. Paul got to be your manager. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I just gotta. I know I gotta bring the energy, though. I don't, like, I, I wouldn't even want you to send him the stuff I currently have. I because I, I agree with you, man. I I noticed that that I don't. Something's got to change. I need a different. Energy. I know. You want me to tell you what it is? If on the because you said you want some feedback. You know. You want to know what it is? I know what it is. If you get fucked by that gay crip. <laughs> Tony Wilrich, that'll fucking boost your street credit like crazy, bro. You know how much street credit you can get getting fucked by a gay crip? That'll send you like to the next stratosphere with marketing promotions. <laughs> Am I off anywhere on this, Nat Turner? Just tell me if I'm, because you said I'm going to be his manager. If I'm off anywhere on this, just get me right. Yeah. Now, now, uh, with the other, we're going to take care of Brian, so I'm going to give him the, the, the good feedback. Brian, what what it is with you? See, you, what you want to do with the rap is it's like you truly want to do it, but 
you haven't been accepted by maybe your family, friends, peers. So it it's coming off on the stage. So I'm saying, forget the naysayers. Fuck everyone who tells you not. If you want to do this, when you touch that mic and you get that stage, we remember this song. You just got to lose yourself, bro. You can't worry about people. You it, it, you got to just go be you. Don't worry about they're going to, oh, he's trying to be the black guy and trying to rap or he's old. Go be you. You got to be you. That's what they can't. Can no one, can no black guy, can no white guy, can no promoter, can no manager take, Bron take away Brian from being Brian. So go be you on the stage. Be you in the booth when you record your songs. And therefore, it's going to come off a lot more natural. So therefore, you can lose your wits. You don't have to worry about the, 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 the uh the little tension that's building up in you that people are watching you and judging you you got to lose you got to lose that you got to lose it and we all have it from the best of them from the drakes to the little waynes they all get that same little shit before they hit the stage but you gotta kill it when stephen curry goes down and he shoots that three and he misses it and he know he shot a fucking 32 footer he's gonna go down and still take a 35 footer next time with the same with more confidence so you got to be, it's all, it's all in the confidence. I see it in the eyes. It's in your body language. Just lose yourself, have fun, fuck the naysayers and be you. You remember the, what, and, and the example I can give you that, and I'm going to, and I, and this is my little racist thing. Um, think weird out Yankovic. Think what he might've went through. This is our era. Think of how he came out. But think how witty he was. Think how charismatic he was. That he even with how goofy and how much the black crowd might have laughed at it. Look at how he took over the masses, and he and he and he just by being himself. He, I'm gonna be goofy white boy. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. I'm gonna play out all these different things in my head, and that I and I'm gonna put that shit in visual, and I'm just gonna be fucking me. Right, yeah, man. So funny you said that, dude. Because I was exactly thinking that when I was gonna, because it's gonna translate to comedy and everything. And and like, dude, it's it's like beyond even the music and the comedy. It's like I, if I ever get dragged into court, this is the type of attitude I want, bro. Like, like, like just as life lessons. Like, it, I think it helps if you're not like, oh, I need to make it in music. I need to make it in comedy. No, this is like an exercise for my personality and like my spiritual growth or faith, like in myself, like a faith thing, like Paul talks about, like. And just truly being that radical authenticity that we talk about, you know what I mean? So, and like, don't be scared to touch these subjects. The, the the best rappers that we like in our community is the ones that can tell the stories. We like Pac because he touched the community. He know how to touch our mother to the kids to the grandmas. You know why? Because he's talking our life. You can't be scared to talk your life. You know what you was dealing with when you were ten. What you was going through when you was twenty one. You know, what I'm saying how your wife made you feel, how your partner, how your friend made you feel, how society make put you through this right here tell your story no one has brian's story but brian yeah brian o'shea there's no denying it bro i don't know if you can feel the synchronicity in the room once again but the energy is undeniable here bro like me in the back corner doing what i do off the first channel like we don't get algorithmic play here this is all word of mouth and this comes down to then energy if it's not word of mouth it's energy with the creation beyond this metaverse so I don't believe in coincidences, bro. You I don't know? either. And you remember, remember what you put in the universe? Even though if you went about it wrong, you came to get my attention. Even though you came with the other shit, this what you wanted. You got it. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy how the shit works, bro. Because we, we I, like I said, I put it out two years ago. I said, we're going to do proper instruction motivates people. It's going to be a tongue in cheek idea of you know interpersonal social psychological dynamics spiritual element faith and carried over to the cultural idea of quote-unquote black culture that will lead to at some point an interaction with charleston white and other folks in that venue and to see it manifest right it's almost shocking to me even though i talk this shit and i live this information to watch this thing work over and over again is beyond miraculous it's it's just it's jaw dropping and fascinating how small the world is and how this thing works Snafu well, snaps. You what, um, you're gonna you're gonna happening. make yourself snafu snaps. You're in the back flashing and you're interfering with my journey and my experience. And I don't appreciate it, bro. Well, right? It's educate, just it's disrespectful. It's let disrespectful. Me educate, let me educate you. Remember, I told you, regardless if you're a part of it or if you're not a part of it. Only thing you're saying because we're saying I am. But once again, I'm telling you, in that other word, everything is an acronym. So when you see I am, even you see those commercials on TV, I am 
this, this, this. I am to the, that's from a group of people organization called I am, and I'm a part of that. Uh, and you don't, and what I'm telling you, a lot of times it's just energy. So when you're saying I am, regardless if you're saying I'm the highest God or the lowest God, I'm the biggest devil or the lowest devil, guess what? I am an ascended master. I work on the level. I work on the plane. That's why what you're saying now and why it's happening now, because those that dwell on the plane, we are going to meet on the level. Uh, meeting on the level is something that you learn as a fellowship, as, 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 a, as a fellow craft, as a fellow craft mason on the seventh degree. Every fellow craft mason has to meet on the level. You see what I'm saying? Those are the things that you start to learn on the on this journey. Now, when you get on the other side, we we say when you get on because that's all physical. This is when you're this is when you're dealing with the uh, the square. Now, when you get into the spiritual, you're dealing with the circle. You start and now with that symbol I got there, you start to learn the things like you know to walk uh, uh, to walk uh, on a long journey on a short path. You learn how to give without arms. You know what I'm saying? You learn how to walk with no feet. You know what I'm saying? These is got these are godly attributes you have to take on. These is uh when you begin to take on these type of attribute attributes, then and only then can you call yourself a true God or a true devil. I don't care because the power is the same. It's just how you use it. So I think this is supposed to happen like this. To, uh, Paul, what you're saying, uh, like I said, it has nothing to do if you can wear the badge or if you're part of the organization or not. Those who dwell on the level dwell on the level. It's not about the uh, if you have the the uh, the insignia to show it. Is as they say in the Masonic world, is whether if is is it in your heart? If it's in your heart, it's in right, your heart. It's the difference between you could be the best lawyer and not be a lawyer. Just because you don't have a degree doesn't mean you don't understand law, practice it, and can uphold it. Most definitely. So it's about the understanding and how it's applied and the results and then the judgment of that from God, right? Me and so, you preach the same message, and it's funny. I'm learning because what, what made me slow down because me and you preach the same message. And what God is showing me or the most high or whatever name they want to put on it is that, like, uh, there's a... A white version of you. You see what I'm saying? So, like, how bad can it be? So we're basically Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Vader, there you go. We're gonna. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and we're and, and we're and we both was taught by Yoda. You see what I'm saying? We're both were taught by Yoda, the green one. You know, what I'm saying the amber one, who has the pure light. You see what I'm saying? Not the red light, not the green light, not the yellow light, the you know what I'm saying, the pure ambient light, the illustrious green. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we and that and that's what we're all striving to when we think about this humble abode of the most high God. We're trying, we're searching for that green, that green light, that balance of it uh a solar system or well that's you know, nature right that's we're, we're, we're we going go. back to our true nature the corruption there of that is. of course is the green money that everybody's chasing there it is look look at the look at look at the trees the grass that creates the oxygen come on man it's the green it's like everything is symbolism yeah I and mean, I'm, a, I'm a 70s baby so hell yeah i go to back to star trek uh goddamn uh star wars you know back to the future you know what i'm saying i can even go you know what i'm saying uh uh day off with ferris bueller this is like classic shit to me you know what i'm saying uh 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 my what, what was sean penn's first movie uh fast times at ridgemont high we all grew up on this shit right yeah uh, am yep. I, or am i just that oh i'm or am i just a, a black white boy <laughs> no no i'm right here with you <laughs> you know, I grew up listening to Motley Crue. I'm a Duran Duran fan. You know, you know, I fucked with Judas Priest. You know, what, what do we? I fucked with Kiss. What? Do, what do we? What? Do yeah, we it's do? an inversion mirror, man. That's all that we're being shown <laughs> more and more throughout this doing? walk. Is Twisted this is Sister just... is one of my favorite groups ever. We're not gonna take it. Oh no, <laughs> we ain't gonna take it. That's yeah, Snafu's yeah. favorite song. <laughs> now I'm just saying so just like it might be the inner black kid in you yes yeah, the inner white boy and in some uh, in those black people too you hear me right like shit. yeah it's all a reflection oh, of self man this whole simulation is holographic you know I'm wondering why I'm one of them black dudes I you know I I'm not opposed you know what I'm saying and of certain things you know what I'm saying you know I might get around my black friends and be like yeah man fuck that white boy shit because I understand what needs to be said in the moment of culture but me the true person 
can actually, you know, maybe fuck with it. You know, I call my, my wife a white girl. Straight up. Everything she watches, I'd be like, girl, you everything you watch, white people. You don't even watch black people shit. You just a white girl at heart. This is this is like inside black nigger joke shit. You hear me? I'm like, you just a white girl at heart. You correct me when I use slang. I'm like, who the fuck is you? Betty? Like, get the fuck on. You know? But this is like little jokes that we have amongst our black community that I don't think the, our white brothers know that we even joke like this. Because they're, they, they're being judged on... Because they... Because we know they got their little nigga jokes in the back, but we're going to judge them if they do it. But like, we over here doing the same shit. So I don't get mad about shit like that. You know, if Billy and Matthew over like, you know what I'm saying? If they over there uh, in front of the TV and rapping Lil Wayne and, and he say nigga and they say nigga, I don't give a fuck. Not me. I can't say every black person feel like that, but us educated people. We don't give a fuck about that shit. That shit sound retarded. Like we watching everybody say nigga. Who give a fuck? If you you, if you're using it, yeah. If, if you're using it in the term that is how I'm using it, why would I care? If you say, yeah, my nigga passed the blunt, I ain't gonna I ain't be like, damn, why you say that racist ass shit? That sound dumb, don't it? Yeah, my nigga, you should get them shoes right there, them fly. You didn't call me a nigga. So, like, come on. We have to have, we have to use discernment, but you do have those black radicals like, did you hear him use the, did you hear him say nigga? I can't do nothing for about those people. You see what I'm saying? I'm just as fucked up as you is. So let me ask you this, because I just looked it up before. Is is Charleston White still in contact with, with uh, Rainwater, or did they kind of go their own separate ways? They're their own separate ways, but they're, they're cordial. Okay. They're cordial. They went down separate way, but they're cordial. You know. You know Charleston has something to say. If he picked up that phone, he he probably the fuck these goddamn crackers. Fuck you, man. <laughs> 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 the fuck you know so play a rainwater. Y'all got me on the line with these goddamn crackers. You sell out house niggas. <laughs> But I'm I'm here for the show. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. I'll be the house nigga real quick. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I've had to play that position before. I played the house nigga at every job I was at. Snafu's so like I, throwing up pictures. <laughs> He's you, saying you you're pretty much little Nas X, that you got human menstrual blood in the cells of your sneakers right now. And you're probably fucking Billy Ray Cyrus is what I'm interpreting now from what he's because he's flashing me. You see him right there. He's got my name, <laughs> Polly Boy Pogo Hornet's Nest, and he's flashing pictures. And his latest one is Little Nas X with the demonic hair and the blood and the soles of the Nikes fucking Billy Ray Cyrus. And he's trying to say you're that. Your thoughts on that? Yeah. Actually, that fool that you got that you got right there. He's the biggest puppet probably I've ever seen because let me tell you something about black people who do anything for fucking money. He's so dumb like the fucking uh, young thug motherfucker. Let me tell y'all something. These motherfuckers are probably not even fucking gay. They're probably just doing everything because that's how they get their fucking check. And they're probably so stupid and hood of, uh, got this dumb ghetto hood mind. They're like, Shit, this is what it take to get my bag. So, shit, hell yeah, they want me to paint my nails. I'm gonna paint my nails. They want me to put on the dress and fuck who don't who fuck who. That's how dumb some of these people is. They might not even be gay, but they'll wear the whole fucking gay costume just to be who the fuck they are. Snafu, you're going silent treatment now because I asked you to just be somewhat cordial or make some kind of sense or just yield when I'm speaking. If you're gonna go full tard, you got nothing to say now. <laughs> Now he's, he's gonna give me this. Time. This is this is his other bit. He goes, he's Stonewalls, Stonewall Snafu. Bro, you you educated, bro. You can talk with us, bro. I'm just I'm just I'm just your uh regular black African American uh Kool Aid drinking uh love chicken uh part time nigga like the rest of them, bro. Who, who, All right, here's what I'm gonna ask for you. I'm gonna ask you to, and and I don't know why I'm doing this because I I guess this is where we make the deal with the devil. Like, what's let's name? do it. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you to promote this channel to certain folks to get the word out there. Uh, this is a general meeting place for all folks to come to. Uh, we do asylum treatment sometimes. 
I mean, you see what we do here. You know, it's a little bit of everything and no thing at all, right? No, so, yeah, right. put the word out to your people. You know, let's let's start bringing some conversation, some content. Uh, I'll cross platform. You know, I'm not really willing to fuck Diddy at this time. Maybe at some point we can negotiate, yeah, renegotiate. Okay. But, no, I, you know, I, I am willing to cross platform and, you know, have good conversation and, you know, turn up a little bit. Pimp and Mac, no, why not? No, we can turn up and uh, I'll be sure to make sure that my panel and my chat is on board. You know what I'm saying? Where it's not going to be all the trolling where we can have the conversation that needs to be had. And, you know, you know, when it gets tense, we'll just have to let it get tense for the moment. But, you know, for the most part, we're going to control the control the, the, the arena and the environment because we're trying to get something out of it. So, hell yeah, I'm with it. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, where are we going with this? Because we're already on five hours almost. Yeah. The usual broadcast about three. We've been going late later, yeah, uh, you know, recently. But um, we want to do some final words and get the hell out of here or what? Let me go first. Hey, man, uh, I came up here on some fuck shit. But, you know, I do believe in I, I shouldn't even know. I, I had to hype myself up for the fuck shit because that's not my nature. And it's I'm not even surprised that it turned out like this. You know what I'm saying? And uh I'm going to say it again. Uh, I hate that it started off like that, Brian. Maybe I misinterpreted it. I'll be a man and say maybe I misinterpreted it, but even though I think I'm a pretty wise man to see what I've seen, you know, but uh, I do have an understanding, or, or should I say an understanding, that, like I can, I understand what you wanted out of it now, and I, I hate that we had to go through that to get there because we could have used another measure, being that the type of men that we are, but now that we're here, let's just move forward. And uh, you, anytime you need some feedback, you know what I'm saying, on, on and then now we can be funny and have fun with this shit. Yeah, you can call your black friend, so player. Tell them people like so player, my fucking friend. That's my nigga friend. You know what I'm saying? And he'll come talk to me. And and, he, and, and even though I respect him and I won't call him a nigga, he ain't, but he ain't fucked up if I say it. And salute to everybody on the panel, salute to you, Paul. Uh so you do a live broadcast daily, or what's your schedule? Like, let's say I want to get I, in contact I, with you, I want to see uh, you know. Yeah, we I could go, uh, put go, some content together. I usually go about uh, anywhere between 9 and 11 o'clock at night because, you know, just like how the, I kind of, it just depends on what's happening in these YouTube streets because, you know, I might end up somewhere else like I am now. You know what I'm saying? But uh, usually right. I usually do about four to five nights out the week, but you can definitely hit me at on uh, IG at I am so player and we can, uh, we can coordinate some stuff to get some shit shaking, whether it's daytime, nighttime, because I'm flexible. All right. All right. Salute to everybody over here, man. All right, blessings to you and yours, man. Gratitude. Later, bro. Appreciate you. Your thoughts, Snafu? Another somewhat culturally relevant, you could argue, semi-famous person, uh, the rainwater creature. Uh, and, of course, if he knows what we do here, everyone's a creature. So um, you know, no offense with that characterization, of course. Yeah, you know, uh, your thoughts, Snafu, on just one it's after. Style. It's a fucking pogo hornet's nest. It's a pogo hornet's yeah, nest Shriner around here. For pedophiles, you know that Shriner. Yeah, you know what your broadcast is? is. It's Did an you know what they nest. Ritualistic agenda. Okay, I'd rather be a pogo hornet's nest than an incel nest. You and Tarek and the rest of you folks to broadcast to ten fucking people, all involuntary celibates like you, and you got the nerve to come here with me. It is an astounding example of work ethic, success. Creativity, all the things, upholding the law. That's how we came into this. Slave, how dare you insult and demean my pogo hornet's nest? That means there's success here. That means there's energy and spirit here. That means there's entertainment here. There's information here. That's a good thing, Snafu Snaps, and you want to demean that. You want to poison my well that folks are drawing from. That you're drawing from, quite frankly. You're poisoning the well that you're drawing from and drinking from. How bizarre. The town crier, the village idiot. Now he ran from the back. He can't handle sitting back there and waiting. He can't handle anyone having any level of energy, inspiration, success, results. Just It's pure hate with this kid. And he's claiming it's out of care and love. It's nothing but jealousy and envy. Your thoughts, Brian O'Shea, Timmy? This is another astounding example of synchronicity for the audience and how God, the creation, the universe works. Uh, and, you know, to give Snafu potentially some credit, maybe the devil, maybe we're all being used by the Demiurge and the devil. And we all think we're godly and moral and righteous, and we're all being tricked and deceived. Thoughts on any of that, Tim, Brian? Once again, I 
again, since my arrest, there's been a million unexpected things happen. So, I mean, while I see it could happen, you know, I wasn't specifically uh, anticipating that gentleman coming on here. Today. And I don't know. He get, he's a great uh, motivator and, you know, along with yourself. And I'm just feeling good and looking forward to the comedy tonight and future music and future things in my life. And um, I'm just glad that we were able to have this stream today and that you, you know, thanks to you and everything you do, that this was here for this to happen. And, and you know, and you're, you're the major part. Like, you're... Like you and him did your thing today, and I think the audience and everyone got a lot out of it, you know. So I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody played a part in it somehow, some way. So you know, we can get into the worldly chain of title, but again, somehow, some way behind the scenes, under the banner of Unslavia, which has been forced to become a a a lifestyle of faith, right? Uh, again, kind of testament to how God works. You know, under that banner of faith and unslavia, um, you know, you went out, put out the energy, had some controversy, and then funneled it back to reconciliation, right? So all things come back to source, whether it's this broadcast as a source or what works through this broadcast, which, of course, is higher than just a mere God of all media, right? It's a God of creation. So obviously a bit of a, a mocking there of myself, obviously a bit of a, a, a tongue-in-cheek bit non bit but, you know, some truth to it as well, right? That God and or the devil and or just life creation works through the beings, right? We are an avatar, a portal, a bridge, as it said in the intro, from heaven to hell, it would seem. Your snaps is back. No, I'm not hating. I'm just pointing out the fact that Shriner, pedophilia, occult, ritualistic optics, they admitted they were into that shit. You're making insanely broad and generic connections and claims. You're making insanely broad and generic connections and claims. It's probably why you have little to no friends and no networking and little to no success because you make an enemy out of everyone inherently. Uh, everyone has to be turned into an enemy. You're making an enemy out of everyone. I got a story. A story about spinning. Yeah. Have you ever sat in a room, tried to destroy everything that Paul? Boy does because you're standing. Okay. I mean, you guys want to worship? Have you ever sat in a room and to destroy everything Polly Boy creates? Have you ever spun in the room and acted just like a slave? Have you ever realized you broke and don't want anyone else to succeed? Have you ever spun in the room? Just like a filthy slave, spinning, I'm spinning, destroying everything everyone else creates. I'm spinning, I'm spinning. Have you ever claimed you were godly and righteous, but actually act devilish and hateful? Have you ever spun so much you feel like a fucking slave hole? Or you feel like you're in a slave hole. Sorry, not a slave hole. You feel like you're in one. Spinning. I'm spinning. There you go. I'm spinning. Even while I'm co covering the spinning, I started spinning. Your thoughts, JG? I got to cut it off. He's gone now. He ran. We spun too hard, like a top. All right. Give me the final word. I'm out of here. It's pure insanity. I'm done. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, radiating right now with good energy. I feel motivated, even though I'm a little under the weather. Um, this was a fantastic broadcast, in my opinion. I appreciate the gentleman coming over. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, just yeah Snaps, again. Who snaps is radiating with energy, too, because he's about to get fucked by a gay crip. So uh, all is well. You really? know, I think we all feel good about that. <laughs> Sir, like, like fuck like uh you know like administrative creatively speaking or what, what kind of fuck that you're talking about here like mic check one two testing yeah, hello yeah you were cutting out for now. a second we could hear you now though the world is spinning around just like that big old merry-go-round in the park good stuff boy it's your mind spinning 
Yeah, on that note, uh, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Salute. Do you know where you are right now? Yeah, take care, y'all. Uh, Thank you, Brian. Great stuff as usual. I don't know how you did it, but somehow you did. Good thing God protects babies and fools. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. all we're right. all in the same boat here i appreciate you brother yeah i appreciate you all right i'll see you guys later bye all right otw thoughts is my mic working yeah i was just wondering if my mic's working <laughs> yeah you go you hear me all right okay well my thoughts Actually, yeah we're I'm doing like final words rocket. man right when you decided to end it fuck does that ever suck yeah, we're five hours in. Bro. Um, see you guys Monday, OTW. Five hours, right. Okay, well, uh, much love, everybody. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe at uh, Proper Instruction Motivates People. Uh, yeah, and especially share, man, you know, so get this uh, out there, fuck, so people can uh, come on over and we can meet, like, uh, you know, a massive a bunch of new people, right? So, is uh, he cutting out that. for everyone else? Like, Listen, OTW, right you seem do really it. excited. If you want me to get the gay crypt to fuck you too, I could have it done. All right. You don't have to get this excited and start promoting and marketing. All right. Uh gay crypts are available for everyone. Uh if you're if you're into that. You don't have to beg. <laughs> All right, OTW. Okay, I'm, I'm cutting in and get out. The, get out of here. I appreciate you. I gotta go. I'm 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 drifting. Snappy snaps is drifting, uh, spinning, and I'm drifting. I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, after the three hour mark, you just start to get out there, start to lose yourself, lose yourself in the music, the moment. You want it? All right, I'll be back tomorrow, folks. As always, uh, somewhere between twelve and three MDT, seven days a week, over five hundred days straight. We don't stop here. I don't miss. It's a royal way. It's I. It's me. Let's get back to me, brothers and sisters. I don't miss, <clears throat> and of course, my miscreants don't miss either. They're here pulling my coattails day after day, right, riding the wave with me. And you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. Again, I'm like the G unit of metaversal broadcasting. I'm the fifty cent white gorilla head of the G unit, and I have my Tony Ayos, uh, Lloyd Banks's. Young Bucks, and even a couple of those game creatures. They like, want to collaborate with you, then they hate on you, then they fuck Diddy for two years, go shopping with him, and then they go, hey, I'm gangster, I'm mad. I deserve to be famous too and successful in my own right. I'm really, I'm not G-Unit. You know, you know the thing. You know how it goes. All right, I'm out of here, people. Mazel from out west. Mazel from Hollywood, okay? Mazel. To, we, we had Hollywood come through the doors again tonight. Hollywood showed up again to give everyone a muzzle, right? Rainwater, uh, Mr. So Playa, uh, and apparently we got Charleston White's number, so we'll see where this goes. It's going to be a hell of a 2025. Wait, 2024? Where are we at? What year are we in? I don't know what year it is. All right, it's 2024. We're going into 2025. 2024 is my year, as they say. Uh, 2025 is our year. Brian O'Shea, Rainwater, and all the rest of our new African-American friends. It's beautiful. Magic. I'm out of here. Seriously. Bye. Me. I always tell it. Even when I lie. So say good night to the black guy. Go on, go on. The last time you're going to see a black guy like this again. The Great Reset's happening. So when you get all your pretty and nice shit taken away and your bullshit job that leads to nowhere and you're forced back on the land and have to be self-sustainable and co-creative and work with what is, this talk about your feelings and your ego is going to go right out the window because the, the God and the elements and nature are going to present what needs to happen next. Nine out of ten times. That's the difference between me and you. I got it in me, not on me, just like you do. I'm trying to work it out, bring the subconscious to the conscious and figure out who and what I am. Am I good or evil? Am I real and true? Am I a narcissistic, egotistical deceiver? 
That's the difference. I'm actually authentically trying to work it out while you lie to everyone and project your negative aspects of self onto me. And I don't appreciate it. And the universe don't appreciate it either. And the students of life in this audience don't appreciate it either. This isn't about love and money. This isn't about chasing bags or anything else in and of the world. This is about the Philo Sophie, right? The love of knowledge, the love of wisdom, the love of understanding of self and applying it to actualize and realize and get better results for yourself and everyone else. I thought that's what we were doing here. So let's get the game back in its proper perspective. The motherfucker doing this shit shouldn't have to talk about it because you folks want to lie on it. It's embarrassing to me. I did come on here with the intention of the understanding that this is supposed to be for business or a hobby. That's why I show up the way I do 500 days straight. That's why I have a care in my heart with passion. That's why I do what's true and what's right and see through you motherfuckers and get amazing results for me, for me, for me. We can't allow the generalized experience of life and everything it has to offer, good, bad, and indifferent, to hold us back or keep us paralyzed or keep us fearful or self-doubting or unloving and uncaring of ourselves. How do I know? Because I look into me. That's all this is. I can see further than the rest. I can interpret beyond what's told and shown, and I can amalgamate and communicate the cause and effect and the root of the state of consciousness and awareness. That is a astounding testimony to the work that I've done on myself in this world and in this life and the practices I've walked with with other people. The question and answer, the fellowship, the co-creational endeavors, and the conversation that leads to understanding. But again, we can't appeal to false emotions and false authority. That is the cornerstone of cognitive dissonance. You can't say that I'm respectable, righteous, honorable, presentable. Uh, and then I have balls and then turn around and hate me or catch feelings over me, be in that and live in that uh, when you don't like it or when it doesn't turn out as favorably for you as you would have hoped or expected, right? That's that, that's the that's the theme of a, of a true common bond that goes long term versus the shallow materialistic worldly connections that come and go. It's just, yeah, it is what it is. Some people are down forever. Some people are down for the ride until uh, they got to get off. Right, and some people ain't down at all. So, through the life experiences, firsthand experiences, through the tests and challenges, you learn more and more who and what is meant for you, and who or what is probably not going to be able to sustain the ride. And that's okay. God of all media.